with you. I can't no. have all this attention. No. <laughs> uh, sorry. Well, it's sorry. Right. I forgive you, but we are indeed live once again. God, it feels like it wasn't yesterday that we were streaming an EFAP episode, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it wasn't. Oh, it was wasn't today. Long, huh? <laughs> for me, anyway. Well, for me, well, it was yesterday for me, but not. It was only 12 hours ago, so, you know. Crazy how <laughs> life, life will get you that way. Hello, chat. I was going to say, hey, may as well one. guarantee that it's going to cut out at least once during the stream, but that's okay. We're ready for it. We know the drill now. It's fine. And then hopefully this will be the last one before my new internet is here. I mean, I guess it's not really a drill. It's just wait patiently for... You that's know, the drill. Have to come back. I guess it's Man, drill, drill. Don't it panic. Like don't do run. Something. Don't, you know, assume the worst and go crazy. No craziness here. Mm -hmm. Only nice and happiness-ness. <sighs> Another it of the feels Twitch weird saga, to stream kinda. again, you know, if, like after everything that we did yesterday slash today to stream again, feel it does feel a little, mm -hmm. feels a little odd, you it know, does. feels a little strange. And we got another whole adventure. I was actually gonna, I was meant to mention it, but it, for me it was like it was work I was doing before we did the stream yesterday, and then as soon as we were done with the other stream, I did work on it. I went to sleep for a bit, and then did work on it ready for today. I've got a compilation for us. The Ooh. yeah, you always love those episodes, right, guys? Right. Um, that's right. I don't know if uh, they're always something. <laughs> it's always something. <laughs> <laughs> they're always something. They're always Mola with his, his, his montages of madness. I, I but, uh, yeah, I, I, I noted on Twitter that the streamer Asmongold of Twitch was getting dogpiled harassed and cancelled. That's just a reference to the past EFAP. All he he had said about it was just that, yeah, wow, shit, I pissed off a bunch of people. Which is probably a better attitude to say than to say, like, you've slighted me with cruelty! Or something, you know, dramatic and expressive, but at the same time, it's like, what's going on? What's going on here? And you sort of look into it and check it out, and there was a main clip that was going viral, and then if you dig into it, there's some subjects that can be covered and then, you know, dig enough like I do sometimes and you find stuff that you weren't supposed to find, I think. Or at least most people wouldn't want you to find. And uh, that's that's with, that's what you've got ahead of you today, the humble EFAP listener. We've got plenty of things to deal with. Um, but hey, you know what? Well, welcome to EFAP episode number 271. Hello, 271. Hello. Can you believe it? We're almost at the halfway to the anniversary, by the way. Oh, man, really? Mm, nice. Well, yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> really, like, the, this is probably the most it's ever felt. Like, seriously, we it wasn't that long, but yeah, fine. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, just... it's, you know, it's nearly February. <laughs> yeah. I give it a couple of days, and it'll be February. And Dude, wasn't like, it wow. crazy? January was, like, five days. It was just gone. It was like it was five days. January always feels quick. There's so much happening, I guess. Or is there? January's the month where nothing's happening, right? Or... Uh, it it's usually feels the quiet like month. it. It just feels like it goes by quick. Money. Yeah, I guess so. Christmas and going on yeah. their holidays and everything. <sighs> Things are sort of going back to normal. Christmas and the holidays are over. You have your little New Year's party. Mm -hmm. And then you're just sort of back to it. Uh, and then for whatever yeah. reason, it feels quick. Well, we are joined with, by, by uh, John and Moriarty. Two wonderful, Hello. wonderful people who... To be honest with you, you guys have been on this show so many times now that I feel bad even introducing you. I'm just like, whatever. There they are. You know. Yeah. You know these guys. They are experts in the uh, in the thing we're going to discuss today. Not at all two guys that I like the perspective of and asked to be here. That's not it. It's it's we brought them on for their professional careers in all of the discussions that are going to be had. So uh, nice professional. That's, that's, that's what we do here. Make everything perfect and wonderful. And really, there's not much else to, to set up. I, I'm sure many people in chat already know about this because it was all over the place. It's probably already old news, like yesterday type thing. It takes 40 hours for a thing to just be gone. But I find it fascinating. And hey, it's, 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 it relates to that Pal World game somewhat. So you guys like your little video games out there. So this will be interesting uh, for you in that way. Yeah, I like video games. <gasps> there you go. I actually have really enjoyed Pal World too. So Ooh, I, I see? What is Pal shit. World about? I don't know anything about it. Uh, it's Valheim with Pokemon with guns. Valheim okay. with Pokemon and guns. Oh. All right. Guns? Yes. Yeah. Are there yeah. guns in Pal World? 
There are, yeah. Oh, what do you do with the guns, dare I ask? Do you kill the pals with it? You sure do. <laughs> oh my god, you kill pals with guns. Oh uh, yeah, and then you can you can chop them up and eat them. It's good. Oh my goodness. It's good. I don't know if I like this game. Well, it's good. <laughs> Uh, granted, I don't like it eat... when you cut up and eat that when you shoot the pals and then cut them up and eat them again. You can you can do that to dogs in that too. So maybe there's oh, some no. negatives. Someone you. left a comment on our previous EFAB about how oh so it's it's annoying when you can't shoot children, but it's fine when you can set dogs on fire. So they was like, what the fuck set dogs on fire? What? Is this a reference to something I'm not aware of at all? And it could, maybe I think it's, it's the world. Oblivion demo or something like that. That when Todd was showing off the, like like how AI could just do stuff, the NPCs would just sort of do things. Um, one of them Set was dogs on a, fire. <laughs> a woman like paralyzed the dog with a spell and stunned it. And I think apparently later, and this is something that Patrician said. I think is is that she set the dog on fire after after it was stunned. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what a terrible mm, wow. evil person. I hope the Dark Brotherhood stabs her. Well, all right. <laughs> Fair enough, then. All these references I'm just not aware of. Um, but we should probably not delay. We should just get right into this. First and foremost will be the clip that went viral, that was shared. We shall see it in its limited context, and then we will see people reacting to it, and then we will see Asmongold talking about what he meant in the clip. So, see, okay. we can follow this story of events. So, first comes the clip. Expect me to draw a moral line. I have to perceive a difference that I consider substantial. And I do not consider the difference substantial. Between what? Do you what? guys? That's the problem. The clip begins just already. So you're just like, I don't even know what he's talking about. So we have to run with this so far. No. Right. No. And that's really what matters. If it was made with AI, I'm completely okay with that because it was fun. The evidence. Uh. That's not a great quote in isolation. Uh, <laughs> we'll give us some more. It is doesn't matter. Nobody really cares about this. The lead developer has been very positive about AI in the past yeah. and made an AI game We're gonna play called this, by AI way. Art Imposter that lets yeah. an AI artist draw a picture. And so that that was like like one of the yeah, games. We're going to be playing and, this this week. Yes, just generally has been much more uh, positive about some of the benefits of AI rather than what is the normal sentiment amongst artists and and you know I guess general uh, Twitter population, which is that you know AI is bad and it takes jobs from well, people. Well, AI and the sentiment from artists, artists' opinions don't matter. It just doesn't matter Oof. because what matters is the opinion of the people that are buying the product. Like, it doesn't, like, your opinion on it, like, just because you do it doesn't, like, nobody cares. Like, it, 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 it's not, it's not relevant. It's like whenever one of these, like, you know, really well-respected and, and really respectable uh, directors talks about how bad Marvel is. Shut up, old man. <laughs> Shut up. I like watching the Thor movie. It was cool. Am I... <laughs> So that's that's yeah, the yeah. that's the clip that got around. <laughs> I'm uh my my opinion that Asmund Gold is a a simpleton is is it, this isn't helping. Damn. All right. It, 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 ain't, it ain't helping. I the problem uh, is for me that I sort of agree with him, but I disagree with him at the same time. My um, problem is there's no context. I don't know what the fuck. I need to know more about what, the, yeah, what his opinions right? are. Like if, if it's just the kind of vague idea that that. An artist's opinion doesn't matter on its commercial viability. Yeah, I agree with that, right? Like, no. Well, yeah. wait, wait. Purely on speaking of whether it whether it sells copies, right? Of exactly. Things, you know, well, that's like, just well all, well. all he's saying is the thing that de determines whether or not things are sold is if people buy them. Right, right. Which that's I agree all he with. Said. <laughs> and see if if people people <laughs> things are sold if people buy them. Is what he said. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of hard to disagree with that. I feel like I need a lot more context. Well, yeah, you to, know when he uh, said, um, uh, I don't care if something's made with AI, it was fun. It's, it's like as a contextless clip, there are contexts in which that, that, that could be a really bad statement. Um, yeah. But there's also contexts where it could be absolutely fine. It's, uh, it, I just need to know more, you know? So it's like, okay. Uh, like I said, we're going to see some people. To... Fine. I is, think that. Uh, those aren't going to be the typical context, though. 
Um, if you, for instance, I'm playing a D and D game, and Sargon's the DM, and I'm playing with Dev V and Arch, and Sargon is using he just like a, an image generator to just pop out some like NPC faces and some stuff like that for the you know just the D and D game that we're playing, and and that's useful for that, you know. So that's sure. pretty. It's it's good that he has that tool to work with. Um, you know, it helps for him to just sort of like generate something on the fly that does a decent enough job at getting a kind of, you know, an image or a vibe of, you know, whoever or wherever we are. Um, but we don't treat it with a lot of, we don't treat it with any reverence. And, and he's not like, yes, I'm an I'm a artist and I'm able to, to really to create these worlds and do all these things because I could put the tags into the generator. That's well, uh, also not being monetized. In that um, case. Yeah, I mean, we're getting some super chats from it, but yeah, essentially, yeah, it's not being monetized. He's not saying that I am an artist because I can do these things with the AI image generator. Right, and you're not selling the art, right? Like, even though the art is being used there, it's not the art that's being sold. It's your experience, and people are coming to see you and, and watch uh, you play a game, right? It has nothing to do with the art. The art is, is purely supplemental to the experience in that case. Uh, I think that's fine. I think AI has a lot of... I'm not a Luddite, right? Like, I have a lot of uh, uh, hope for AI in the future. Um, it's when it becomes sort of creative that I'm not a big fan of it at the moment. Uh, and it's not even so much that it's like a not a big fan of it being used, but just how it's being used. Seeing I it think being... so, yeah. Like, like creative people... in an artistic context, right? Yeah, right. when people are like, yeah. I'm an artist because I put in the words and then it generated a thousand pictures and I pick the ones that I like. That's like, right. you're, not, you're not an artist, mate. Like, yeah. don't say that you're, you're, some, you're so talented. It's the combination of saying, I'm a talented artist and I'm amazing because I can do this. And also, like, actual real artists, they're shit and they suck balls and they're terrible. Do you remember um, when we were covering denim, she, she generated the word uh, curator as opposed to if 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 she's the one that's choosing things and then people are entertained by it, like she still has, she she gets some level of appreciation for that, right? And it's like, hmm. Um. I and again, I think it's it's very much about the use case. If I'm Wizards of the Coast and I'm using artificial intelligence, machine learning, art generation, right, to create a card that I'm going to sell to you in a pack of magic cards. I think that, and, I, and I'm firing my artists at the exact same time, which is what has been happening. Yeah, I see some problems with that in the same way that I see problems with, you know, uh, uh, replacing anybody with automation. I, I think that automation has issues commercially. I can see that problem. And I can see the problem with misrepresenting it to me, the audience that is buying that, where I'm saying my main issue with, with this game, right? Like I love this game and I want to play this game and I love the artwork on it. And you're giving me something that was created in yeah. a matter of seconds, right? That's an issue for me. I don't have a problem with somebody using it because they want to make a meme of, of Brian Griffin giving a, a hand job. I don't care. About <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. That shit's fine. Um, but like even going to, <laughs> into, the, into the card stuff, I know like when I played Magic that sometimes you would recognize an artist's style in different cards that you owned, and you're like, oh, that was a cool thing to notice, where without even looking at the, the little signature that might be on it, you just, you notice that, oh, this card and this card, they have a similar style. Oh, it's the same artist, you know? And that, that's yes. kind of like a neat little thing um, instead of, especially with the AI that's generated now, the, the, the AI images now, they're just, they all look the fucking same. And there's a, a problem with sort of correlating AI with everything, right? Like if you're using AI as a, sort of a, an ad hoc editor uh, to highlight issues that you maybe didn't see in a piece of, of, of written work, I can absolutely understand using that because you're using it as a tool. And in that case, it's no different than a grammar checker in a lot of, if you're using AI because you want to shortcut your entire creative process, that's an issue for me, especially if you are trying to receive remuneration for it, right? Like that's where it becomes a, an ethical sticky point for me. And I, I should clarify because I'm sure that people, I can see people in the chat mentioning my name, but I'm not reading you yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that there are people who, who will take that nuanced take in some sort of a very negative way. Um, I'm not an expert on machine learning, right? But I, I, I just, I know that there are lots of use cases where AI is very, very good. 
if an AI can determine a cancer cell better than a human, then it should be used. If an AI can drive yeah. a car better than a human, then it should be used. Uh, yeah. it, it's when it becomes creative and when it affects uh, commerce, right? When we're selling it to somebody like it has value, that's when it becomes an issue to me in a creative sense. Yeah, like there's this there's this element of it just it seems like it sucks the soul out of things and I don't want to lose that. Yeah, right? Like there what? is no uh, as an artist, right? Like creating art, going to to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which I love because it has a whole lot of uh Kandinsky and Kandinsky is my favorite artist. I love him so much. Seeing a Kandinsky piece, seeing it next to a Picasso and seeing these two artists and going, "Wow, look at, you know, the decades that brought them to these pieces, these beautiful pieces that are affecting me emotionally and, and I'm loving everything that I'm seeing here. You know, that's not something that you can replicate with AI. Um, you may be able to replicate something there, but there's more of the human emotional attachment to these great pieces of art. We, we aren't seeing that. And I know that's not really the discussion here because we're talking about Pokemon. Right. And to be clear, there is no evidence that PAL World has any AI in it whatsoever, not a single trace of it. And I guarantee you that if there is, Nintendo, with their billions of lawyers, will find it eventually. And it hasn't been found yet. So that should tell you what you need to know about. Um, if there's AI being used to steal Pokemon, right, we will find out. But it's not existing in this. And, 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 I know that that's what we're talking about, and I know that that's what Asmongold was talking about, but it just gets simplified and condensed into this concept that all AI is bad because shad, right? Like, that's not it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, going off. Surely the scope of the conversation will go beyond Pal World here, right? I mean, it's, 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 it it doesn't stick on Pal World so, for more than a second. It's, uh, it's really not about Yeah, I don't Pal know World. anything about it, really, other it's, than um, memes and Nintendo lawsuit potentially yeah but i don't know what's well, going really with it it's just interesting to listen to uh opinions going back and forth and, and i love how fiery chat is we got both directions uh oh yeah super passionate you guys have fun all right <laughs> like, you go, enjoy uh, all these terrible takes chat um but what i was gonna say by the way was like i wouldn't run with the whole like you know you said it all looks the same rags is like well first of all even it won't forever but I mean, I've seen all kinds of different AI generations that are different than the one you're probably referring to with the, the murky blurring of weird things, the weird fingers. Like, we know that one commonly, uh, but... Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Well, what I mean, are you talking about? It doesn't, li it doesn't literally all look this... I don't know if I can describe it verbally. Um, you think you can like, tell whenever it's AI? Yeah, I can usually tell. No. Every once in a while, maybe I won't, but for the most part... Just no. I see it, <laughs> All right, I, I get. A... I love I you, know, but I no. Really seem to be able to. I don't even think there's you'd know. Vibe, right? Like you wouldn't be able to know that you're seeing it or not. And there's... I've already been tricked a couple of times by different pieces. I'll just be like, "Oh shit, it's AI, right? Okay." Um, but that's still, I, I I think still relevant the fact that it's uh, it, it causes a particular experience. There's plenty that I can recognize easily, but if I'm talking about all of it and some of the best stuff that's even designed to pass. Like you know, the average uh, smell check sort of thing. Uh, it wouldn't well, matter anyway because we're going to get there I anyway. The more, the more relevant part of the conversation is if the technology is going to get to the point where it's going to get harder and harder to distinguish. Let's oh, just anyway. fast forward past that conversation and well, get to the more fundamental questions that we actually care about when it comes to the topic of to, AI. To help people understand Jackson Pollock's paintings versus an AI generation of one, it would be pretty fucking hard for you to tell be me which one of the five one of them is AI. It's like, good luck. Yeah, right? it would be very difficult. But, and it's going to be better because, you know, Dolly came out, what, two years ago, three years ago? Yeah. And, uh, and it's already at this point now where you are generating stuff that is getting to Congress with Taylor Swift being, you know, in porn. Um, it's, it's not going to be much longer before we really won't be able to tell. Yeah, that's the other part, is that a lot of these uh, points of, con uh, I don't know, contention will evaporate over time with just the further generation, so I feel like the argument needs to evolve and be more fundamental, perhaps, but... We shall cover it the longer we go through, because uh, all kinds of things yeah, get brought up. That clip that we just saw there, I don't really understand much of it at all. That's Honestly, the thing; it's it's it's, it's kind of lame that it 
it went as viral as it did because it's so contextless, but we're going to see some very angry responses to it. <laughs> wrong about okay. this. Looking at so many people angry with what I said is kind of shocking to me. When you go to market with a product, the only thing that matters is the consumer's perception of that product's value. When did this it's become not the wrong? the only thing that matters. If you, it's yeah, not. if you think that people are upset because you said people like like people determine like the like the supply is deter i don't even know how to like distill it down to well, I just said it's, it's just it's not the only like, thing that matters it's a thing that yeah. matters yeah but it's not the only thing that matters well yeah, i was just thinking it's a that... super corporate soulless way of looking at things and well it's just you know there, there's the the idea of a stakeholder right that that doesn't necessarily include people who are like directly financially in connection with the company or its products it can it can relate to people who are indirectly connected to the product compared to like and a shareholder who owns the company there are this, there are stakeholders well who but when he says it's the only thing that matters matters to what to matters what to what yes exactly uh, oh, yeah, what? what does yeah, it matter yeah. too because if we're talking about what does it matter with regards to how much money it makes Right, that could definitely be the major determining factor is whether or not people buy it. Um, but but not, what I might not it buy it to? if the artist is like a really shitty asshole. You know, if he's a piece of shit and he sucks and he says bad things about me or the people that I like and know, and then I might not buy his stuff. I mean, we see lots of people not being, or, or rather, separating art and artist and still buying the art even if they don't like the. Art. We see that all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, but, but Rag's point would be that some people don't. Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. And therefore, therefore, it would be said that it matters, it can matter. But then wouldn't that be the co the consumer's perception of the product's value, right? Like, this is such a, we, we have to know what he's talking about, matters to We need more specific claims what? still, mm -hmm. is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. The success well, of Power in... World proves that the only thing customers actually care about is a good game. I. Slavery. Bestiality. Copyright infringement. It's a video game. These are pretend problems that people don't actually care about. Make good game equals people uh, buy game. Simple. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so do you know that there is a huge market for organic food and free range chickens and stuff of that nature where yeah, people yeah. will go out of their way and even pay more for no tangible gain apart from that is actually going to be ethically brought up later yeah. as a counterpoint but this is just at this point i'd be like so these are just unwise statements <laughs> like i don't yes. know why you would what why you would think people would be very angry for saying things like this yeah, like, it's... like people have ethics, people have personal tastes and stuff like that. You wouldn't see, you know, printed on recycled paper if you didn't. It would be a, a non-statement that meant nothing. It would be a waste of ink to point to to put that on a card that says printed on recycled paper if people didn't care about these things. Also, the to a, this is not really it's the slavery and bestiality part. I have no idea where that comes from, but. If it's referencing the game, then it, it it's is. not really those things. No, no, so, I think he's talking about, so like slavery would be the production of like, you know, like sweatshops and stuff. And then bestiality might be in relation to uh, how animals are treated in certain industries. I'm not sure. No, this is all oh, part of the game. This is all power world. A hundred percent power. Well, but so those things, as Raz was about to say, that those, the, the AI and copyright infringement are different from and slavery, slavery and bestiality. And bestiality. Yeah, well, those but, are all power world. Yeah, but two of them are in the game. Two of them are the matter of the game's creation. Well, the slavery is kind of in there too. You have sweatshops. You can beat them. You can put them on. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm. That's, that's in what the I'm game. Saying. These though. are the concept of. Things yeah, that's in the game. game. You, yeah. you you can put two them of these on things to, are meta um, things. Two of them are in the game, and they're not even the real thing. They're not. You're not actually. I I don't know if you could fuck the pals or whatever. Uh, but if uh, but yeah, it's not actually the thing itself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. The the bestiality is more implied, right? Like, there's a specific pal that says that they don't want to sleep with humans. <laughs> um, I don't even oh, know. Yeah, I, no, I don't care about any of that. I don't. That's that's not. I, I thought we were talking strictly about people's sort of desire for fun or you know consuming products will overwrite any moral issue they have with the creation of said product. I thought that was the thing that we were talking about. Because like uh, those people exist, but. Well, they might be the, the, the most common as well, but it's too. not an absolute, which is what seems to be said here. The success power proves the only thing customers actually care about is a good game. Which is funny, 
because I've seen a lot of people saying that Power World isn't a good game, like from the ground up is like designed, like it's rushed and it's broken. And... Yeah, Moriarty, you have shit taste in video games. You gonna <laughs> well, take that? You gonna let Baller I've... get away with that? Well, so what I was about to say is that a problems, good game though. could be a game you enjoy, or could be a well-designed game, or could be both. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. You know. I think um... in this tweet and a little, or a little in this tweet, and then in the clip that we just saw, I think what part of what's getting him into trouble is he's conflating nobody cares and it doesn't matter. Like he's sort of using those interchangeably. I think there's a bit of a difference there. Like, I'm sh there's a lot of people who like will buy iPhones, but they're like aware of like apple sweatshops and they'll be like oh isn't that terrible oh, i'm an example one of that one sense. iphone please yeah if like they'll take the iPhone, iphone anyway I glad guy i bought a second hand one from a person so that i didn't you know buy from apple um, right so so i think pl plenty of people would agree that a lot of people don't care about the means in which these um products are generated and they'll get the product right. anyway but that doesn't mean that it doesn't matter i mean it's a problem that's, yeah that's we the don't want sweatshops discussion but that that gives you guys the groundwork for his statements and now we get to see some people responding to him and we can we can sort of check out if we think these people are reasonable or just furious for everyone saying that as mingo oh, is here. right uh, just to, as an example as well this is literally a show that i think is a is pretty good show but some people won't watch it because they think that we're terrible horrible no good very bad people true um yep. so they just won't watch the show and so it's just this is another example of that Right. A little reminder that a cherry-picked consensus of nobody cares doesn't makes these things pretend problems. They're real problems that people like him are simply too lazy and apathetic to care about. There's a difference. That, I consider that's, I, that's the problem, right? Basically, what I was pretend problem. He's, well, yeah, he's the, using the wrong words. Right? You almost wish you could uh, speak directly to Asmongold because you're like, you don't mean this, right? Because that would be crazy. And then I feel like he'd yes. be like, no, I don't mean that. I mean this. And you go, right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't think he thinks that nobody cares. Like, it, you know, in isolation as a statement, no. I, I think it's not going to be that. It's going to be something else. Um, but again, like, this is the thing. This is the internet. So this is this is what happens now with, with responses. The and apathetic to Kara. Bout, there's a difference. I consider Zach to be a pretty good colleague in this space, and I really feel this would have done better with a lot more empathy towards artists. He's right that most consumers only care about the end product, and not the ethics associated with and the industry will proceed with AI no matter what. I wish most people could understand when it comes to artists it's mostly their data that these models are trained with and I feel if we're to use AI without the morals weighing us down we have to fin. DA way to compensate or give attributions to those whose art has fed these neural networks. AI can be used for a lot of cool things and even game development by reducing crunch in many ways, but for now we have to look at ways to properly credit those whose art is used without their consent to make these massive systems. Boy, I, I don't agree with this um, at all. Um, so, I again, I don't think that consumers only care about end products. I just think that in the vast, vast majority of cases, no product is ever going to cross that ethical line that most people probably have. Um, oh, like there's if, a there's a zone, a series of zones, right? Like you can yeah, get away with like, X, but once you do this, you can't. Knowing if, if someone if someone buys shoes that were made by someone in a sweatshop on the other side of the world, like no one feels good about doing that, you know. But a lot of people either don't think about it, don't know about it, or they're like, eh, it's like it doesn't really matter to me. But if they knew that it was, but but if it came out and it said, yeah, that these are they're actually using slaves and they're being beaten and whipped and they're not paid at all and everything, then yeah, I think that company would actually die. Um, well, diamonds are proof that live. that doesn't rags, right? Like that's proof that it doesn't because a significant number of blood diamonds are on the market and and nobody cares. And I'll give you a better example actually, which is chocolate. Um, nearly a hundred percent of all cacao is farmed uh, by child labor. Right, nearly a hundred percent of it. So if you're eating chocolate, there is a nearly hundred percent chance that that bite of chocolate was farmed at some point by children. It is just a fact. Wait, is everyone still here? It is such a a quagmire of a philosophical discussion because it's very difficult 
to have a consumer who understands the complete information of production processes and ethical practices with co companies, right? And even with that sort of increased awareness, your individual choice, how much is it going to affect? It's, it's very difficult. To, to get into that kind of a thing. And I disagree with this because it's taking a, a fence sitting position that it's okay to steal, but as long as you credit, right? Like that's what he's saying here. Um, it, it's a very complex thing with, with personal ethical trade-offs for how much you're willing to give uh, into ethical consumerism. Rags, do you have anything on the diamond thing? I don't know. If you want the that. proximity <laughs> to who the victims may or may not be. Um, the fact that someone might be, if, if artist is, if you, if, if an AI essentially steals from some artist you've never met on the internet and don't know about, then it will be different than knowing that artist personally and having them come to you and say that, you know, they're really upset that they found some, you know, drawing image generator that clearly stole one of their images. Um, or, if, or, if, or if you were, you know, living down the street from, or if you met the, you know, the sweatshop worker or the, the slave or whatever it was. But when you're so removed from everything, it's just that, I guess, human tendency to be, you know, le less sympathetic with people who are really far, far away from you that you've never met. Yeah. Yeah, the, how local it is to you, absolutely. You know, um, if you have to go and choose every chicken that you're going to eat, right, every single time, and then you have to watch it die, uh, it's a lot different than going to a supermarket, right? I think um, yeah. what, what we're highlighting here is that there's a, a, a lot of care. The, the, word of, the use of the word care is being used as like a binary. Like, people either care or they don't when it's way more complicated than that. Yes. Yeah, everyone, pretty much everyone cares to some degree. It's just where that line is and how, how it affects them. And their well, ability do they care more than the consumption matter. of the product? Yeah, which yes. is, everyone's drawing a line differently for that. We can go but to extremes I, on both yeah, ends. I, well, I guess it's just like, you know, because most consumers only care about the product. It's like, I guess, I guess generally, sure. But like, what do boycotts look like if not the people, a lot of people at the same time getting really, uh worked up about a particular thing related to the product and then that manifesting in major yes. ways commercially. Yes. Um, I, I guess it's, it's, it's just like, what is, what is the thing that people are focusing on? And right now people are focused on AI art. So yeah, like, and, and I don't know. I, I, surely this response would mean it's like, well, I mean, I, I guess he would point to like, well, the game sold, even though you were saying Moriarty that, there's no there's no evidence that power world uses Zero. uh ai and anything but like even if there was that it's like well the game sold really well um but then i guess you point to the flip side that there are people who are really pissed off about the game and pissed off about well yes this. i could totally see someone being like i ain't playing power world uh if let's say well we could just make up a game since it doesn't apply to power world apparently but a game that has copied everything from somewhere else someone could be like i am playing that on ethical grounds you could be like okay fair enough and then sure, some I mean, the next person might not. You know, like, it it exists. I'll give you a, a real-world example that happened about a year ago, uh, actually, was the, the Harry Potters game. A oh, lot yeah, of yeah. people were, did not want to engage with that because they don't want to enrich J.K. Rowling. Yeah, uh, but they also... That, exists. that felt like a Streisand effects -like situation. Like, yeah, well, I think Pal World is, too. Pal World is, is probably going to be the best-selling game of this year. Uh, it has sold 10 million copies on Steam alone. It's not including Xbox. It's not including Game Pass. It's probably mm -hmm. the best-selling game already of the year. So there's a good chance this is also Streisand. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah you know, well, the thing is that this AI thing seems to be ill-founded for, like, Pal World. That's, that's what I'm gathering. Because you can have the conversation regardless, but it seems like a lot of people are saying that's, that's bullshit about the... And that Steam would have it's, removed it had it done that. It's just a total misunderstanding. It is. It is association guilt, right? It is people saying, okay, so the CEO at one point went to an AI conference and said that BuzzFeed could use AI to rip off uh, Pokemon, right? Oh, clearly he did that then, right? The it's not like- as well that it's because it's obviously inspired by Pokemon? Uh, clearly. And that might have been like yeah. a factor. 
Of course it is. And it's intentionally so. That's the whole marketing idea is that it's Pokemon with guns. It's literally their marketing, mm -hmm. you know, message is, hey, look, Pokemon with guns. But but it's it's association that since he went to this thing, it's like saying, oh, yeah, I bought some Bitcoin ones. Oh, you're a crypto bro who's out there, you know, scamming NFTs. It's not the same thing. You you are you are saying something, you know, here and people are, are accusing you of guilt because of that. Right. Like literally association. Um, and there's nothing, there's no evidence of that at all in this product. So it's such a bad argument and, and it's worse to see Mudahar saying stuff like this because it's a fence sitting argument. Uh, what the pot, like the second half of the tweet, right? Like you have to, um, in order to have this, you have to agree that the art is being stolen without consent, right? Like that has to be. Oh, uh, well, I guess it's. Are we, are we talking about Pal World or like in general when it comes to Well, he's to these not models? talking about Pal World, right? I, well, I guess. So the thing is, I don't know whether people agree or disagree on whether the, the, these models like being trained on art that exists now is stealing or if it's fair use. I'm pretty sure that's a thing that people fight about a lot. All the time. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I, so if it was like, one has to make a decision on what they think is the case there. And then, of course, whether or not, if, you know, like, whether or not there should be any change to the law in response to, uh, in response to this stuff being, uh, becoming more, um, prominent. Yeah, which goes back to ethical consumerism, right? Like, is, if it's legal, is it ethical? Right. Yeah. Was, like that's yeah. immediately a part of that conversation. This is a quagmire of a discussion, by <laughs> the way. We're not going to come mm. up with an answer because there is no good answer yet. This is one of those. You know, no. Yeah. This slighty... is this is currently being discussed. We're figuring yes. it all out. It's a big old society. Yes. I think exactly. that's why this would be seen as fence sitting in the sense of it's like we need to make sure the bad things don't happen and the good things do happen. It's like yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, pretty so much. We don't really know what they are yet. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're just sort of observing. Well, part of, yeah. well, again, it's like part of the conversation is what are what are what are some of the outcomes that people can see, and whether or not they're acceptable or unacceptable. For instance, the idea that many, 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 many artists could be losing employment in the future because of these tools is that is that a future that people are okay with, or is that a future that people aren't okay with? It's worth thinking about right but in terms of figuring out well okay if, if that's the case then does there need to be any changes reflected in i guess like consumer mindsets or legislation or anything well, like that this is that? probably one of the karma responses uh compared to what we're about to see oh good <laughs> he's literally correct you can oh, be angry all you want but consumers don't care how the product is made they care about the product itself all our technology is made from an unethical source yet here we are Picking and choosing what to be angry about. People, um, such uh, a one hundred one decision. Like that is super one hundred one, right? Yeah, it's, it's the idea is, that yeah. you can't possibly buy an. Uh, what you were saying, um, you can't right? be purely ethical. So yeah. fuck it is yeah. not a great attitude. Yes, yeah. uh, I feel like we've already acknowledged, and everyone does. Is like, yeah, we have limits, and we are hypocritical, uh, like human beings. But the, that doesn't mean we throw it all out, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, I I would really like to be able to buy a phone that doesn't have the potential of slavery or blood in my hands, but I also need a phone because that's the modern world, and I'm not going to go live in a, a cave, you know, and eat just berries. Uh, that's not going to be a thing that happens for me. So I have to live within this ethical construct that we have. And, and part of that means that in order to have a mobile phone, I have to accept that that mobile phone has blood on it, right? Like that's part of the 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 uh, agreement that we have with society is, yes, there's terrible things and we just got to fucking. Well, yeah, and we try to encourage everybody. Everybody tries to encourage everybody else to take even small strides in doing better things to make the world yes. a better place overall. But that we Activism simultaneously. And, and, and advocacy and campaigns and boycotts and all those things are good parts of this. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, ethical consumption. It's like, I feel like everybody does engage with it somewhat. Um, you try. And we try to right? encourage you. Try, you don't do eat dog. Thing. That's that's the first step, right? Like, you don't go in there and just just, just pick these because you, you feel this and you refuse to make that that step, right? Well, yeah, because um, I think 
uh, where if someone started with we only consume ethically, then someone's like, aha, I've got you here, 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 and here. You're inconsistent. I feel like you can do the reverse, which is we really only uh, unethically consume, and then someone could be like, well, no, we we got you here, here, and here. You've made choices that are exclusively for ethical reasons. Yes. So. I would say that uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that. <laughs> Someone suggested, so you have no point. It's like, yes, that's that's what I yeah, said. That's yeah. that, yes, <laughs> you're right. We have no point. We have said nothing of value. Good job. People often ask why games aren't considered art, and I think this guy and a lot of the replies perfectly encapsulates part of it. A lot of gamers and the industry itself simply treat games as products to be consumed, and nothing more. They don't give a shit about art. So... With this, this right here, right, he is unfortunately equating the two meanings of the word, right? Games are art in the big kind of way that they are art, uh, and games are products that have literal art in them. And there is a difference between those two meanings of the word fucking art. Yeah, there's like, um, if, if there was like a tree to represent all the different arguments happening at once, maybe even words and all the different definitions that we have of them. How oh, this thing gets out of hand real quick. Yes. Because now we're saying that Asmongold is the reason people don't consider games art, which is like, uh... <laughs> hmm. I'll never understand the cognitive dissonance someone must have to consistently complain about modern entertainment, and then promote a technology that is specifically designed to produce mass market slot. Oh, break well, so break. that one, oh, geez, that that one's interesting to me as well because, yeah, like uh, I assume Asmund, much like we do, would say you should support games that are not only good, like in terms of just content or execution, but also industry-related stuff. It's like the you pick carefully with what, what uh, companies you support and what creators you support, and so it'd be like, well, 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 why care? Shouldn't you just go for whatever game is good? Quote unquote, right. you enjoy. We wouldn't care about crunch if, if we didn't. There wouldn't be this whole thing of, oh, we don't want our, our developers to crunch. We'd be saying, no, crunch. We want more games quicklier. Well, and some people right? don't care about crunch, which is sure. some people think that, fuck it, you have crunch. I don't care. Get me my game, which is uh, another whole subset of people, I suppose. It's just the, uh, I guess, how much of this matters, right? If, we, if the starting statement is that none of it matters beyond how much you enjoy the thing, it'd be like, well, not quite, you know? Yeah, yeah, considering we're not a world like, of as, I'm sorry, Brains. Yeah, I was uh, this I guess relating to the tweet is this wh who was it who took the who was the game YouTuber who took the um Raid Shadow Legends ad? Was it Skill Up or who was it? I think Skill Up's one of the people who got in trouble for something like that, right? There's a couple of them. Yeah. Um but it's it this gives me this similar energy to that of you can't bitch and whine about how games are getting worse and how bad these companies are and all the layoffs and things like that and then also say well it's what it's it's only what you know gets bought that matters it's only the product that matters and then say i don't care i had fun with the game so who cares if it was you know generated with ai it's like you, you got to pick one you can't straddle both of these things yes and it makes me wonder what you actually care about if you know that's how you're looking at it <laughs> and it's very personal right that was that way that was synthetic man it's like oh yes the man who argued that like modern gaming is a disaster but you should go play raid shadow legends <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> he's a very ethical guy yeah and then promote a technology that is specifically designed to produce mass market slop breaking Microsoft is laying off 1,900 people in its gaming division, including Activision Blizzard, just three months after closing its $69 billion acquisition. Story coming a shortly. Lot First lot of layoffs yes, in the uh, tech sector over the last couple of years. But we also knew this one, right? With, with Microsoft, we knew this because they just bought uh, 15 to 19,000 employees when they picked mm. up Activision Blizzard right? Like a 10% loss or even a 15% loss of, of redundancy is probably to be expected. And I know not everybody in that was redundant, but a lot of them are going to be HR and IT and things like that, that frankly, in a $70 billion acquisition, we knew about this a year and a half ago when it was announced. There's going to be- I guess it's loss. just that it coincides with, uh, with, with a trend that's been occurring broadly across the industry. And this one is the biggest, right? Yes. Yeah, so 5,000 or 6,000 like people are gone already people. this year. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. well, it's January. And it's January, right. So already 6,000 people have been laid off. So this is a third 
of of all the people who've been laid off in 20 uh 2024 um 2023 there was like 10,000 people so it's a big it's a big jump already to see this many people being laid mm-hmm. off in in the industry um but that being said in this particular case while it is almost certainly a part or rather a confluence of the market as well there is this amount of redundancy that was expected and should have been expected and nobody should be surprised that people were laid off during this because it always happens in these mega acquisitions. Just a, a fact of how it works. Well, yeah, well, well, when you have companies operating independently, they're prone to bloat, you know, yes. like hiring too many people that they don't actually need. And then all of a sudden you've got a big company that's overseeing everything, assessing everything, going, hmm, we don't need you, we don't need you, right? And it makes sense. Urge. Can't imagine how it must feel to work at Blizzard and have one of your biggest personalities trending yesterday saying, artists don't matter, only for you, your friends to get laid off today. The artist don't matter has now been taken as just a a statement of fact in general, which is obviously... (laughs) I mean, presumably, yeah, like, I mean... I presume that he believes that artists matter. Like, the games that he likes matter. Well, so <laughs> what's what's interesting I is um because I I've seen basically all of what Asmund Gold has to say about all of this. Uh, it's very late into this whole discussion that he draws a distinction between personal value and market value, and it's okay. like w- which feels really like the word value, you know, like in matters. Yeah. These are it's mm. like careful with those words. <laughs> they can mean a lot of things. Guys, you know, it's, a lot of things, and it depends on who you're talking to. By the way, these are all these are all some of the highest liked tweets. This, this, the, these, that's why these have been shown. This, this is all the cancellation, quote unquote, of Asmund Gold or all these tweets. I think it's very interesting that we we see Asmund Gold being considered uh, owned by Blizzard or even you know uh, part of it just because he played WoW a lot. Ah, uh, is he like yeah. a really prominent? Is he like the most prominent sort of, uh, I guess, World of Warcraft related personality? He's, he's or he's big. I mean, he comes from Blizzard games, right? Like he's a, a Hearthstone and WoW player. That's like what he did. Where he comes from. But this is, in my mind, the same as saying, "Oh, Ninja, he's speaking for Epic because he played a lot of Fortnite." Well, he's just a, he's he's a fan of Blizzard, right? He's not taking payments or he wasn't an ex-employer I mean, he probably anything, right? does get paid for things i, I i'm not going to even pretend to understand where he, but i'm sure he's been you know paid to go to I'm, blizzcon or something but he's not like paid right by them he's I'm, not an employee i mean i don't know i'm just wondering yeah i've never yeah i've, I've never known him to do people see Asman Gold like that? Like he speaks for Blizzard? That seems strange. Apparently. I, mean, I would just be something I get clarification on. I, had, I didn't know if he had any connection to them beyond the fact that he played their games. I have no idea. Yeah, none. No clue. A couple of people in chat said Blizzard hate him. So <laughs> yeah, there know. you go. In his filth, consuming things that wouldn't exist without artists. Shits on artists. Shits on devs. Shits on gamers. Probably shits on the Jesus. floor in his bed. Bear in mind, this had like a 10,000 likes or something. Bedroom, and still somehow people will say he's based. <laughs> Anyways, don't listen to me. My opinion doesn't matter. Like, it, <sighs> the whole artists don't matter thing is just like, it's, it's, it's gotten way out of control. Artists' opinion don't matter. I regret ever listening to his streams, watching his YouTube videos every day for years. On a side note, it's funny how he shames WoW devs for being lazy and then praises all others for being lazy. He can't keep his own opinions consistent. Wait, um, did, did he not keep it consistent or did he give nuances? <laughs> well, so what's what's interesting is like uh, he's, he would have shamed WoW devs being lazy. Like, so if... If this, the context for this is that he's critical of WoW's like recent release and he sees evidence of lazy development versus someone's using AI, which by the way, not necessarily about power, power will. Think of this as theoretical. Someone uses AI to create a game that he finds fantastic and they, he finds out they made it in like two minutes. I don't think he'd care that much, even though technically speaking, that person's more lazy than the one that did the work he didn't like. I think that would be so, sort of something he wanted to highlight about reality. I think he says that a couple of times. He, he's not trying to... He believes all he's saying is stating what is true, what, what people actually do and say and think and feel. Not that he's... Uh, well, we, we've talked about it before on the subject of like how much do people value the effort or lack yeah. thereof on a game that is being worked on. And I've talked about it a lot because I find it... A, oh, pardon me. 
a really interesting quote. It was in relation to Halo 2, which uh, was notorious in terms of uh, crunch on that game. And it was something that uh, I'm paraphrasing, but Jason Jones said it was something along the lines of they don't care, you know, they don't care if it took you six hours or if it took you six years and a gallon of blood. Um, in relation to, at the end of the day, what people are invested in is the thing that you create. Um, and obviously the things that you would add on to that is, I think what you can see a lot of the time is that when people really like the thing that you've made, when they also see that you worked really hard on it, that earns you points. I mean, you see it with Lord oh, yeah. of the Rings all the time. Everybody talks about how hard they worked on that, all yeah. of the effort that went into crafting those films, that people really care about that. But then I think the the flip side would be, if you made something that sucked, and then you showed people that you had actually worked really hard on it that's not going to make them like yeah. it um yeah. they're still going to dislike it at the end of the day all of the work that you're putting into anything that you create the whole point of that work is that it's going to reflect in the final thing that you create the final piece that you create yeah. whether you know it's a game or a movie or anything like that that's what all the work is going into yeah um I so we, yeah we like, see this too as youtubers maybe uh, a little bit more closely right we can spend a thousand hours editing a video and it doesn't get any traction. That doesn't mean that we earn, you know, we're, we're owed views because we spent a thousand hours on this. If the content is bad, then the content is bad. Well, well in some this things case, are just out of our control, like discoverability and algorithm and stuff like that. So, yeah. well, and it genuinely could just, just be something that everyone's just not interested in, too niche, you know? It's just like, eh. right. Nobody wants to care, listen to you talk about, you know, your favorite type of bread or whatever. Like, that's just not something people are interested in. They don't click and they don't watch. Uh, and that doesn't mean that just because you put thousands of hours in that, oh, I spent 6,000 hours, three years working 40 hours a, a week on this video. That doesn't mean anything. There is no minimum amount of, of hourly, you know, worth or value, I suppose, that, that gets added into something. If you sit and, and, and stir a paint can for a thousand hours before you make a single mark, that's not a thousand hour painting that somebody should care about, right? Yeah, that's another interesting bit of uh, crazy nuance, I would say. <laughs> like, the, the, but the, I worked well, really I hard stirring, stirring that paint for a thousand hours for no reason. Well, I remember so, it was, uh, shouldn't it was I be video compensated? that we watched. I think it was the the one about the modern art one. You remember that one um, where he was talking about how there was like, was it like a blank canvas or something or it was white? Yeah, and it was it talking was like about really like all of the amount of effort that went into how difficult it would have been to make it look the way that it did. And it's like, yeah, that's you cool, bro. You can't see the on it. It's like, yeah, I sure <laughs> can't. But it's not for me. Anyway, <laughs> what's in the um, next room? Yeah. And I guess, um, yeah. <laughs> But but at the same time, it's it's um you know that that can be aspects of like the nature of how like for instance with um with uh Modern Warfare three right finding out that that was DLC that probably got well that got spun into a uh, into a full game and then got made in a very short amount of time it's like well when people find that out you know that's gonna contribute in some sense to their perspective on it mm -hmm. in this case negatively yeah um, so like I, there's uh, a, an artist named I'm sorry. No, no, you, no, you go, go ahead. There's an artist named Mondrian uh, who is somewhat famous because he makes these uh, color blocks with like black lines in between it. You've probably seen them throughout your life. They're, you know, somewhat famous, obviously. Uh, and part of the thing about them is that he makes these all very, very perfect lines, even though he didn't, you know, ostensibly use uh, tape or anything like that. And you can't see the paintbrush marks, uh, the strokes in the paint right so you get very close to them and you go wow you can't tell that this wasn't printed even though it was made you know uh, 1920s or something like that um that doesn't i think matter necessarily to somebody who's just looking at it today on on you know a print or something like that they're either enjoying it or they're not and and i think that's uh, maybe uh, um, a good analog for how very little that kind of stuff matters well, it's really fucking hard to solve a lot of this, ultimately. Um, I've already seen someone say, like, no matter how much you spend on a thing, it doesn't give it intrinsic value, as, as though anybody believes that is necessarily true. Because then I was yes. thinking, just, I just had a thought for a while, like, intrinsic? What does that even necessarily mean? And what can it mm. mean? And what would a bunch of people interpret that you mean when you use it? Um, the, the one that's on screen right now... This is evidence to me that like many people's feelings are being hurt and many people's fundamental identities in relation to their fundamental beliefs are being shaken. I think that also explains how angry people in chat are. It's like, 
try not to uh, fall into that trap. All right, everybody. We're chill. We're just uh, having a yeah, chat. Chill out. We're just just, having just a calm down. I've seen a lot right? of people caps lock in. A lot of people using liar like before establishing what their point is. It's like you got to calm down. Just having a <laughs> chat. I just knew as soon as I saw it, I told you, as soon as I saw what this title was, I knew I was going to make people mad today. <laughs> oh, you can't not make people mad on this one, but I find it kind of... Yeah. Uh, what I'm, what I'm fascinated by, I suppose, way. is uh, a bit of the human nature going on here. Like, um, is, is seeing Asmongold's quote is just, it's just like, that's awkwardly cut at the beginning to the point where I can't even start, you know, understanding what he's saying. And then he says something that I'm like, no way he meant the crazier thing. And then I find out, obviously, he doesn't mean the crazier thing. And then, of course, everyone is like, it's, it's, we're getting a bit of telephone happening where someone, the previous tweet said he said that artists don't matter. Like, what, what just in general? Like, like, if you become an artist, you stop mattering? <laughs> he, talks, like, he talks about them like they don't fucking matter. <laughs> Jeez. I disagree. I don't think so. Um, and maybe it's because I have the benefit of having seen him talk more about his perspective. So maybe you'll change your maybe. mind. Maybe what I've seen, it seems well, awfully, right now, I, super I'm dismissive and yeah. I'm just lost. I yeah, yeah. You, to be fair, you should be you should be lost because this this is the experience of watching someone get like all kinds of like shit we, said about them. It feels like I've been dropped into the middle of a conversation that's been exactly. going for a while. How but have so many people missed the fact that Asman's saying artist opinions don't matter is in a business sense? The average consumer will not care about artists' views on a game they enjoy. So, I didn't see this you as know him what's, meaning what's... that artists' opinions don't matter in general. Um, you know, people did get mad when Martin Scorsese, an artist, expressed his opinion on the nature of Marvel movies. Yeah, in both directions. So they did, they, they did yeah. care. And it now, whether or not it had an actual, like, business impact, well, maybe it did. I don't know, because, like, Marvel movies have started to fail now. Though, I mean, obviously, there's a variety of explanations for that. But, I mean, that would be an example of, well, an artist's opinion, I mean, it did matter. Everybody was talking about it for ages. And it may well have uh, had an impact. Um, and I think that uh, th this is so very complicated because artists' opinions don't matter in a business sense. Like, so you're saying that like any uh, any old artist's opinion about the state of the art in terms of its production or quality doesn't really matter to how much it sells. And it's like, but it does though. Even if in a small way, it, it totally would. I the mean, creator it's, it's or in the a huge way because it's their opinion and their taste that creates the thing that people buy. I mean, it's it's like necessary yeah there are all kinds of like like i mean just fundamental recommendations for all of us on on youtube to people is, is why certain things are seen or understood right and so at this point i'm just curious where the line is drawn between artist opinions don't matter in a business sense compared to that is what that so if someone said like all that matters is the people who's consuming its opinion and it's like Okay, so whose opinion can potentially be influenced by what they hear from other people, and they could be an artist. artist. They could be the one that made and they it. Could be, yeah, exactly. This is such a stupid thing, though, because I don't think that's what Hasman Gold was even saying, right? Like he he was saying that once the product is finished, uh, um, the finished product, the only thing that matters to to its uh, ability to sell is whether people want to buy it. Well, which is not, I think, a controversial opinion. A big, uh, everybody else is saying, oh, but artists. I'd say a big gut shot to this, too, is the several times we've had evidence of fundamental big creators who've made a thing getting swayed by either individuals or then eventually public opinion of their creation. So, for example, the recent one with uh, James Summerton, right? Like, he nuked his entire mm. experience on the internet because one person's channel claimed, and with proof, Said that he was creating his artwork or his expression in an unethical way, and then yeah. everyone found out, and then he ran away because he was like, "Holy fuck, you've you've discovered my my immorality." And to an extent, then you have um, artists that will switch up as they go along, like with their work because of different people's individual opinions spreading out, more so about the thing, whether or not the thing itself is good or fun. And 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 that's the thing. I broadly uh, agree that most people just consume, and I don't even want to. I'm not even trying to frame that as a negative right now. That would be for a different conversation. But the yeah, nature most people of have more pressing concerns yeah. in their life. But the uh, when you know certain things about, so for example, um, someone t t took a lot of meaning from a James Summerton video, and then someone says, "You know, he didn't work very hard on that. He actually wrote that in like a half hour." That might make you think he's more impressive. Like, holy shit. 
he did that that quickly. But then when you find out, it's like, well, no, he copied it from someone in half an hour. He's like, oh. So now all my appreciation for him as an artist through the, the work itself is it belongs to someone else, not him. And I actually think that starts to hit on the fundamental issue for a lot of people with AI art. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, they want they want a source to appreciate for their newfound, you know, meaning, or whatever, and it's like, it doesn't belong to any individual well, and especially necessarily. when you talk about the idea of it being paired with uh, talent and hard work and years and years and years and years of practice and training. I'm, I'm going to like throw it right out into the weeds. I don't necessarily think that just because, you know, uh, uh, you know that John, James Summerton, for example, copied that, that you can't still get value out of it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, as, an, as an audience, right? Like I, even knowing oh, yeah. that, Thieves, that somebody else wrote Thieves it. Have, but, yeah, they... It's stolen, but yeah, like I said, the, they have value to them. Yeah, the big Sometimes change wouldn't be that they no longer like the video. They might not like the video, but like they may not, they may still find meaning in it. But that now it won't be James Summerton that's responsible for that. It'll be the person he stole it from. They will rather yeah. attribute it to them. But that doesn't necessarily have to change how you feel about what you got from it, right? Like if if yeah. I am a huge fan of an author, and then it turns out that uh, you know we find out. 10 years after I've read every book they wrote that um, they stole all of it from someone else. I don't think that that necessarily changes the, the value that I got out of it. Right. Like I would have read the words sure. from any author. Mm -hmm. No, I don't necessarily disagree with that. And obviously that's going to be different for everybody. I'd say. This is exactly how I imagined entitled consumers would view the AI stuff. Because to them it's all about if they get their fun little art fix. No thanks for the many people behind the media, they depend on. We are a means to an end. You're a shitty person if you feel this way. Okay, but, but like you're working as an artist, right? Like you're getting paid to make commercial art at the same time. I, this, oh, I like just sort don't of, agree. I, this is, I think this is sort of poorly worded but i think the idea at the core of it i agree with uh there needs to be a i think people need to remember that the content that they consume often for free or for virtually free has to come from somewhere people have to work on it it has to be made it has to take a, a level of talent and skill and oftentimes passion and a lot of people take that for granted they don't yeah. think about all the things that go into making the stuff that they consume without a second thought. Um, we yeah, don't uh, want to foster a world where people devalue the talents that people hone and train and learn to do, especially if that stuff is stuff that you can't do. And I think a lot yeah. of this uh, will be because we do tend to want people to know where the thing they love comes from. Uh, we, we want that information ourselves sometimes, right? Like if we if we enjoy a particular piece of artwork and all of them have the same signature, and we're like, who even is this person? Because the or you realize like seven of your favorite films are all from the same director and you didn't even notice that because you were too young at first to, to like care about it or something. And, and there's like a sense of, oh, wow, that that. You get to appreciate that person's talent, sort of thing. But the the reality is, most people, I think, uh, Rags kind of mentioned this recently. Like the the, the um, most people with most things in life aren't going through understanding everything about where it came from or how it works or who made it. It yeah, it, it does well, serve a function. Yeah, how is this saying like someone go to the supermarket and go, "Wow, isn't it crazy that I can get basically any food that I could ever want at my at like my convenience, and then store it in a refrigerator to consume at my convenience?" You're not often thinking about. About yeah, this. you need to have some perspective of how good you have it to be able to do that. Um, yeah, how often it just comes to the... the tap and go, wow, plumbing, that's pretty cool. Yeah, just, re <laughs> just remember how good your life is. <laughs> like, I've had that you... thought every once in a while, here and there. I still have <laughs> to, yeah, but it's not like, something remember, about every day, we, right? Pretty much all of us, we, we shit in purified water. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, that's how insanely good our lives are. The stuff yeah. that people would kill for back in the day, we literally use it to shit in and flush away into the sewer. Um, I have two thought experiments for the chat, right? Because I think this will help them kind of determine some of this stuff. Um, first, what if the Mona Lisa is in fact a forgery, right? There's, there's a lot of questions about whether or not it was stolen and, and uh, the one that is currently in the Louvre is a forgery. And how would that affect the sort of effect of the Mona Lisa and does it right is seeing the Mona Lisa and knowing that that is in fact not Da Vinci's original, but a forgery. Does that change the effect of the Mona Lisa? 
And then I'll throw another one out, which is what about the Star Trek replicator and food, right? If the Star Trek replicator is able to exist in our current world and we can create any food and it can taste like whatever and you can have whatever, does that devalue the value of that food? I think those are, are two good uh, sort of beginning um, thought exercises for this very concept. Well, yeah, and say in regards to the first one, um, yeah, it would. Uh, I wouldn't go see it if it was a forgery, um, because if I was going there, it would probably to be for the historical element of you know seeing Da Vinci himself's works. So if it was a forgery, then it's like it's a nice painting. But I kind of came here for that historical, you know, element. Um, and as for the the value of food stuff, I mean, obviously the value does in one in one sense it doesn't change, and in one sense it's immensely devalued. It doesn't change in the sense of uh, like I still need like it's still precious in the sense that I need to eat to live. But also, it's so easy to get that thing I need. It's basically just like oxygen at this point. Like, yeah, oxygen is precious, but it's everywhere. So. Like, it's both precious and not precious at the same time, you know? Yeah. it's. I don't have an answer for these, right? Like, these aren't something... It's very much just... This is beginning-level thinking about this kind of stuff. Sure. Because I would argue, personally, that knowing that the, it is a forgery um, would change it, but we'll never know, right? We'll never know if that is a forgery. I don't think that the effect of... If I knew myself, personally, I'm the only person in the world who's like, yeah, I know that's a forgery. Uh, I don't think that would change the effect that the Mona Lisa has had on the world. I don't think it would yeah, change but, the effect. But I guess like what Rag said, it would for him. So. Sure. No, no, uh, yeah, 100%. I, I understand. And it, I, and I think it would for me, too. Right? I just don't have an answer that's a definitive answer for either. Well, so... Uh, well, uh, I don't... Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. Go for it. You speak less than I do, so you go. Well, now, if, look, right? It's slipped <laughs> my mind now. <laughs> okay. Um... um I can't remember. Yeah, go. <laughs> so I was going to say as a third hypothetical, if uh, if we found out the uh, Lord of the Rings was actually written by a complicated AI in the year 3033, uh, and it was sent back in time and dropped on Tolkien's desk, and he decided, decided to just own that it was him that wrote it, what does that do for your perception of Lord of the Rings? And I'd be like, mm -hmm. I don't think it changes much of anything about how much meaning I get out of the story. However, it does but change my perception of Tolkien. Yes. And I think that's that's a, a super cool concept right there to, to play around with, right? A lot of people don't sort of inspect their own thoughts on these uh, to the depth that I think you should, because this is not a, a surface level discussion, unfortunately. Well, I would say on this one, you got to you gotta go deep on this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This one is really starting to sort of speak to and address pretty fundamental yes. questions about uh, about humanity, you know? Yeah, what is human? Um, also, what is human and what's it mean? Like, for all the people that just said that's a ridiculous hypothetical, why are you even here? <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, you might not have the mental capacity to should, engage with Really, this should be called every frame of hypothetical because we love hypothetical. Dude, hypotheticals the are great. They're great and they're super helpful and useful for figuring out what you actually believe. Yeah. Yes. Um, if, what if I was we going to say. If we where there was no hypotheticals, then I mean, I would probably feel terrible. I don't think I could recognize what that is without hypotheticals. Um, what I was going to say is that I think, um, I, I think we really, we really value our capacity to be creative as people, yeah. which I think makes a lot of sense. Cause I think it's, it's, it's something that you could point to as a very clear thing that seems to distinguish us from basically every other living thing on this planet is our capacity for creativity. And so this starts to, uh, you know, this, this topic starts to kind of challenge that in ways that are, um, difficult. And so I think that's the reason why it's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta go deep on this one and sort of yeah. start to figure out what you fundamentally believe about the nature of like human expression and everything. Uh, and this is a discussion that's been around for a thousand years. Well, game. and this, as far as I'm concerned, is only the beginning. This is gonna, this is gonna go on for a long time now because technology is yes. that far along. It's been going on for a long time, right? Yeah. Since the, the what is it? The uh, the print machine came out, right? Whoa, it's not being written by people. Like there are there's been concepts about this forever and ever. And what is the value of the human soul and how much, you know, value does an artist actually have back in the 1700s? There there's a lot of discussion about it. It's happened for hundreds of years. I don't think we're going to come to an answer anytime soon. 
Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't expect that everybody's gonna, that everybody in the world is gonna reach a consensus like, yeah, we figured out the human condition, guys. We got it. We nailed it. <laughs> Pack it on. Yeah, on EFAP, we figured it but, out. Yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> in, in, in different ways, the conversation's been going on. I mean, pretty much since we first emerged. You know. Yes. We should do a thing where we should do a th thing where every artist in the world just doesn't post for like a year and see how cooked the entire industry gets since apparently the difference isn't substantial that's a uh that's a fascinating sort of thought experiment isn't it what it would be cool like as a no thing see what happens games, i wonder TV if everybody shows. would be more inclined creatively after that experience of not having it provided you know Oh man, how many people would come out and become artists, right? Like you'd create a whole new generation of artists that were operating in the I want to see this and it doesn't exist, right? The same reason why I started creating YouTube videos. I want to make this thing. You'd see all of that. It it would create a whole new cottage industry of the same industry again. I'm having a fucking John Walker moment here. Someone in chat just said like you should try putting like potential years of your life into a project just to have a pretentious neck beard tell you you don't matter. It's like, I could do you one better than that. I've spent like five or six years on my career, and I have people telling me I should be killed. So, like, yeah. I, I think I can talk about that. Yeah, sure. At it's, least you uh... matter enough to be killed. Yay! <laughs> the video game industry as a whole is so cooked with how brain dead stupid consumers are Jesus Christ. Well, this doesn't, doesn't you know, this, this could just be true anyway. <laughs> it, it, could, like... it could be true. <laughs> I was about to say, not many stupid consumers are Jesus Christ, but then I was like, oh, yeah. Because I, I was just listening to it and I was like, what? What? Mm hmm. I have to perceive a different. Oh, and so this, this, is good, oh, this is a guest spot. We got uh, It's a Gundam's point of view, which. Fair warning, he's not, uh, I saw some people in chat say apparently he's had conflict with Asmongold in the past, so don't expect this to be kind, is all I'm gonna say. ...friends that I consider substantial. And I do not consider the difference- I adore his, uh, his little it's, One Punch it's, Man it's VTuber well. thing. It's so well. cute. Substantial. Do you guys? No. Right. No. And that's is he really dunking on him? If it was me- hmm? You remember when Dunkey watched us on EFAP and pretended to be a f uh, falling asleep? <laughs> yes. It's some of the best content. <laughs> is he dunking us? Is he oh, dunking no. Asmongold? That's just the, 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 he's, he's staring and he's getting progressively more angry. He's, uh, okay. You, right. can, you can kind of see it there, that pause. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it here. For just a second, though, I was like, oh, he's doing a Dunkey. I forgot <laughs> about that. Made with AI, I'm completely okay with that because it was fun. The evidence it is doesn't that matter. Nobody really cares the lead about this. developer has been very positive. And like, not a great standard. Things are fine if they're fun. Probably not. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Without, without context, a line like that is weird. Like, I don't care as long as it's fun. It's like, well, it's your bad. There's it was gonna be a fun, lot of- It was alright. Well, there's a lot of scenarios where that just wouldn't be the case. Like, you'd be enjoying a thing, but as soon as you- You know what, I think if everybody yeah, were forced to kill the animals they eat in the world, that we would have a dramatic decrease of it. It wouldn't, wouldn't be completely. There'd be plenty of people who'd be fine with it. Plenty of people who don't even have an ethical issue with it whatsoever. But I think there's so many people that couldn't bring themselves to do it that it would then curb a lot of uh, meat eaters as a result. Yeah, especially if you start doing like friendlier animals like a cow. Right? Imagine looking into a cow's eye and, and bolting it in the brain. That would change a lot of people's. Yeah, a lot of people just wouldn't be able to do it, and so the it would it would change the amount of meat eaters in general. Um, and that 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 is like so. What is that evidence of? It's like I'm not exactly sure, but I imagine it's to do with the uh, the proximity to the creation of the thing that you're enjoying. I guess mm -hmm. positive about AI in the past yeah. and made an AI game. We're gonna wait. Someone said Mola's a vegan. That's disappointing. You're not a vegan. <laughs> I'm not a vegan either. I mean, that, that is disappointing, scum, but yeah, you're not a vegan. How can I be this high you're energy right, if I were a vegan? That's a big deal. Come on. Yeah, it's called this, AI way. Art Imposter. That lets yeah. an AI artist draw a picture. And so that, that was like, like one of the yeah, games. We're going to be playing and, this this week. Yes, just generally has been much more uh, positive about some of the benefits of AI rather than what is the normal sentiment amongst artists and, and you know, I guess general uh, Twitter population, which is that, you know, AI is bad and it takes jobs from people. Well, capacity for AI investment, we have to make tough choices. And so for some teams, that means removing layers. Uh yeah, this is an argument we haven't really covered much yet. It might come up more just the, the introduction of AI kills other jobs. But...
the corporate speak, removing layers to simplify execution and drive velocity. <laughs> you say, fire uh, you're people, just fire you're people. gonna have bots write your shit. It's like, oh, okay, it's just fire people. That's what it means, but in less, uh, in, in you don't uh, have to pay robots, different words. But, um, Synergizing our future opportunities. Yeah, we've not really gone over that. The, the obvious, like the fight in that one is the jobs are always uh, crunched. I think uh, Moriarty was talking about that a bit earlier, but that's not really the focus of what we're talking about. Uh, to simplify execution and drive velocity. So Tyler, over the last few years, higher interest rates, the efficiency drive, that was the cover for layoffs, or the reason, however you want to look at it. AI and the sentiment. For and that was, uh, that's in Gundam's stuff. It's, it's okay. Not... Yeah, I was. He's, so he's throwing that in there in like, his video, right? Watching? Yeah the news from artists artists opinions don't matter it just doesn't matter yeah, because echo. what matters is the opinion look at his of eyes the, the, any of the edits you see are all gundams okay <laughs> like they're not look mine the people that are buying the product <laughs> by oh, like your opinion on I love these little guys, Dude, all right? They're great. Yeah, so they're so happy. They're Wojak's not funny. I love those songs <laughs> that Wojak's are just like Rage Comics' second arrival, or well, second coming, I guess. Remember Rage right, Comics? Second yeah. gen, yeah. And it, like, Basically. just because you do it doesn't, like, nobody cares. Like, it, 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 it's not... <laughs> Look at that. It sounds like this, this, it feels like the He's person so who angry. says this must not have never made anything, you know? No, I, I, don't, I don't buy that. I think that the clip is shit. I think the, uh, this, the, it, it's obviously clunky as fuck and it's made to sound like he oh, thinks I that mean, all artists that don't made, matter, which is obviously not his take. I mean, if he's made a big old response video, that'll be like a more... The enlightening. That, yes. That'll be a place to look at to see what he thinks when he can present it, you know, coherently and at length. And not, I haven't heard anything yet, right? Like, I, I'm taking it off of Mahler here that he does, in fact, not mean that. He's gonna he's gonna make his position clear, yeah. Because obviously, well, because he didn't. It's, it's it's something that Destiny has said, many others that they don't they don't have like ten minute conversations with the assumption that they're gonna be clipped out with every single thirty a... seconds that pass. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you could take a lot of the things that I've said in this stream and make me to be either uh, an AI advocate or uh, somebody who despises it. Either way, probably it's not relevant. It's like whenever one of these, like, you know, really well-respected and, and really respectable uh, directors talks about how bad Marvel is. Shut oh, up, come man. on, bro. Shut okay, up. get him. Get him out of here. <laughs> get him out of here. The dude who literally looks like a pedophile and lives like one is going to take a shit on Martin Scorsese, not on my watch. No, not on my watch. That was a dog watch. shit opinion from Martin you Scorsese, said... just to be clear. Um, yeah, we, we, we've, we've been historically very against it. However, the, the key information, as far as I'm concerned, is I would love to hear more from him because the vagueness of it's not cinema actually, I think, just hurts the whole conversation. Well, but it's really awkward. It wasn't vague. It was a whole article that he wrote. Well, you're talking about yeah, the many different we weird quotes about where he talked about, like, yeah. franchise or whatever and some other words that we were just... Well, like... that, that, I guess that's what I'm saying is it's like the article wasn't like that it was still confusing and bizarre. Well, and this mm -hmm. is this is again a part of the telephone game. It sounds like now that Asmongold is poised against Scorsese about whether or not Marvel is any good. It's like, no, this is we're missing loads of layers of like what's happening here, because like you know the, those two don't even they're not fighting at all. And then the, the quotes from Scorsese aren't even the things that associated with how everyone thinks Marvel's falling apart. Like I don't even think he would say. Publicly, that the Marvels is a terrible film. You probably say it's not cinema, though, <laughs> which he's probably. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's fair to say Scorsese's calling these movies shit. I think he's essentially calling them theme park rides. I, I, I wish he would a, call oh, them shit. I think that's a better argument than saying they're not rides. cinema. Well, they are now, but I don't think they're. I mean, there's some. There's a lot of good Marvel movies, actually. I mean, oh, yeah, shit, the not all of them. Yeah. none of them are yeah, cinema. The, the old ones. But, but that's kind of the problem. Is well, he just the... doesn't want all of cinema to devolve into nothing but Marvel movies, which I can totally understand. Sure, they're but like... he said they're not cinema. Yeah, which I... Hmm. Which, that, that, yeah, that, yeah. That was a terrible they're opinion. Cinema. They are. No, I, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They're films, you know? Well, they yeah. are. Just say that they're not good. They... Uh, I would way right. prefer that. That'd be way more based if he said that they were, they were crap. They're not even films. <laughs> they're not even movies. <laughs> You yeah. can't even see them. <laughs> the artist's opinion doesn't matter. Says the person who's never created art. We live in a day and age um, where... Huh. No, well, no I mean, mediocre I mean, streams makes... are art. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is that we that's the conversation that also needs to be involved as guys. People making YouTube videos, oh, right? God, yeah. It involves creativity. It does. Well, this is where I mean. There's just spice everywhere and anger and fury. 
And it's like, all right, it's just, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. There's someone who spent their entire life living in a cave like a boggling. Playing World of Warcraft has amassed enough following to where people think he has good oh, man, takes and great picture. ideas. Fuck. Well, and, and uh, Asmongold brings this up at one point, but it's just like, people always reference my shitty looking room, whatever, they disagree with me. And it's like, yeah, well, I, I guess, yeah. And he even says that's just so, to be expected. That's that's what people do. I, it's yeah, just I guess funny. you can clean your fucking room, it's, can't you? It's, but it's totally unrelated. But it's no, it has like, nothing to do with uh -huh, his argument. room is dirty. Again, oh, it's an ad right? Yes, I think so. Um, only if you use I that think... in place of an argument. If you do an argument and then call him a nasty boglin who lives in filth, then that's <laughs> oh, just, yeah, that's I just mean, the, yeah. That's just I mean, he knows he knows what he's doing, right? I mean, it's yeah. obviously for laughs too. Well, because Gundam's it's pretty that, fucking it adds offended. To the argument, but no nutrition. He's he's offended by the the, the sentiment as he believes Asmongold means it. Which it would be curious to hear them talk. Um, be interesting to see what would happen. Bro, like, fuck, I, I was up late last night. So here we are. His clarification. And right. I was reading some of the posts about myself. Your fucking Dragula is in the background. It goes away soon, though. Oh, obviously. <laughs> and uh, some people are fucking... <laughs> <laughs> fucking pissed. Ooh. We've, we fucking got partially taken... Do you remember, like, the stream gets paused when you play music for just too it's long? Up. Yeah. Like, I feel like I made uh, people more mad today than yeah, I have in yeah, probably, I like, a month. I am... Hmm? Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. One be awesome. controversy away from a villain arc. Which, by the way, is is said as a joke, but is actually true with how things just work on the internet. If you get in enough controversies in a row, you'll just be seen as Satan. Like, uh, you need to stretch them out. One per year, you'll be alright. Yeah, every once in a while. The artist comment? Yeah, yeah, like, I didn't even think that was a big deal, right? I mean, I didn't. I thought everybody knew that. I did. I thought everybody knew that what I was saying was true. Apparently not. Guys, I of course nobody likes for people to tell them that they're wrong. But this, this doesn't fucking matter. It's a fucking tweet. Who cares? Chill out. It, it, everything's fucking fine. Like, I, I made a... I, I... Which is a good attitude, by the way. Just, uh... A lot of people yep. uh, need to better understand, and this probably should be taught well, at this point, what, uh, what it means. Out. Well, even when you have... Because he's having this reaction when he's got thousands, tens of thousands, up to millions of people watching him getting, like, you know, roasted. And he's like, doesn't matter, it's fine. If more people had that perspective, I feel like we'd be better, people would be better off, stronger, as a result. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, like, the the perception that, you know, millions of people are just telling you you're worthless can do a lot to your, your brain. It's about how you conceptualize it, I suppose. He said this on a public platform. Now, this dipshit did cut it a little bit out of context, but that's what people do. Who expect me to draw a moral line... I have to perceive a difference that I consider substantial. And I do not consider the difference substantial. I was talking about the difference between, between procedural again? generation yeah. and okay. uh, AI uh, generation, like generative AI. Uh, I feel like they both functionally do the same thing, and I don't see there being a large moral difference between the two things. Uh, that so AI generation versus procedural generation, which is interesting to bring up about... I don't know the technical difference between them. It's a, it's, it's an, it's an, like, yeah, it's an interesting con. I've never thought about that. Not once. That's a good, it's a good thought. It's, it's something to just consider because it could all be on a, a, you know, a scale. Well, as, um, it's probably something that's worth talking about in terms of, it's not like AI art is brand new if you start to think about, like, so for instance, water simulation. Daggerfall, like Daggerfall used procedural generation for its world. Oh, well, I. The, the example I was thinking about is like simulation in video games and, um, yes. and, and movies, right? So like if you have water simulation, it's not like it, that's guided by a computer. It's curated and guided. And obviously the software was created by a person and it's curated by a person. But it's not like a person is individually animating each of those waves or like the reactions to like if a, you know, play a character. Uh oh. Animators were individually animating frame by frame every bit of Sully's uh, fur. That would have been guided by a computer. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's like, that's computer generated, uh, curated by a person, mm -hmm. driven by software created by a person. Well, this actually reminds me of. Um... It's gonna annoy me. Chat, you'll know. Who's the guy who made. Well, Fringy might know. Who's the guy who made the ASTF movie? Tom something? Uh, oh, Tom Tomska. 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 
He made a video semi-recently on plagiarism. Uh, it's a really cool video. It's called Tom Scar's Guide to Plagiarism. Um, this video is sponsored. He has a scale in here, and I I don't know if he has it in a way that's easily readable, but it's um, it's about the how things. It's like ten slots on the plagiarism scale, and he and he actually sort of implies that they actually turn out to be a circle. Uh, you know, you start with the original thing. And then you, the lowest version of it is the fact that you would have seen or heard of it, and then later on in your life you do a thing that's kind of got a, a piece of it in there, maybe. And then it moves on to, uh, you you copy it, kind of, but you didn't even know where it had come from, that you, you'd you taken a piece out of the thing. And then he, and he goes on until he gets all the way back around to literally copying the thing and reselling it as your own thing. Which he said, like, that kind of loops you back around to the original creation. Um... But the, 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 he like draws a line at one point where we, we at one point cross over from ethical to unethical, and it's really hard to exactly explain where and how it happens. Um, and I feel the same thing is happening with uh, computer-assisted like artistic works. Where exactly is the line? Yeah. And uh, that's going to be talked about for a long time, I imagine. And I also talked about it in the context of people copying... So, like, for example, like, you saw, like, the uh, the parallels between, like, the Pokemon and the Dragon Quest and, you know, Pokemon and Digimon. Like, I don't view there to be, like, a large moral difference between an artist using other art as inspiration or to basically create something that's another version of what the original artist made. I don't view that as a tremendously morally different thing versus generative AI creating a uh, an aggregate of art by using a million pictures. Yeah, so this is another like fundamental position that a lot of people opt for, which is that what is the difference between a computer that collects a billion pictures and a person who's seen a billion things in their lives and they both generate an image? Um, and and, and I mean, that's not too... Personally, to... right? Well, it, it's, uh, it's really complicated, and I think that it's totally fine for someone to say, I'm not sure about this. Like, uh, because yeah. there's a well, lot to think I, about. I'd like him to drill down a bit more on here, because he throws that word tremendously in there, and it's just like, okay, so you don't think there's a, there's a tremendous difference, but is there, right, but there some is difference, difference, or are you actually saying there's no difference? Like, what exactly are you saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I think feel it's that like... difference, right? Like, it's the difference between whether you're saying there's no difference or there's a great difference that is where we're all going to end up on this spectrum. Um... Well, again, I think this is another one that starts to drill into some pretty fundamental, you know, fundamental questions about, I guess, how you perceive, like, human consciousness. Because I, I imagine the argument, you know, the argument one way would be, well, there's a difference between an AI algorithm that is, I like, pulling directly from images that exist compared to you look at it, goes through your brain, and then translates to whatever you're doing on... You know, yeah, piece of paper my, on a computer. What's my emotional state? What is my personal history of things? What's my my mood? And what are the things that has you know influenced me to get here? And and I remember the people that I've talked to and the things that they might like. And yep. it seems like uh, I mean, not to be like like obviously it's a more human process, but um, I feel I don't know enough about the technicality of how the the AI does it on like a coding level. But I, but if it's just an element of these are all of these images, therefore the pixels will be here, and that's all that goes into it. And I was like, well, I feel like we've really lost the soul of what inspiration is. But even yeah, well, in that's... that, right, you're using words like soul, right? It's yeah, it's definitely um, it's a, a quagmire of a discussion. <laughs> are you I suggesting think that's that rags is appealing to something that can't even be nailed down, so we can't even argue yeah. against it? Is that what you're saying? I mean, I'm I'm not. I'm not using soul in a, in a literal sense, but uh, more in like a hu uh, humanity and human process sort of sense. Um, I, su I suspect that that's the essence of his position that people don't like, is that he doesn't see a difference between a person looking at other people's art, getting inspiration and creating something new, and an AI algorithm doing the same thing, like looking at other people's art and, cr and spitting out something that's like a mix of everything. Like, mm -hmm. he just equivocates both of them. Well, no, question but for like, Rags, though. If, with that Lord of the Rings example, then, you would have thought Lord of the Rings has a lot of soul in it, but if it turned out there was zero in the sense that a robot made it, would like, what does that mean for your um, point of view? I don't know, I guess I'd probably feel pretty deflated, uh, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I would value it. Like, I could, I would value it a whole lot less. But I don't know exactly. Like, knowing that all of the work and stuff. Like, just to be clear with the example of. Uh, the example was it was a movie that was made in a different time. And then it was time traveled back and given to Tolkien. The book, yeah. Oh, then I guess then I guess it would shift who my appreciations for, and that's all that would change. Oh, sure, but the you were saying like you, you know there's no soul in a lot of work that's created by a robot or whatever, and it's like well if there's a work that you do believe soul is in, and then someone reveals it's like actually that was a robot that made it. Um, uh, in this case, being AI like you know procedural generation or whatever. This this is the thing. I right? guess I'd be on... deceived. On the human side of it, the idea of there being a spark, uh, something divine, right, that uh, an AI could not possibly replicate. And so, therefore, you cannot just equivocate the AI process of, you know, amalgamating stuff and spitting out something as opposed to a human doing it. You know, well, I, when I guess it's that's inspiration. Point, right? It could be a fundamental yeah. disagreement that's kind of like impossible to yeah. bridge the gap on, depending on what you believe about whether or not there's something like, you know. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> so, someone could argue, like, I, like, I'm holding on to human generation of content because I just believe that is one of the best signifiers for creating worthwhile and meaningful art. Even if a machine could trick me, even if a human can create soulless things, I don't care. I'm just, I'm just saying that it's a good thing to hang on to. Like, someone could say that and be like, I, I guess I understand. I just. And I yeah. guess also for clarification, like if we had advanced like androids that were like Decker replicants or uh, because Decker was a replicant and or, or like data from Star <laughs> why would Trek, you even right? why would you do that? That's going to be what, what I have. Uh, what do you mean? I was just talking about data and I was talking about it just for clarification. I don't know what you talk about. So what I was taught, uh, but like those like those really complex like androids that I would consider people, you know, that would be different from. Like just just a just a, a robot algorithm that just rearranges pixels based off of learning from images, right? I think you get if it's a, it's not necessarily that it's not non-human, but I don't think we're at the you know. Point so where are you, are you are you arguing that it requires some level of, I guess, sapience in sort of order like to personhood? I feel because or I would that, say that, that, that might an be AI is right. If we're talking about like a like a replicant, right? It is a robot. It's a machine that is, you know, uh, not thinking of things necessarily, right? A replicant um, is. Replicants are people. Are they? <laughs> I would say, I would, I mean, I specifically used a, a, well, the so, example uh, of like To Decker, cut through, right? I assume Ra the reason Rax chose them was he assumed everyone is on board with considering replicants as people. You can choose whatever fiction you want. I assume Rax yeah, is talking about synthetic like people. Yeah, data example. Right, but what I mean is that what is the difference in that case, right, between a, a fake brain that is coming up with it and a robot machine server that's coming up? I think that a I think that a synthetic person would essentially I think that part of what would make them a person would be the ability to have, you know, memories and experiences and emotional states and things that would probably be something I guess you could create um a a brain like device where the, it's a it's like it's an entity that doesn't have emotions or any of these um, things where it but here's the thing right sure. so you remember in ex machina how would you know whether or not they're having those authentic experience oh well i guess you don't machina. need to we can move past the movie but how do you know like let's say you were talking to a, a robot that was acting a lot like a person how would you ever know if they were having the authentic experience of any of the things that they say to you, or if they were presenting that to you to convince you that they were a person? Yes, that's and exactly is there what a I mean. distinction there, or is that a distinction without a difference? Um, I'm not sure how I would know. I'd have to think about it. I'd have to maybe learn more about how they were made and how they respond to things and what they do. But I'm not sure. I, uh, it's funny. A lot of people say saying like right now reference Soma. It's like, well, Soma takes the position of um, <laughs> you already agree that the creatures in there are mostly human, but we're presented with the reality of knowing they are not human, that at least not mm -hmm. in the sense of the body, right? Like the, the opening quote being the, um, the reality is that which when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Meaning that you believe you're human and the game is like, you're not human though. And you're like, but I am though. <laughs> like yeah. you, okay uh, it's, it's interesting right because i've seen some products of like ai 
generated stuff where I'm just like, you know, it's amazing. It's like, oh, it's almost like this thing is thinking. But then you like skim over the source code and then it's just like, oh, okay. It, do it does basically boil down to a bunch of logic logic switches, like if statements and for loops and while loops yeah. that are all nested within each other. And it's just running through a process. But then it's like, well, can you, could you think of the human brain as the same way where it's all just electrical okay. impulses and we're all basically doing the same thing where it's like, if yeah. this condition is true and that condition is true, I'm going to do this thing and that thing, right? Yeah. Well, so now you're touching on that point. You're, 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 you're going to trigger the people in chat very much like humans are valuable for what they are. They're unique. Well, they're special. They're amazing. That is the question. Is a human valuable, right? Because, like, is it the wetware? People yeah, are nice to so. Alexa, too, right? People treat Alexa like it's got some sort of emotions and they say please and thank you to. Um, so just be being how we treat these things doesn't matter. And uh, if it's a, a computer, right, and it's not a human being, and you're saying that the, the spark of creation requires a human being's uh, quote soul right like and i know you didn't mean it in that way but um then how can you say that that any robot could ever replicate that even if it was a very very good replication of it right at what mm -hmm. point that that's the question right at what point does it become this is something only a human being can by the do, way and that is valuable uh, John just right. perfectly illustrated uh, what's probably happened to Asmongold because if someone clipped you as just saying is a human valuable, that alone so we could be like, so John just hates people, I guess you just, you know, just, you'd be like, no <laughs> all the shit that was just said before, because there's even people in chat being like what the fuck are humans valuable like, if you're not listening then <laughs> come on Need some... Jump into conclusions I hate humans, I'm like a super villain I, I feel like, like all the time here all. It's kind of, it's like, oh, fuck. How how far do we have to, like, actually start going in terms of, like, fundamental perceptions about, you know, what is our nature, uh, like, what is yeah. the nature of our consciousness? If you want to get yeah. to, like, the root of questions relating to AI. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it, it, you know, look, right, it's a, it's a, it's a deep rabbit hole, okay? It's a deep Right, you yeah. start talking about, like, solipsism and stuff like that. Do you actually think... Solipsism, uh, is that how you pronounce uh, it? Is that how you say it in your world? Th I guess that's how I mispronounce it for you. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, 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 I'm not going to... But anyway, continue. So, <laughs> um, your weird ass words. it's a question of whether or not, you know, how do you prove other people are conscious? How do you believe they're thinking and, and things like that? Am I real? Are you real? That kind of stuff. Yeah, you're getting right into the very depths of, of uh, you know, philosophy. How do we know stuff? Yeah. That's the fundamental question of reality. I think, uh, so therefore, anyway, I know. To, uh, back to Asmongold. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> like, these are that different. And I haven't read an argument that makes me believe that I'm wrong. I'm open to reading one, but I haven't found it yet. Original art versus inspirational art? I don't care about that because I don't believe original art generally exists. I think that almost all art is built off of other art. And that um, doesn't... T so it's yeah, like, so all, we just let's just get rid is, of the word? or well, oh, well, well, I mean, but the statement like all art is derivative. It's like, to some extent, there's always going to be inspiration mm -hmm. stemming well, and, from and, things that you've seen before. And we still all agree that you should not be able to copy one-to-one -one someone else's thing and use it for your own benefit. Like, you're like, no, Hello? I can't do that. Hi. Hi, I just you I ever just, uh, you that was cut out flim for a second. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, was, I was saying that um, we uh, you, we we all seem to agree that uh, you can't copy someone's thing one for one and present it as your own. So everyone draws oh, a line no, at least no, there. No, 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 Nobody no says like, well, come on, everything's iterative. It's like, we, we, <laughs> like I don't know about that. Yeah, do you think that if you trace a piece of art and add a hat to it? That it is new. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's ah, just to point is, someone said like, no one's arguing for that. It's like that's my point. No one's arguing for that, which yeah. means there is a line. And uh, I'd love it, a, if Pal World was just all the original Pokemon with just hats on. <laughs> <laughs> with hats. Yes, but I mean, in terms of the uh, like, you know, artists are inspired by artists who came before them and before them, and so on and so forth. There's a level of uh, there's a level of you are going to be pulling from things that you've seen before and your own experiences, which is, you know, that's what people would say is like the uniqueness, right, of 
any individual person is they're not only the things that they've seen before that they're interested in, but paired with their perspective and their experiences. And then it's like those combinations together, right, is what creates the new piece of work. Take away right. from it, it builds on it. It makes it more special. It makes it better. Maybe you should say can better. make it better, not does make it better. But I don't know. Maybe not better, but sometimes it adds texture to it. All art is derivative, yes. And I, I don't think that that's not a bad thing. Anyway, so that's what I was talking about in the clip. We'll keep going. Do you guys? No. Right. No. And that's really what matters. I don't think a lot of people do. And the truth is that I don't think that society at large sees a large difference. The reason why I don't think that people see a large difference is that I've never seen a large scale consumer shift to where consumers are purchasing something that is more inconvenient or more expensive because of the way that it's produced. Organic foods. Or, yeah, yeah, like literally is what, yeah, the first example I said earlier, like organic foods are literally that thing. Well, I'm sorry, I will you've never say, been to a supermarket. Um, it, Rags, he's got to address organic foods. He's obviously been to a supermarket. Just because he lives like a goblin doesn't mean that goblins don't go to supermarkets. This person has right? never... No, he's a caveman. He's... This is madness. Hey, we were all... Came from cavemen. They're cool guys. They worked real hard. We're derivative <laughs> of cavemen. But, uh... He, he's gonna start responding to, like, people in chat, and someone's gonna bring up organic foods. And it's interesting, because a lot of people are presenting counters in chat that Asmongold would not agree with. He comes up with a different counter. Now, some people do this. I'm not arguing that nobody does this, but the biggest companies in the world are oftentimes the most immoral ones. And I think that there's a reason for that. It's because people don't really care where their products come from. Now, to be clear, he's not saying that this is ethical. He's saying that people don't care. Right. No, he's just making observations. Yeah, Which is a people. generalized yeah. statement that can be seen as agreeable. If he was to concede, sure, there are people who still do. It's just that generally people don't care. And I think he, would, he, he does defend it this way, and so would we, that most people shouldn't have to care because of the amount of pressures they've got in other departments in their lives, you know? It's not like well, we're all I angels. Mean, people can't worry about every single yeah. bad thing in the world all the time, otherwise they couldn't do anything. Yeah, you would be a, you would be a, a, incapable of functioning if your empathy for your close friends and family extended to every human on the planet. You would just not be able to function. Well, and, um, you know, the, the, the Glib's highlight in slavery is like there was a civil war fought about that. Was there not? And it's like, well, wait, the, the proximity argument would come up again, uh, which I yeah. do think is important to consider. That if if you if you went to a store and when you pick up the thing that you want to buy, literally just a glass pane between you and the child mining the things needed for it, I think people would would probably change their mind a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah so, if you're seeing them being whipped and underfed. Yeah. Yeah, I th I th yeah. <laughs> like nobody really cares about Amazon work. Well, and so that's why I think it is it is unwise to refer to it as nobody cares. It's more complicated, but that is that's that's English for you, I think. Workers pissing in bottles. You care about it, but would you want to pay twice as much for Amazon Prime to fix it? There was a few drama episode about this that me and Frankie quite liked in the new season. Yeah, that was one of the uh, stronger episodes. Of that like, I think the ending is Amazon engulfs the universe, and they say, yeah, but it's so convenient. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the second way to summarize it. No, probably not. And the same thing's true with phone batteries. The same, thing's, the same thing is true with uh, electronic car batteries. The same thing is true with clothes. And everybody just foregoes morality to participate in these things. And I do not believe this is a, you criticize society, but yet you exist in society. How, how interesting, right? That meme? Oh, that's a I don't... stupid meme. I think that might be one it's of my so most hated dumb. memes in history. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I hate it. It's so stupid. Yeah, I, I love the counter memes for it. They're way better. With the king <laughs> covered in gold. It's like, yet you participate. Like... <laughs> king Homer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that Take it's a right. hike, boss. I'm in charge <laughs> now. All hail King Homer. <laughs> that. And also, I think that that's very valid. That's an extremely valid thing to say. 
if you want to hold other people to a standard, you should expect other people to hold you to that standard that you are trying to hold them to. Why does everybody else have to carry your flag? And so that's that's my point. I suppose to an extent, though, that is normal behavior, isn't it? That if you have a set of values, you would want other people to have them because you think they're the right ones. But just like a, you know, you don't want to go too far, but same, most people do tend to try and share what they think is the right thing to do. We wouldn't have political discussions without it. We wouldn't have, you wouldn't be here. Well, uh, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to meet him on his level of like, you know, people on Twitter being like, you should carry my flags. Like it can be annoying, but at the same time, I think that's, that's normal human behavior. Just being Very like, normal. yeah. And so I don't think that consumers really care about this in a general sense. Are there consumers that care about this? Of course. Is there a market for them? Of course. Is it infinitesimally smaller than the market for consumers that just want to consume the cheapest, best thing? Of course. I don't actually know. I'd have to check and see. Hmm. Infinitesimally smaller is, is pretty strong verbiage there. It is. It was made with AI. I'm completely okay with that because it was fun. The evidence it is doesn't that matter. Nobody really cares the lead about this. developer has been very positive about AI in the past and made an AI game We're gonna play called this, by AI the way. Art Imposter that lets yeah. an AI artist draw a picture. Yeah. And so that, that was like like one of the yeah, games. We're going to be playing and, this this week. Yes, just generally has been much more uh, positive about some of the benefits of AI. rather than Yeah, basically people accuse the, uh, the, the CEO of the company that made Pal World of using AI to make Pal World because he liked AI. So they basically just made up an accusation and are just running with it. And uh, I heard recently that the person who originally made the accusation has apologized. Hmm. Then what is the normal sentiment amongst artists and, and you know, I guess general uh, Twitter population, which is that, yeah. you know, AI is bad and it takes jobs from well, people. Well, AI and the sentiment from artists, this, artists, this okay. is the part that's going to make people mad. Opinions don't matter. It just doesn't matter because what matters is the opinion of the people that are buying the product. Yes. Like, it doesn't, like, your opinion on it, like, just because you do it doesn't, like, nobody cares. Like, it, 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 it's not, it's not relevant. It's like whenever one of these, like, you know, really well-respected and, and really respectable uh, directors talks about how bad Marvel is. Shut up, old man. <laughs> I still find that so funny. <laughs> Shut up, old man. <laughs> like, but, um, I mean, if, if you, you have to imagine, though, in the world where Marvel isn't shat on by Tarantino, Scorsese, fucking Coppola, all the people that might have, uh, who are still around, who might have like a significant amount of people who respect them for their work, it can't be preferable to have all of them saying your work is shit There's and no you're destroying the industry. No There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. Were, yeah. If they were saying these movies are actually pretty great, yo, that like that would <laughs> that would have no impact either, or that Marvel wouldn't like that. Well, and something I was thinking about is the, is it just as simple as like, so let's say 10 artists say, I hate this thing, we shouldn't have it. And then Asmogold's like, you don't matter compared to the millions of people buying it. And you go, okay, 100. And he's like, still no, 1,000. Still no, 10,000. Okay, yeah, maybe, the, okay. And you'd be like, so it, yeah, there is just a fundamental units line. It's probably just percentage based between the people consuming it and people not consuming it, I guess. Which, um, I don't know, it just, yeah, it sorry. feels, it feels a little bit, um, like, I guess we're circling back around to he really was just stating what is reality, in a sense. Because that's just, like, statistically, the more people who care and make things matter, the more it matters. And you'd be like, yeah, I guess, yeah. I have, I have a problem with his statement that nobody has ever um, chosen the more, you know, expensive thing uh, on a mass level, right? Like, oh, yeah, sure, some people do, but, but not everybody does. And he brings up clothing, right? Um, cause fast fashion is like the second or third most polluting, uh, uh, industry in the world. And if you just bought slightly more expensive, more ethical clothing, then, you know, a lot of that would go away. Um, but we have seen this actually. And I was thinking about it while he was talking, we've seen the, the disappearance, basically almost complete disappearance of the fur trade because we didn't like what they were doing there. Mm. We've seen almost the complete disappearance of, um, animal testing for makeup and cosmetics that's almost completely gone now because we didn't like the idea of you know rabbits being horribly mutilated uh, in order to find out whether lipstick is good. 
Um, and, and a third one that, you know, we still, this is almost universally reviled at this point is the ivory trade, right? We don't want elephants to be murdered, uh, even though we think that ivory is, you know, very, very attractive. And it's brought up the, the cost of ivory to, you know, stratospheric prices. Um, so these yeah, we are banned examples. imports back in like the what was it 80s in America? A long time it was ago. it's been a long time and yeah the ivory imports have been completely illegal so all the ivory that's in the country is all that there is. Well, so but yes. What about like charity just in general? That's obviously indicative of people's desire to help that doesn't help themselves necessarily, right? I suppose you could argue it makes them feel better maybe. Um but just just taking action to try and make the world or other people uh, better based on how you feel ethically, like that it should happen. So if that is instilled in people somewhat fundamentally, then surely it would still have some impact on their consumption as well. Because at least cons consumption is actually offering you something in return, so maybe you'd feel more inclined to do it ethically because at least you're gaining something no matter what as well. I just, mm -hmm. I wonder... Um, we don't want to. We don't want to get to the point of like losing faith in humanity, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, definitely don't want to go there. Um, and also like when it comes to, you know, the, a lot of this has is surrounded by a discussion of like AI and stuff within games. Uh, gamers are unfortunately uh, quite retarded, so not a great, you know, is it not a great example? I think for the most part, a lot of gamers are super normies when it comes to stuff like this. Games are often seen as very much like recreational disposable slash things you don't really worry about it doesn't sure. have that kind of place in people's minds as a lot of other things do games aren't a serious thing you know yeah there, there's still a, a lot of people forget that outside of mobile games the average gamer will buy two to three games a year right which if you are a quote gamer you would probably think that that's ridiculous but the the large majority of people are are people who have a switch or they have a PlayStation and they buy the newest you know soccer or or football game and that's it. And I think Shut if, up! If people have a problem with like uh, AI and algorithms in video games, you need to decide where the line is drawn because algorithms are used for a lot of things, including something as simple as in inventory management. You know sorting items in like your box or your bag or whatever by alphabet or mm. whatever that's all determined by well, that's algorithm. that scale thing so i was like, talking about again and i do actually think that is yeah. what's happening all of these conversations everyone's having is about everyone's establishing lines and then everyone is pushing or pulling everyone else's lines including their own mm -hmm. yeah i like watching the thor movie it was cool <laughs> the thunder was really bad though <laughs> You know what's funny? Oh. If they revealed Thor Love and Thunder was done exclusively with AI, we'd all be like, oh. Yeah, the um, that explains, <laughs> that explains, that explains it. Explains yeah. things. So people really didn't like that clip. And I want to say really quickly that I stand behind what I said 100%. And I'm right. <laughs> and the emotional outbursts of man children on Twitter Look at your room. over the next day or two will subside. Right, we Logic. talked about this. People no, just go for to, his room. You have to That's go for the room. If he calls you a man child, you have to say, well, Look at your room, dude. Well, then at that point, he's saying that everyone's a man child. We just yeah. all gotta, we gotta live if in the world. If everyone's man -child a man child, paradise. no one is. Logic will prevail, reason will wiggle its way in, and people will see the truth of what I said. And the best thing about it is that I can prove it. And that's the, that's, that's the good thing about the truth, is that I don't have to... <laughs> that's the good thing about the truth. It's like, yeah, I guess so. It's a, you'd hope you can prove it. Yeah, sure. The truth well, is the pretty truth neat. Set you free and all that. Yes. To uh, bully people off. Like, I can read arguments from people that disagree with me, and I can prove them wrong. These people right. can't prove me wrong. They can post a picture of my room and say my room is dirty and so I'm wrong. <laughs> really, sure, really you can do dirty, that, man. but I'm still right. Yeah, I almost want to say, <laughs> like, uh, him, his room being dirty has nothing to do with these arguments. Still, man, you don't want a room like that. Don't have a room yeah, like that. Jesus it's bad. Christ. Disgusting. Grow up. Fucking hell. It's really disgusting. Well, I don't know what what the problem. Why, like, because you think it's not just a matter of aesthetic. It's just like it's 
bad for you. Like, you know, clean your room, right? That's like a that's a meme. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jordan Peterson says you gotta, you know, you gotta clean your room. A clean room is a clean mind or something. That's probably a quote. I I don't I, I don't know. He might have said something. <laughs> Someone like that. might have I said that at some point. Yeah, but yeah. You can say I'm a loser. You can say I'm ugly. You can say I <laughs> fell <laughs> off. You can <laughs> say anything. No, you look fine. You look fine. What thing that you want? But that doesn't change the truth. And that's the best thing about it, is that it doesn't matter how mad you get. It still doesn't matter. It still doesn't change anything. Your opinion on it, like, just because you do it doesn't, like, nobody cares. That's right. And I want to extrapolate this. So almost all art has relatively no intrinsic value. Relatively no um, intrinsic value is a bizarre. What? Yeah, the, of I need words. a definition on every Very single sure, word in that yeah. sentence. Relatively <laughs> no intrinsic value. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, why, why intrinsic? Uh, it, 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 nothing has intrinsic value. Question mark. What is intrinsic value? Definition for like every single word. Exactly. I don't know what to do with that. There's too much that needs to be defined. But yeah. I presume he's about to explain what he means by this, right? Sweet. Like, if you're at a, um, <laughs> uh, if, if you are stranded on an island, would you rather have a cooler full of food, or would you rather have a, uh, uh, would you rather have the Mona Lisa? So that does not um, help the initial statement. That doesn't help at all, oh, because there's maybe. no intrinsic value to survival. So well, and, I don't even know why he like, would use well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to think, you know, good old Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? If mm. you're in a position where you live in a house, and you have food, and you have water, and you have all of your basic needs met, at some point you might get to the place where, yeah, on a general day-to-day -day basis, you are more invested in the art that you are uh, that you watch yeah. or play or read than you are in any given meal that you eat that day. Well, I have my mm -hmm. my tap, and I'm like, do you want a bottle of water or do you want, you know, fucking the next Mario game? And I'm like, well, Mario. <laughs> I got my tap over there. I don't do that. Like, and then on the desert island, they're like, you can have Mario, but you can have a bottle of water. Like, oh, bottle yeah, water, on, bottle on water, bottle water, bottle water. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> if you were on a desert on a deserted island, and it's like you don't have all of your basic needs met, like you know, food, water, uh, shelter, yeah. then yeah, of course you want the you want the water. Mm -hmm. But once those needs start getting met, and then it all starts to change <laughs> how much it matters to you in terms of how much it occupies your mind, how much you'd be willing to pay for it, you know. Yeah, and then fundamental nostalgic value or, or, or uh, personal value, you know, like my grandmother's watch. I care about it a hell of a lot more than Fringy does, and I might even value it more than a bottle of water on that desert, but he'd be like, fuck that watch, we need the bottle. And I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. maybe. I don't know. But yeah, uh, these are things that he's gonna he's gonna talk about a bit as well. It's just that okay. these are yeah. not fantastic opening statements. I think he's figuring it out as he goes along. And okay. I think that, that that's what makes art special, is the fact that it has value, but the value is not intrinsic. I don't. It, you can't. You can say the word again. He but must that doesn't help mean us figure out what practical you mean. value or value. Yeah, that's, that's what he means. Yeah, but that's not but, intrinsic. But, that's, but like, but yeah, then yeah. again, how much do you want to delve into how much art is like fundamental to our conceptions of existence, or you know? keeping a civilization Int sane? <laughs> yeah. Intrinsic is like inherent, right? It's part of the essence of something that you're describing. Yeah, the way I'm interpreting what he's saying is that it's the value it has, even if all humans were gone. Which at that point oh, is like, well, well I mean, then it has yeah. no value because humans are. It's like, wait. Uh... But in yeah, the same I mean, way that the food would have no value to humans in terms of sustaining us because we didn't exist either, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'd yeah, have, like to, you'd have to at all. say what you mean when you say intrinsic. And, and well, if, that's why... applied, if, if it was being applied in that way, then it's like, well, this is not very helpful because then everything has no intrinsic value. Well, I think he's and about so to compare it to a to hammer. Lines. And at that point, it's okay. like, so he is, he means like there's a practical v thing we can, a hammer can do things and make things happen, but that a painting is just to be appreciated like mentally or something. Like the. Um, okay. Well, uh, I yeah, guess let's, yeah. be, let's him say it first. Like a hammer has value. Oh, you, <laughs> you can use a hammer to accomplish a goal. A uh, you know a nail has value. You can use a nail to hold something in place. And so, in general, 
and and this isn't true all the so time. So is he saying okay? that those I'm things not... have intrinsic value? A hammer has intrinsic value? Is that what he's saying? Well, so this is the or problem. He... Like, well, what what he... if you don't need to hold anything? In I think place? we need to throw away intrinsic. Nail... Well, even if you, yeah, intrinsic is messing everything up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's... I I don't yeah, think well, it, that's helping. That word, I, don't know I mean, of course, my response would be, yeah, well, what good is a hammer if I'm floating in the middle of space, for instance? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what's well, yeah, the value of the hammer to me in that situation? Yeah, I'm floating can... in space, but thank God <laughs> I have this can... hammer. With it. <laughs> exactly, because it has intrinsic value. Well, you know what the funny thing is? If you're floating through space and you have no reason to believe you'll ever be found now, you're done. It's, I'd that's probably it. rather have your... a book. Well, you, you got the oxygen. Well, I was going to go further. It's like you'd rather probably have. If if God said I could send you a bottle of water, a hammer, or someone's painting, yeah. you're like, well, the bottle of water. You can't even drink it. Let's say is is an empty. No, I was, I was, I, you know what I mean. Like he said, hammer or nail or someone's painting. You might be like, I might just go with the paintings. That might be more interesting. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, because if we want to talk about practical value, if we want to talk about practical value of like it serves a goal, an easy one to point to was, and I played Mario because I was feeling sad and I wanted to be happy, so I played mm -hmm. Mario, and that achieved sure, the goal yeah. of making me happy. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, PMA like there's important. there's there's no downplaying like the importance of achieving psychological goals with uh the things that you you interact with and use just yeah, as much as the more apparent practical, practical goal of a hammer nailing in a nail to make you know a cupboard or something. Well, so uh, you're you're stranded on that island and you're thinking maybe you know I'm gonna kill myself. That's it. I'm not gonna be saved. But then you have Mario there. It's like you know what? I'll play a bit of Mario, <laughs> and then that that keeps you alive wild. just long enough yeah. that a ship comes by the next day, and it's like, it's like oh, you, there he is. Let's go get him. But you leave Thanks, the menu Mario. screen on long enough, and he just turns and looks at you and goes, "Never give up." And you're like, "Oh, Mario." Never give up. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for playing my game. You're on. You're on. You're last alive. <laughs> and uh. Yeah, this all just super chat saying he's conflating value with utility. They mean different things. So not only is that an issue, one can, with sort of extrapolation, say that utility can, you know, how much utility is there in having a painting versus a hammer? It's like, well, it depends. Yeah, if it's a really good yeah. painting, that could have like some massive utility compared to, I don't feel like building anything, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I got my hammer, but I don't have anything I want to do with it, so... I, but I'm making a general statement that's not always true. Okay, so just please, please, yep. please, please hold okay. hold your exceptions. Please. No. <laughs> <laughs> we will allow no. you to continue, but we will also highlight ex exceptions. Please, please. I know, I know, you have an exception that you want to put out there and try to pretend like you're smart. I know, <laughs> I know you have an exception. I do too. But I'm talking about in a general sense. Okay. Art does not have in a the functional value. Sense of that's that's not true. It absolutely has a functional value. Uh, if I'm trying to be as generous as possible, what is the category we would have for? Like you can't eat it. Uh, well, architecture has a functional value, right? If we want to go for a really basic example, because um, yeah, now help absolutely. help me out here, right? Architecture, it's it's like engineering, but also with an emphasis on aesthetics, right? Yes, it is aesthetics sure, yeah. that you make while you are also keeping in mind that it hmm. needs to that either serves some sort of a purpose and that it has to be practical because engineers and architects work together to make sure that the building actually you know serves some function either fulfilling aesthetic desire um or also making sure that it is you know fulfills the you know necessity of being what a house is you know i gotta live here it's gotta have the space that's a duh it's gotta be good shelter can't leak things of that nature and also how do we make it look good and feel good well you know like but propaganda you know not art What's with that? like art with <laughs> serious oh, yeah. function that has like a very to the point where it's designed to help win wars or start them. Yeah, or right. like um yeah. or like the GI Joe, you know, like the the public service announcements, you know, it's like that's <laughs> art with a purpose, <laughs> with a, with yeah. a purpose of of like, and and the thing is, is that th these are the examples that you would point to if you were going for the most plain and obvious nature of functionality. But I mean, the functionality of art that like teaches you some kind of lesson. That is meaningful to you and makes you happy. There's functionality there. Yeah, yeah. When Sonic tells you, "Don't let your uncle touch you in the no-no place," uh, that, that that's a very <laughs> valuable thing for kids to know, and it's important that Sonic tells me that. Well, what kind that's of art are they no talking good. about, too? Right, like the I, actual uh, medium of the art. Because w would you consider what you know EFAP is to be art, or would you say what is painted? Right, are well, we talking I'm, about just that as as art? Know. 
if we want to tie it back to, you know, economic functionality, well, right. the stuff you own has economic value. It, it has a price that you can yep. then sell it or exchange it to get money that you need for other things. So in many dimensions, of course, art like has very clear functionality. Yep. If it yeah. keeps you happy, that is like, yeah, your mood is That's, not if it like keeps this, you happy, this that random is thing that has exactly. no value. And yeah. uh, when I was in search and rescue, they said the first rule is you have all of these needs, all of these things you have to do in survival. And one of them is PMA, pro positive mental attitude. Got to have a positive mental attitude. And that's like a survival thing that they teach you how to stay alive. Got to stay well, yeah, positive. The idea that if you have a positive attitude, that that can just fundamentally improve your chances of, uh, yeah. of survival. If you're depressed and want to die, your survival chances don't look good. This That's a great true. point. Yeah, if everything's about function, like if, if people are going to perform functions, they need to be in a state of mind to not only do it, but do it well, ideally. Well, mm -hmm. you know, and and how, much do you boil, how much do you want to boil down the decisions that everybody makes all the time down to the most clinical, the, the, what people would view as the most clinical um, decision, like brushing your teeth, for instance, versus um, playing video games or watching a movie or going for a bike ride or hiking or going dancing like all of these things are ultimately in service of your mood it's to, like in, yeah, in it's one like way or another about a game only talking about this the the ones and zeros instead of the aesthetic of the design of the things in the game and the characters and what they say and the themes of the game that would be like the difference mm -hmm. a picasso mm -hmm. painting is not going to do anything mm -hmm. you're gonna make me rich well we can <laughs> I'm actually going to come back to a fucking Blackadder episode where they want him to paint a picture that's going to do some, achieve something in particular with the men, like for morale or for whatever else, convince it. And I was just like, there's so many functions that art can serve uh, that are even yep. beyond just the sense of it can make you feel good. It's like, I'm not even just talking about that. I'm talking about things that have like grand fucking repercussions based on an artwork. We, you know, there's, there's artworks that can get you killed if you make them. So. It's 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 weird to say that like the this is a weird thing to say is is all about. But the black adder goes forth like a war painting. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will have value to some people, and that value is subjective. And the fact that the value is subjective proves my point. Sometimes yeah, yes, value sometimes of even no. The practical, even the strictly practical things, a hammer is probably going to have more value to a carpenter than it is to somebody who doesn't intend to build anything ever in their life and would yeah, rather... If we're, talking to, it. If, if we're talking about practicality, then it is not subjective that broccoli is good. That it, Objectively, broccoli is good for you if we're, we're, if we're operating on, a, on the practicality scale, right? That's not, you can have value that isn't purely subjective. Like You can think it's good for you, and it also can be necessary for your survival you know food nutrients these things are not subjective mm -hmm. and i can give you another example of people that are making art that nobody cares about <laughs> now you can scroll but that doesn't mean it doesn't have value that means nobody cares about it yeah it means less people ha consider it valuable down on this tweet and most of the people that are being very angry are people that are making art that nobody cares about <laughs> How does he well, piss do people off? I don't it. know. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> yeah, right? Like or that, you can go mean. over to Twitch and you can go down to, uh, let's go down to, uh, I don't know, World of Warcraft and let's scroll all the way down. And you're going to find people that have one, two, zero viewers and they're streaming the same as everybody else is, but nobody cares about them and it doesn't really matter that they're streaming. Wow. It doesn't really matter to who. This is what I mean. Yeah. If yeah. Th this is what I mean about the controversial versus non-controversial statements. It's all about the packaging. And I feel like he's starting to do this kind of on purpose. Because if the non-controversial thing is, these guys don't have viewers, which means people aren't viewing them. Like, well, yeah, no one cares about that statement. But if you say... They're not doing anything of value. <laughs> You'd be like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause, I mean, again, the example, what if there's a guy who's just got his sketchbook and he's drawing images and is like, I'm not intending to show this to anybody. I'm just doing it for me because it makes me feel good. It's like, well, that's pretty fucking worthless, isn't it? It's like, what? All right. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's chill out, okay? Well, and th I feel like this explains why he's going to piss people off. It's like, why are you saying it like this? Um, 
I assume people in chat can relate to this, but have you ever come across a channel where they have basically like 10 views, maybe 100, and you watch them and you're like, this guy's going to be huge. And it's because you recognize yeah. like what they're making is going to be really fucking valued by a lot of people. Because, it, well, it, it is valued by you in that instance. It's valued by the guy who's creating it already in that ex instance. You believe that the artwork has gone beyond any sense of like, does it serve a particular purpose as opposed to you, you recognize the quality of it in and of itself. And so it... You know, you, you expect it to explode in and of itself sort of thing. This this is confusing to look. It's like all these streamers who... I feel kind of bad looking at streaming graveyards. I just feel like so many people trying to fucking make this work. You, you, uh, and who knows? Maybe one or few of them in there, uh, they're going to be well, huge I mean, one day. I guess it's interesting, right? Because, I mean, everybody starts from zero, you know? Yeah. Maybe one of right. these guys is going to make it big eventually. And if, and if they listen to the lesson of like, well, it has no value. And they're like, oh, fuck it then. All right, I give up. It's like, oh, wow, shit. I mean, now you've made it for sure that nobody's ever going to, you know, see what you could have made in the future. Mm. All I'm yeah, saying is the, at... if all he's trying to say is these people's streams don't generate, like, a market value because they don't have anyone watching them or whatever, it's like, so that, that's just a neutral, that's not even, like, why would you think even to say it is so, is so normal as a statement? But if you frame it as they don't have value or they don't have, uh, they don't matter, you know? Yeah, it's silly. I mean, you could be a really talented streamer, and I think it does take skill to be able to not only do an activity or play a game, but also hold an audience's attention at the same time. But and if someone is like really good at that, and they're just looking at their view metrics, and it's like, oh, nobody's watching, I guess I'll just give up then. And then, like, never you make anything people... after that. You've just robbed yourself of the potential to grow your audience at all. It's like, well, you're definitely not going to get anywhere if you don't stream at all and so if asmongold is saying if you have zero views you don't matter like somebody could take that and be like oh i guess i'll just give up then like mm -hmm. it's not a cool well, so reason why it's uh relying on these kind of like external metrics as a marker of your success can be really fickle compared to if you've got like internal metrics that are more based on i i guess what you would define as the quality of the thing that you're making that as long as you're improving, you're succeeding, not necessarily that you're gaining X number of subscribers per day or viewers per day, because that's so out of your control in a lot of ways. Yeah. Obviously, there's like some no degree of control and influence, right? It's not like the things that you do have no impact on, on your external results, but yeah. Yeah. No value to this stream. They're not going to make any money. <laughs> uh, now, maybe they will in, in the future, but whenever they do in the future, the reason for that will be because people see value in them. That's because the artist... You even made a point there, my guy. Well, this is what I mean, though. I... If he's just saying they'll be more popular when they're more popular, I'd just be like... I mean, yeah, tautologically, sure. yes. <laughs> yeah, which, which is why, yeah, at that I point... Think is... On the ...is empowered by the people that consume their content. And it doesn't matter if it's a picture, it doesn't matter if it's a video, a stream, or anything. Or a hammer. Or a hammer. Where people only, it only has value for as long as people see value in it. These right. things have value because other people say they do. Art is fundamentally subjective. That's, I think, that if you think it's art, it's art. That's where it comes from. The... I... I fundamentally so can art not be so i guess i don't think art can be not subjective at all well you just said if you think it's art it's art which is another really weird statement which is also not true that's just like well yeah because if you true. point at a tree and say that's odd it's like um is nature art yeah if you is point at thor 11 thunder and say that's odd, odd. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> like, yeah yeah it's like it's not even a, a mind so uh but yeah, uh, unless he's appealing to a sense of just making up your own like language or something but like, There's only a few things that might fit the def fit that. If you say it's a thing, it's the thing. Like anything, like a designation, right? Like the word. You know, you, you know what I mean. Like there, there are very few things that you can't designate a thing without it being a designation because it's like tautologically what the word means. You know, but in a meaningful sense, no. Just because you say something's a thing doesn't mean it's that thing. <laughs> But yeah, there are people, some people think that everything is also. The reason why that's true is the same essence of the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying. So whenever I say an artist's opinion doesn't matter on their art, it's because whenever an artist says this is worth $50 to me, 
and somebody else says, no, it's not, the artist can still try to charge $50 for it, but nobody has to buy it. straight to monetary value? I feel, I feel like he even had to alter his own point there. So in the scenario where the artist says, it's worth 50 and then everyone else goes, I ain't paying 50 fuck you. He, he was like there, and then he thought to himself, well, wait, I guess the artist wouldn't have to sell it, though, would they? They could still be like, it's, it's 50 You pay 50 or you don't get it. And he was like, okay, but nobody has to pay for it that way. And it's like, yeah, but it matters, doesn't it? That artist's opinion on what that thing is worth, what value it has, well, matters. Yeah, because if they didn't have an opinion on it, then that person could have bought it. But if they're well, saying, no, fuck you, it's worth this price. We just we just established that it was prevented from entering the market, or rather it's, it's opening to the market is now hampered by that artist's opinion of its value. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So really, this is not a good example. Of no, I, I genuinely think he even kind of saw that for a second there. was like, oh, fuck, right. Yeah, because the artist can and will. It'll change based on the artist's mattering opinion, which, again, um, it's brought up later by another account. But uh, Flappy Bird being an example of a game that was taken down because the creator's opinion was changed about the nature of the art and what it was doing like to the world. Like yeah. that's another. It's just that then that matter it's off the market. Like that's that's a huge impact. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's also just deal. yeah, the artist opinion that determines what the thing is that's being bought or sold. Like of course it matters. If the artist had a different opinion and a different, a different outlook creation. on everything, then it would just be a totally different thing. Because that value is decided by the customer. That's the way it works, is whenever you go to market with a product, you have to meet the customer's demand. And it doesn't matter about... So is it, what does Flappy Bird have to do with the nature of the world? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Everything. Flappy well, Bird is the answer. What you think the world should be. It doesn't matter about how you view ethics in art. It doesn't matter about how yeah, you think trade should be. It doesn't. Wait, but, wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, so I you, mean, of you course can't, it does. You can't <laughs> say that it's customers who determine the value of these things and then say it doesn't matter what the customer thinks. It's like, which one yeah, is like, it? Well, yeah, he, he seems to be going for like gonna... individual doesn't matter, but group does. Like, what do you think a group is? What is a, a bunch group of individuals? Comprised of? <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's usually Back comes from a group is usually to, to, you know comprised of individuals, but oftentimes it's spread from other people telling other people, telling other people, telling other. People, you know what I mean? Like he's almost decrying well, yeah. the idea of shouting out to the world that you have an issue with X because it's done this way, and then he's like, "There's no point. Doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter." It's like, but well, if it picks up tra uh, traction, exactly. Yeah, or or if you're a particularly good speaker and you can present your idea in a well, way that's very compelling to a lot of people, H, that can H bomber guys. Mind perspective on someone's art as an individual killed their channel. Idubs was known for this. He was a channel killer. If people didn't care about plagiarism and, you know, theft of that nature, then the channel would still be up because the guy wouldn't feel bad about it because no one would feel bad about it. So there's yeah. no issue whatsoever. So well, none of that I would mean, have happened. You know, what is voting if not trying to manifest in some way the way that you think the world ought to be and how it ought to be run? Yes. Does it matter about whether you're a capitalist? These things do matter, though. That's the problem. Even if you don't think they matter the most, which is fine. I could probably agree with that. They do matter. Or not. None of these things matter. The only thing fundamentally that matters is if what you are doing is perceived to have value in the eyes of the public. No. What do you mean the public? Mm. What the fuck are you talking about? What if I do it for me? And it makes me happy. And well, it that gives me well, it seems like he is very squarely on the idea of like economic value rather than, I guess, the more uh, yeah. Like, I, I, this, this is why kind too of, many things know. get conflated because it's like uh, what he what he wanted to say was that no matter what you have to say about your artwork, rags, its market value won't be determined by that. But it's like, but that's not even true. If rags went crazy and said a bunch of wacky things. But like the, I think was didn't this happen in Succession? They were trying to do a deal, and one of the guys started tweeting crazy shit, and they were like, "Stop! It's tanking our numbers." Remember that? Yeah, the uh, yeah, the Scars Guard guy. Yeah, like the, you know, take any like wholesome, happy artist who releases paintings every once in a while or anything, and then starts tweeting fucking the N word or something over and over again. People were like, "Oh yeah, my god!" <laughs> um, and so well, that I mean, individual you know, will then have a huge it's... effect on the market, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then if someone said that's not an opinion, that's just being crazy. It's like, okay, yeah, just they express an opinion on... You, you, you know where I'm going with this. Like, <laughs> they can express any kinds of opinions.
that'll get them, uh, destroy the market value. And well, not what if the you public. have an artist, a famous artist, who just decides one day, you know what, I hate my art and it's terrible and no one should ever have it. Yeah. And they just decide to destroy all their art. So that dramatically increases the value of all their pieces that are in, you know, private collections and are in museums. Yeah. But like, well, that, that artist's opinion literally insanely and drastically changed the value of their art and its price. Like, I can't believe we have to keep, someone said, like, that's not an opinion on the value of the art. It's like, you can't, con you can't conceive of a controversial opinion on your own artwork that you could release to damage its market value. You can't think of one. I, I mean, I know that I could. I know that I could. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I could destroy my entire channel in 10 yeah, seconds right easy. now if I wanted to. Excuse me. In the eyes of the person you're selling it to. And the truth no, of but that... that's an individual. That's a customer, not the general plurality of customers. There are plenty of things that the, the amorphous blob of consumers might, in a descriptive way, price a thing at. But I don't give a shit. You know, I was like, yeah, like you're a, art, art's actually a really good example for this. There are plenty of artists who say, yeah, if you want to get art from me, it'll cost ten thousand dollars, and I'll be just like, I don't give a shit. I'll give you, I'll give you a hundred for it. Is proven every single day. It's proven every single day. Whenever somebody buys a video, makes a video game, and nobody buys it, it's proven. Whenever Riot shuts down Riot Forge because nobody bought the games. Do you want to know why a lot of those people got fired? It's because of you, it's because of you, and it's because of me. And the reason why is because we didn't buy and support those games, because we didn't care about them. And because we didn't care about them, they didn't make any money, and they got fucking fired. No, it's partially, like, a lot <laughs> of it is not up to us. A lot of it has to do with, you know, well, what's the cost on it? You know, what do they have to operate at in order to be successful? It's like, yeah, people have to buy, sure, but how much that happens and how much support it takes is also in this... going to also be determined by, you know, the operating costs and what it took to make it. you got to be careful with thinking like this, because it can take you to everything that takes place in the world that you had the potential to do anything to stop is now your fault. You'd be like, right, well, like what, game. If you, what if you just didn't even know it existed? What if you didn't even know? What if you couldn't know? Well, you could have taken steps to find out. Yeah, yeah well, that's what I mean. Like, the, this is <laughs> going a little too far on this one. Yeah, and that's the way the world works. The now, I understand that there's a lot of people that are angry because I'm saying this. Uh, Don't saying shoot the messenger. And yeah, I think, I think he's just, he's not saying it very well, that's all. I'm not angry at him. I think he's, he's, he's chilling, he's fine, he's exploring this very complicated topic like lots of people do. Or yeah. do. That's fine. But the reality is that I'm still not wrong. And this reality will be proven... Every single second of every day but until so the end inverse. of time. It's inverse I don't think is that I'm wrong. Proven every second too. It's that word matters that he keeps using. It's, uh, it's it's destroying every argument he makes. Wrong in what I said, but maybe if I maybe if I said it in a different way, more people would have it would have resonated with more people. But in another way, I'm saying it, and now a lot of people are mad, and more people are addressing it. So I don't think that it's really like a I'm right and you know they're wrong or, or whatever. But yes, you I do. think about this. But you said yes, you're you right. <laughs> you, you you base this all off I'm right. <laughs> you because do. You absolutely us, think that. You want to ask him uh, what's the difference between something that matters and something that doesn't matter? What's the thing that makes the the mattering thing? Well, I'm sure you'd agree with us is. that we need a framing. We need a thing that it matters too. We remember we highlighted this in one of his statements where he said matters right. and we were like we need the thing that you're talking about matters to what do i fundamentally right, do i i frame I, you need an intention sorry go ahead well this is this is what we were talking about this is why everyone's getting mad at him on twitter is because a lot of people have now taken him to mean that artists don't matter full stop which is like like he's devaluing a human being if they become an artist which is obviously taken way too far um mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. like even the notion of that for a lot of people on twitter is so infuriating they like it was almost why they believe that he said it. Like, this piece of shit. I hate him. He said the thing that I fucking hate. Fundamentally, like, what I do is I communicate to people. And so I think about, you know, is my mode of communication actually becoming counterproductive? I don't think so, I mean, but I do think about this. Become a better this. communicator. Uh, I, I personally think that well, power... Well, yeah, he doesn't think it's counterproductive. Like well, one of the things he just said was that had he phrased it in a much more agreeable way, maybe it wouldn't have had as much reach and had as many people thinking about it which is an interesting point of view. Uh... Mm -hmm.
probably did rip off things from Nintendo directly. Uh, I do think so, probably and I'm going to keep playing the game. That doesn't affect my opinion of the game, but I do think that they, I, I think that they did it. Like, so, uh, oh, wow. genuine answer okay. for me, if I'm playing a game that I'm really enjoying, then I find out they just did, and I'm not saying this about Power World, I'm saying the theoretical. If I played a game where they'd ripped every single asset from other games, I genuinely would have to think for a bit. I'd be like, hmm. Maybe I shouldn't yeah, play the game. Be... Like, this, this, it does feel a bit awkward, because it's just like, if it's stolen work, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, th yeah, well, I would definitely feel pretty about it. Now, if it took, if it, yeah, it'd be like, it would be one thing if it took assets from all kinds of different games and combined them into a very interesting and strange way, or maybe it was trying to make some sort of like a meta point, potentially, almost like, like a Stanley Parable style of this and that and being a gamer and Yeah, stuff. I think it would like, function on a big old thing, scale, but... wouldn't it? Like... Yeah, yeah, I think so. I agree with you, and I also think there's a strong possibility that a game like that would get review bombed. You know, like if it was just like so obviously Pokemon like none of the designs were altered. I think a lot of people oh, would have that, uh, that, that day before. What was that game? Wasn't that the day before? Oh, the day before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's yeah, there's countless the examples, right? Like some of the worst, and then some of the chiller ones. There's there's examples of games that are really good that have like things that are clearly taken from something else. But how ethical the acquiring of those assets are is complicated sometimes. Sure. How how much you add to it, and, and so on. Um, I agree. Right. This is why we don't like Hassan. <laughs> because, right, we we well, many reasons video. why we don't like his song. Well, oh, okay, but we create a video and then there is it's nothing. Just, which added is your to favorite it. reason? <laughs> <laughs> well, but there there's this you know creation of a a piece of property that we think is good, and then you put it out there in the world, and somebody watches it quietly while they get up and go to the bathroom. Right, like there's nothing added to it. So that that's the same sort of thing that I think you're talking about. Uh, with regards to taking lots of influences and, and mixing them together. But I do tend to agree with you, Mahler, that if this game were a one-to-one -one stolen property thing, right, like you wouldn't necessarily uh, uh, want to keep playing that. I would definitely think about it, even if it was fun. Yeah, uh, right? like a, that's the ethics of it. I think there's a line for everybody probably on that one, too. Like, if, if the game were just a complete rip and they changed the name alone and people really enjoyed it, and then they were informed, like... you. You should be playing the original one. It's right over there, sort of thing. I wonder if they would, is it is the effort of turning that off and going turning on the other one enough to stop mm -hmm. them? I don't know, but like I said, well, I would my, definitely think about it. My line is definitely going to be a bit more robust and complicated, more so than did yeah. I have fun or not. Yes, especially right. like the in, in the in the case of Pal World, there is a layer of modification to the designs. It might be a slim one. But it is there, and I think that's enough for most people to go like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Like, there's yeah, one animal like, in Pal World that's like a fire fox, and it's just like Vulpix and Charmander, basically. And it's like, what if we just mixed design elements from these two and made a new thing? Right, and but people it is are the just mix. like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's just like I can see the elements from both, but you sort of unify them into one thing. I don't think Nintendo holds any legal ground over like a. F a fox creature that has fire powers, so, like, I yeah, think yeah. this is fine. You know? And, no, yeah, I saw don't. silly ones, like, the sheep one was really funny, where it was like, they've copied Pokemon, it's like, they've drawn from a sheep, like, that's silly. Little yeah, you're, if you're, yeah, especially ones that are based on animals, it's like, two different companies are taking strong inspiration from a real-life thing, so they're probably gonna look decently similar, because they're both taking inspiration from the real animal. Yeah. What a lot of them are arguing uh, which is really dangerous, by the way, is that Nintendo and specifically Pokemon owns the aesthetic, right? They own the art aesthetic, and well, that is a yeah, very dangerous uh, position. Because does The Simpsons own uh, characters that are yellow? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, like right? it does. And that is the yeah, argument right. that a lot of them end up to devolve to. It, well, I think the comparison for Simpsons would be more so you can tell when someone's drawn something, you're like, oh, that looks like Simpsons style. Like, That's Simpsons has Simpsons a style. style. There is a Simpsons right. Matt Groening style. Yeah. Just like South Park has a style, which is the, mm. uh, like, the characters are, like, made of, 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 uh, piece of paper cut into square circles and that they animate in a specific way. Yes. Um, so in Pal World specifically, the animals are definitely Pokemon aesthetic. They are in that style for sure. There's no question, and, would, and it is 
purposeful. We would probably be calling them Neopet style if that had become more popular than Pokemon. <laughs> right. Mm. Or, you know, uh, um, in any of these, really, you, you could say Digimon, you, you could say uh, um, even, what is it, Megami Tensei, which, you know, created the concept of capturing uh, and fighting animals together. I think humans created yeah, that. <laughs> Well, yeah, okay. Nintendo I mean, released game a one. statement that just said, "Yeah, as long as you know, as long as their designs are you know distinct and different from our own, you know, it's like, well, it's all right, fair enough." Yep. But also, like, I, I, it's too close, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but like, what's well, so, 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 it? So, saying music, saying it's just aesthetic is disingenuous. There are pals that are just straight up Pokemon. It's like disingenuous. I've not even played the game. I'm talking about the theory of all of it. I don't know. That person's also wrong. Like, just wrong. I've seen some that are like definitely close but they're still they're, different i can still similar. be like oh yeah. one is this one and one is that one and i err on the side of uh, letting people take strong inspiration other than saying no your your inspiration means that nintendo can sue you i'll he's probably good to err on the side of you know that yeah but we also just literally addressed that whole thing by saying the simpsons so well, there's, there's just wrong. scaling and degrees and you definitely don't want to be in a position where we crush down so hard that it actually like kills amazing new projects right yeah well i mean just a month ago we we're all celebrating uh a steamboat willy and then today oh well power uh, taking inspiration is disgusting <laughs> well, i think part of that is how much people hate disney right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm not the lawyer i don't need to be like you know 100 percent you know fucking uh, right about this or this isn't a legal argument i'm just saying like this is my vibe check there's an economic as argument, a as it person like. who makes youtube videos sure okay okay like this is a vibe check so anyway uh if you're sure you're in a capitalist perspective not wrong i think many including myself would argue that uh we have a good moral obligation to look after the ones even making said products even in the capitalist thing is wrong if you're strictly viewing this oh, from a capitalist viewpoint, you're not wrong. I think many, including myself, would argue that we have a moral obligation to look after. Also, I think he's going to line up with us mostly on this, that it isn't the system, it's going to be the actors within the system, and that we do still try to curb like the let the more extreme parts of any system to prevent it from you know overflowing in any particular direction. Mm -hmm. uh, if we never care about the artist, the art stops and nobody wins. And... Uh, I, I respond back to this. I say, if many such yourself care about the moral obligation, why is it that the biggest companies are often the most immoral? Wait, it, uh, and, and my point is what? that... And we why should are the be biggest moral. companies often the most immoral? We should be moral. Oh, yeah, but big companies are often not moral. I don't, I don't even see how those two things are related. Well, so the, he's saying that it can't be that many care if we end up with companies that are supported by the many that are immoral. I guess he's, he's commenting on the fact that like an Apple or an Amazon or whatever have you are fundamentally immoral with what's the, a lot of what they do, but the, the dollars come in from quote unquote, the many in this well, case. I don't know how that's, yeah, so but that's even like, then I don't know how that's a counter to the person saying we should, you know, act morally. That's a, the, well, he's the countering the many a... concept, uh, which I mean, the thing is many could mean a lot of people rather than the significant selection of people. Like, as in, like, the vast majority of people, or whatever. Um, this is the result from a self referential worldview that most people have rather than an outcome of capitalism. The I whole mean, concept of a corporation, though, is to be amoral, right? Like, that's why they exist, is to remove the morality. I mean, and make it yeah, a profit Yeah, only... the corporations don't have a moral component intrinsically. Right. Well, the, I the, think, the, wouldn't it be better... design that way. Even even if we actually knew, just truthfully from Wizard Man, that um, no matter what uh, morality everyone hears about, the the evil corporation will win. It's like okay, but that doesn't mean we should just not. We should just stop, right? That we should probably continue pushing for good morals anyway. Can't hit. Right. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I'm going not to die, the... but I'm going to try and push that time back as far as I can. You know? Yes, because it's not built into the structure of a corporation, right? A corporation is by its its design amoral because it is existing exclusively to create profit and deliver that profit to its stakeholders and that is exclusively what it does there is no morality around it the 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 job of us as a consumer uh um when we're purchasing these things and we don't like the the ethics of it 
is to not purchase from them or to force change in some way, right? Like those like are political options. systems and stuff. Whatever it is, right? Like whether through boycotts or whether through just shaming the corporation to the point where it becomes a uh, 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 lack of profitability, uh, or to start that corporation and force ethics and morality to be a part of the the corporate structure itself. But outside of that, the corporations are are designed to be amoral. I feel like if we can change things like the eradication of the institution of slavery, then we can do all sorts of things. And having a doomer mindset of, oh, oh woe is us, everything's terrible, nothing's going to change, everyone's immoral, and they're all bad, is like, I don't think that, that, that's not very helpful. No, and they're not, right? Like, provably, people are not bad. Um, I mean, they can be bad, but like... <laughs> as a general yeah, you'd like both. to think that generally humans are pretty neat i'm assuming well, i think. think that people are good because we're not all murdering each other right like we've created these sort of structures of government and structure of law and we generally abide by it because we want to right like if you yeah. if you didn't want to if all people looked at the rule of law and we were like fuck that shit well then it wouldn't exist People have a mutual interest in living in a society that's stable. They don't want to have to constantly look over their shoulder and worry about whether they're going to get killed or have all their shit stolen. Like, we need a social fabric. Right, and then we accept the sort of governmental thuggery that comes down and puts this threat of violence above us, right? Like, we accept that. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got, uh, in chat, I see a quote from Rag. Someone's got, just be positive and we'll magically overcome it. That's right. That's just what I said. That is just what you said. Very said. true. Nice. You did it. You nailed it. Good there vibes. Oftentimes people that think that because they get 6,000 likes or 12,000 likes or 40,000 likes on Twitter, then somehow this means that this is what most people think. It's not. Most people think what? How are you I characterizing think that it, well, what I mean, it that, is? That isolation's fair, yeah. But it's... Are you saying that just because you got a lot of engagement on Twitter doesn't mean that it reflects what most people think? Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Though here in this case, I doubt you will get... I, I think that the idea of you should be moral, you, know, you, you should try to be a good consumer, essentially, is something that most people would disagree with. This Sorry, say that again. Oh, yeah, he, was, he was talking about he was talking about the people shitting on him on Twitter. Uh, yeah, yes. It, it's it's great what, to wait, look at. What, I uh, uh, yeah. All right, Mo yeah. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Yes. At sentiment, but sentiment is never better than data. And the data sentiment says that it's not true. Of data. games like Pow World hitting two million concurrent players. 6,000 people liking a tweet doesn't really matter. And if we didn't have this I mean, data, then we'd be having a debate. He keeps using that changes, word. But we don't need to have if, a debate if, if because changes, the data like, proves the truth. And it will prove it over and over changed, and over again. It's not the case, but just like it did with people, sweatshops, people can have their minds just like it did with lithium batteries, by tweets. and just uh, like it's doing right now with AI. What? And in the future, it will be something that we can't even imagine that will be doing the same thing. And so it's obviously it's moral because we all under stressed. capitalism, money is yeah. greater than morals. One moment. Me, uh, this person believes. It's like, it it, I think the, for me, it just died. The frame like, uh, changed for me. So. Yes, okay. Maybe refresh. Well, I, I, like, I couldn't even exit it for a moment. They wouldn't let me. Um, oh, okay. Give me a sec. I'll boot her back up. What, what triggered me was him using that matters word again. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love things... that word. A tweet is, like many things that we change our mind on, it doesn't happen all at once. It's, uh, we get nudged in that direction over time. And oftentimes it's, you know, people on social media giving their opinions and reasoning, and that nudges us towards a different opinion. And then one day it's like, oh, yeah, well, uh, you know, now it's, but, but, you know, like, now I think differently. The thing is, it's all about scale. Cause six six thousand likes can absolutely change something. Uh, six thousand likes did, in fact, very recently, like a few days ago, end Chugga Conroy's com uh, career. Right? Like, th this does happen. Six thousand uh, likes can absolutely do that. Right. This is why yeah, when he says really it doesn't matter, absolutely. I'm just like, I need you to make more sense because you're not making sense. What do you to mean? Me. Yeah, you're gonna have to say something. You're gonna have to tell me what you mean when you say that word because I don't even know if you know what you mean. 
or you're just re referring to this etherous general concept that you can't quite grab on to. Also, give me a sec. I'm just, uh, I don't know what's going on. My, my, I think Chrome is, is having a bit of a memory leak or something. Uh, maybe. Someone had mentioned I mean... Watch Together uh, sometimes doesn't play nice with Chrome every once in a while. I haven't had I that actually... problem, but I've heard it from some people that, that, that they have to use like an incognito tab or Microsoft yeah. Edge. Or During whatever. this stream, I actually switched over to Edge because it was killing my computer. I mean, as, as yeah, the days go by, it gets into more and more controversies, the amount that Chrome is being, like, uh, seen as a shitty uh, browser. Mm-hmm. Demora. But oh well. Uh, I mean, it's fine for now, so we'll just go back to being normal. 12,000 likes or 40,000 likes on Twitter, then somehow this means that this is what most people think. It's not. I think that it, it, it's great to look at sentiment, but sentiment is never better than data. And the B bizarre way to phrase that, um, you know, sometimes I joke because I've been playing D D and D recently, and sometimes you make the joke of it's it's only it's only one of your hit points that actually matters. It's the the last one, the last the one, rest, yeah, yeah it, which is like, yeah, technically that's true, you know, generally, but. Obviously, there's going to be a huge difference between characters and video games and whatnot that have one hit point versus, you know, 50 versus, you know, a thousand, right? It's the same and argument as the last vote does, is the only vote that matters, right? Yeah, it's like you only have to get one right. over the other guy, you know, but, but, but obviously, you know, the things that people say and the discourse that happens, it affects uh, what people do in a more tangible sense. It affects what they buy. It affects how they vote. It affects all this stuff, which is obvious, and everyone should know that. And simplifying it to saying that none of this, you know, matters is like I don't know, insanely simplistic. And I don't even know what 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 was the word? Is is it myopic? Is that was it? M Y O P. Is yep. that the word? Lacking imagination, foresight, or intellectual insight. Yeah, myopic. So, I, I don't know. Like, if, if, like, I, my political position, I used to be like a hardcore Catholic, and I'm an atheist now. And that happened over a course of many debates and many arguments and many things. Like, if something that fundamental, I guess, to my life can change, then so can people's spending habits. And they often do. There are products I won't buy, there are companies I won't buy from. And I think everyone's pretty much like that for the most part. Sure, I think uh, I, it's, it's not a big deal, especially because we have so many options that I'll be like, yeah, I won't buy from this company, but I'll buy from this you know, adjacent company to get the, a, a near identical or similar product. But that I think is you know, either more ethical or less unethical. You know, I think this is something that probably most people in chat do. Um, so it's, it's strange... Coming from him, you think he'd be really clued well, into this? What I'm starting to notice is change minds? he says doesn't matter. We respond with, well, there are many such cases of it mattering. And then many people in chat are being like, yeah, but still generally doesn't matter. It's like, if he had said it generally doesn't matter, that'd be different. And I don't even, yeah, that would be better for him. But I don't even know if, like, do, do the way pe does the way people think, like, I would still say the way people think generally does matter because that's what determines the things that they tangibly do. Even I mean, then, I mean, the beliefs right? that people have determines their actions and their behaviors. You in can't. Con you, you go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. I'm just going to say, in the in the context of what we're talking about, the idea that it is popular to be, you know, whatever, does not make it ethical. It's it's not part of the equation at all. Yeah, which is the thing that we're all like, yeah, we know, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, I, I yes. It's so funny, everyone, everyone's saying that is, level than that? that is what he means and you're overlooking it. It's like, you're so generous. Wait, like you, gotta, you gotta let him have his actual opinion, you can't change it. Like yeah. it mm -hmm. He his said words, many he... times, this is the thing that we keep getting hung up on because he keeps saying it wrong, but why wouldn't we just take him for what he's saying? Which is, he thinks that it doesn't matter. Generally, in the grand scheme of the discussion, which again, not true on so many different aspects of how different products enter and exit the market. That's just yeah. if obvious. he means something else, then he and at the same time, something else. It's not a great <laughs> position to take because it's discouraging people from sharing like their own disdain toward a product or why they would stand away from it ethically because well it doesn't matter when it's like but it does. 
We know what he means, exactly. We Because he pulled up Twitch, and he went and he showed, these streamers don't matter. He made it very clear what he thinks. Yeah, and I disagree with him. <laughs> like it's, I, I also disagree. One person's opinion could destroy a product. It's uh, It could happen at any moment. Absolutely. One single person is often all it takes. And there could be a person with no followers. Ain't that nuts? And the data says that it's not true. Of games like Power World hitting 2 million concurrent players. What's his players. problem with Power World, sorry? Oh, he's or just saying the... that it doesn't matter what people say about Power World because everyone loves it anyway. Yeah, it's well, popular, people... so it's good. Well, which is funny because what if in a week's time it went to zero fucking players? <laughs> it's like it's traceable oh, but, that it was to do with have controversies. We only a million examples of that happening. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like, so many products have died as a result of controversies. I don't know why we're saying that this is just, it's like it doesn't work. It's like, well, no, it can work. We know it can work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think he time. has. A, I don't think he has a problem with Power World, except no. that maybe he might think that some of the designs the creators might get in trouble for by Nintendo. But I don't even think he thinks of that as a problem. Um, yeah. Six thousand people liking a tweet doesn't really matter. And if we didn't have this data, then we'd be having a debate. Am I not? But we don't need to have a debate because the data proves the truth. And it will prove it over and over and over. This kind of reminds me of people that say no, that, the, like, you can't say TLJ doesn't... was bad because it was so hyper-successful or whatever, and it's just like, well, it could have been more successful. What if Pal World could have been double the numbers it's at even now without the people saying whatever they've said about it? How do you know? Mm -hmm. Like they said, stats as though it's all-encompassing. I mean, like, you don't have well, the stats the on everything. You know, is that like data is describing what's real. It's not making things real. Well, and even when we're talking about data, right? Like the the extrapolation of what the data means can be biased throughout yep. the whole process. That's part of the thing, right? We can take the same data set and determine many different things out of it. Yeah, like for example, eight million copies sold is better than six K upvotes. It's like, why would you? You've extrapolated the data in the most retarded like way ever. What does that even mean? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. over again, just like it did with sweatshops, just like it did with lithium batteries, and just like it's doing right now with AI. And in the future, it will be something that we can't even imagine that will be doing the same thing. And so, why is the biggest but companies often the most moral? Because go back a hundred years, think of the insane changes. It, there are problems now, therefore, it doesn't matter what is what what is there there's probably always going to be some sort of a, a an ethical issue we haven't solved we 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 haven't created the utopia yet or what are we what are we getting at here oh i just yeah. had a really good example upton sinclair and the jungle right if not for that uh, uh people of reading course. it going, oh this is I hate... sinclair in the jungle yes exactly yes. yeah that's right Right? People not yeah, reading that yeah. and going, I don't like the way that they are making my the, meat. For the audience who doesn't know what that is, why don't you tell them what <laughs> Upton Sinclair in the Jungle is? So Upton Sinclair was a journalist who wrote a book called The Jungle, which is about the meatpacking industry. And in that book, he writes about all of the various kind of gross ways that they, they treat uh, um, meat. And this was back in like 1930s or something. Um, and, and it was things like, you know, workers are getting their hands chopped off and that is ending up in your hamburgers and uh, the, the animals are being treated really badly and they're covered in feces and all that kind of stuff. And that single book managed to completely change the way that everybody looked at food safety. Right? Because, hey, if there's literal shit ending up in my food, I don't like that. If there's people ending up in my food, I don't like that. <laughs> and so the entire industry... Would you rather eat people or poop? People. people. And, and, well, I mean... Wait, no, wait. <laughs> Because if I'm eating people, that encourages a market of killing people to feed me. I, wait, hang on. <laughs> I don't want to eat poop either, though. What, yeah. what if no one ever knew? What if it was all secret? And no one ever knew that you ate them? Which one would you eat if you had to? Would you rather eat people or poop? But it's prions that scare me, right? Like, I don't want to end up with poop that. Poop scares me. If, that if disease it's about where your brain melts. Well, I thought, right? Doesn't there's eating probably, poop do damage to you as well? Poop, yeah. right? yeah, I don't yeah, think poop either poop of them are good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that. That's the the question is, which one would you rather eat? Oh fuck, man! Because I'm eating, I'm eating the people. Yeah. If I'm I had to choose people. between you know, eating a a person or you know eating people, eating people. also, I, you can recognize how many people are just not listening to the point you're making by how many have told you the book lied. It's like, so 
whether the book matter. tells truth or tells lies, the point was of how much effect it had. Yes, correct. It doesn't matter what's in the book. It doesn't matter at all. The, the point is, it's a single book that completely changed the entire industry uh, for a hundred years, right? It created uh, a lot of, I, I, I don't want to say it's the Food and Drug Administration, but... Um, <laughs> Someone just concluded lies equal good. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yes. The meat, the we meat. Must, do we have a lot of tourists in chat today? Possibly, Man. yes, because of asthma. We might. Jeez, you're gonna, you guys are gonna have to engage your brain. You're gonna kick it into at least second gear for this, the, for this discussion. <laughs> I've never right. had chat turn against me before. That's never. Well, happened. we knew it would happen. We're talking about something that's very, very hot button. All right, and that's okay. Well, we've done it before. They're all fucking morons. Dude. <gasps> okay, chat. true. Wait, and remember when Moriarty says all, he means not all of you. Not all of you, of course. No, there's yes. lots of exceptions are built into the word. When he says all. you're all idiots, he doesn't mean all of you. <laughs> yeah, when all he right. says all of you are fucking clear, stupid, he, he only meant the ones that he thinks are stupid. Yeah. Way. Yes. What exactly. else is chat for if not to jump to conclusions about the discussion? Yay. Capitalism, money is greater than morals. This person believes that bad systems and abuse was invented by capitalism. This is not true. No. So let me. No, Rags, you mean yes. Th that's not what that's not what they said, is it? What what's the quote? They say capitalism They're not I don't think they're saying that capitalism invented immorality and stuff. So when he says artists don't don't matter and they say he's correct strictly from a capitalist viewpoint, implying that the problem is that a capitalist viewpoint doesn't value the individual or the artist, it's just money causing these problems. And he's going to argue that that's not true. It's the individuals in the system that, that create the problems by how they make use of the system, which I quite like as a, as a point of view. I've always agreed with it. Um, yeah, and... I, don't, I don't get how the person was saying that capitalism invented those things. I just Maybe said how. Because they're saying that it's, it's, it's a common... Like, the problem we're dealing with here is all a commentary on where uh, capitalism sends us with a mind that... Which loads of people think... Like the capitalism leads you down the road of not valuing individuals or workers or whatever have you. It's all the dollar. The almighty dollar. Or as Homer says, the all IT allah. Go ahead and give you an example. So before capitalism, we had monarchies and we had things like that. Wait, are we what just going to have to talk about a whole bunch of the political? He's, like, he's I mean, we could just play this. He's, 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 he's going to argue before. that he thinks capitalism is currently the best economic system. It's not exactly controversial. Oh, okay. Plenty of people think this. Happen if I guess this is funny that a picture it's of, of that, the uh, king who great. made the king look fat. Well, then they'd just be dead. And that's the way <laughs> that it works. There's never been a better system for people to express themselves not a, than not a great, Western capitalist culture. Argument. This is the great. What do you mean? What do you just take a shot? I mean, I, I, what he described wasn't an economic system. He's you made saying... fun of the king, you got killed. That's that. That's not like I agree. Capitalism's the the best we got. It's great. But He's I talking think about artistic expression wasn't... under different economic systems, and if monarchy. Which isn't even an economic system, right? That's more of a ruling. Like the, but it, he's just trying to say that through the ages that we are now in the best position for artists to express themselves. I agree, yes. Greatest mode of expression that we've ever had in the history of humanity. Does yeah. that mean that we can't do better? No, it doesn't. But I, I am not going to look at any other system that's been tried in the past and say that let's go back to that. Absolutely not. It's actually true. This is just a, a, a restatement of what was it? I want to say it was Winston Churchill who said um, democracy is the, the worst uh, that we've ever had except for every other, right? Um, <laughs> it's like the that, same yeah. kind of idea. And, right, there are plenty of problems with a hyper capitalistic model, plenty of issues. I think we all experience them every single day. Um, there's no i don't understand why this comes into the equation at all though right well because like, i think he's trying to counter the notion that capitalism has led to artists being trodden downtrodden somewhat but the thing is one could reply to what he's just said with i agree it is the best it's still got so many problems we need to solve or something like that you know Unfortunately, the nuance, which we've talked about on this uh, 50 fucking times, people just do not understand nuance. It's not, uh, especially... They would say that about you. Yeah. Dun, dun, uh, dun. It, 
especially in the case like the medium of Twitter, right? Like nuance yeah. just doesn't exist there. Well, I mean, when you're limited to 240 characters, hey, not it anymore. Kind of, like for a lot of people, anyway. <laughs> For those who oh, pay, yeah, right. If you pay for uh, X premium, right, then you can type out more. What is the? Is there a limit would, for the people actually, who pay? You just go on forever. I presume no that there idea. has to be a limit. You, yeah. I presume you can't post like an entire novel on Twitter. Do you remember? I've seen some long posts though. Did, wasn't there a time where it was like they doubled the length and everyone went crazy? It was like, oh my god, Twitter. Yeah, because yeah, it was like one forty. One hundred twenty character. Uh, was it? It was one hundred and forty. Was it or one hundred and twenty? I what think it was one forty. I. I thought it got doubled to 280. That's what Wait, I thought. Oh, I thought yeah, it was 120 yeah, yeah, yeah. and it got doubled. 140, yeah, 140 to 280. Sorry, I thought it got. I thought it was 240. <laughs> For a second, they were like, like, "Wait a minute, half of 280 is a 140." Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Um, but the but yeah, the, I mean, when you can only when it was like 140 and then to 280, that's still like fuck all. That's yeah. <laughs> that's barely anything to uh to uh to like basically delve into whatever thing you're trying to say with it's tw like twitter encourages snark that's yes. what you get rewarded yeah. for on twitter if, if the response being as snarky as possible rather than as informed as possible yes yeah you i mean history. dunking on people right like characters. the whole concept of right which we see here of the uh the quote retweet which I abuse plenty, don't, don't worry. Uh, but uh, it, it sort of encourages the idea of just dunking on a, yeah. a small snippet that you can barely see, without context, mind you. Totally. It should just be called and... Dunk instead of X. <laughs> Dunk. Well, does anybody, does anybody Dunk actually um... call X? Do people do that? Because I still keep calling it Twitter. It's Twitter forever. I, I've yeah, seen, I see, never I see people saying X, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" I see it crop up as uh, that on like articles and stuff. I think they, professionally yeah. speaking, need to refer to it as X. But any oh, casual, but it's always followed by X, formerly known as Twitter. Formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's always known as Twitter. <laughs> because Elon's retardation was like, "We're going well, to ruin me wonder our incredible if... branding that we got." It's in the is dictionary, it just a, and he got rid of it. Is it just a matter of time, do you think, before eventually everybody uh, will... Well, yeah, because it will probably reach a point where people don't remember that it was called Twitter. Yeah. I don't know. Do, does anybody call yes, Facebook eventually. Meta? Well, Facebook is still Facebook. The company is Meta. Mm. I guess that's that's true. That so is it's not quite the same. Um, okay, what about Google and Alphabet, Meta. though? Nobody uh, calls... well, people call the well no people when they refer to the company when they talk about it in like stocks and and mm. they refer to it as alphabet inc people call google so. google i get what you mean that people colloquially call but google isn't google google is like one of the companies a that's product. organized under alphabet yeah. right like alphabet is a conglomerate kind of like how um it's you like know kanye it, west like he changed it, his name to ye but people still like call them kind of both and it was but people say kanye west too it might be a closer sort of one yeah, or Puff Daddy. Well, um, and how many people call it Warner Brothers Discovery? If it was like people generally just call it Warner Brothers. Yeah. The Discovery part. But then again, when people report on it again in like financial, you know, newspapers and stuff, they'll call it Warner Brothers Discovery. No, know, both Twitter of my X examples is, were wrong. Twitter X is just, that's just like a very unique one of you've just changed the name dramatically. Yeah. Wait, someone in chat just said, uh, I wasn't sure about this, but then my dad told me Snickers used to be called Marathons. Oh, and, and someone Marathon is a different it. thing. Marathon's actually the Mars version of it. Um, someone's. Hmm. Like, oh, you know why it's, it's called Snickers? Uh, yeah, why would it be called Snickers, actually? Because that was the name of the Mars family's favorite horse. Oh, that's cool. Oh. I thought it was called the Mars Bar because of Mars. Like, Mars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Marathon was a, a the, UK uh, thing. Or the god. The one that I saw as well that was an interesting one is the Sears Tower, because isn't it called the Willis Tower now? Or am I, or have I mixed them up? Wait, which, the one in Chicago, right? What's it called now? I don't know. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Willis Tower, right? But it used to be called the Sears Tower. Yeah, that's right. Um, mm. But do people still, but, but do people still call it the Sears Tower, or do they, has everybody changed to calling it Willis Tower? I only know it as the Sears Tower, and I'm, you know, not old, so. Yeah. Yeah, because people are saying people still call it Sears Tower. Um, I mean, which is an Heinz one. Field, right? Heinz Field is now Acresure Field. Uh, I'm sure that's a similar thing that we're, we're people who have grown up their whole lives calling it the Heinz Stadium or Heinz Field or whatever. Um, or Wrigley Field, if that were to change his name, I imagine the same sort of thing would happen. Oh, yeah, yeah Wrigley right, Field. But, uh... I think that's the thing. Wrigley Field is a name that sticks. 
Well, because that happens with stadiums as well. I think. Uh, oh, oh, fuck. I can't remember I what it was called. Because. Thanks. Uh, yeah, t stadiums often change. Then, well, it depends. Some stadiums keep their names forever, and some of them change. Mm -hmm. But then you just keep remembering the old, the old one. Existed in a newspaper during French monarchy, even during Louis the the sixth, the fourteenth. I'm sure that there are exceptions, but do you really want to make the argument that inside of a monarchy, people have more autonomy to be able to control their own wealth? Do you depends who you talk to, I guess. <laughs> they're I, also, I mean, they're also monarchists, it, it could they? technically be if possible, I guess. Depends on the monarch, but probably not. No. Mm -hmm. well, also, where you are that. in that. Right? Like, if you're the monarch, yeah, you absolutely Oh, yeah, then the you got a lot of freedom. If you're the monarch, yeah, you get a lot of freedom, yeah. yeah. Do you really think that the king and the people that were running France at the time were moral? But Do I you presume think that, that this person Whoa. would probably be not advocating for a also, return this, to monarchy this is, or serfdom. This is truly <laughs> going to places that we're not going to be again. To we got plenty to talk about this stream. We're not talking about whether or not yeah, we're already... the kings and queens were moral, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they were good people. If you're if you're a monarchist you... in the chat, oh boy, g good for you. Good no, for you. Louis the Sun God was right. Okay, he was right and righteous. I like the sun. You think that they treated artists and people that were involved with them What's in the a guy good who way? Praises the sun. What's the guy in Dark Souls? Wait, sorry. Louis what about 14th? Dark Souls? The the sun. The praise the sun. Who's that? That was oh. Louis the Fourteenth <laughs> in Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> no, but who was he though? You mean like his law or? I don't know his name. His name? Yeah, I, I can't remember yeah. his name. Yeah. Solaire. Yeah. Says Solaire. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Solaire. Right. Yeah. Wow. Very original. Well, wow, hey, nice. what are you implying? I'm implying that it's really original and I like they it. They stole it from Pokemon. Well, no, you stole it, <laughs> stole it from Pokemon. <laughs> no. Is Solaire a Pokemon? Yes. Uh, what does he look like? Did, like is he a goober? Is he a, is he a yellow bull? Is he a lad or a goober? Solaire Pokemon. I hope I spelled it right. <laughs> Images. No, Solaire these Pokemon. people were brutal animals, the same as I get everybody Pokemon else. Cards was. of Solaire. Yeah, they. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it's a Pokemon. <laughs> with you, Rex. I was. I don't know. Solaire sounds like a name it does. for a Pokemon. <laughs> so I checked, <laughs> and it seems that I don't think there is one. I mean, if there was, I would have just been like, yeah, that one. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. There's like over a thousand now. There's a soul yeah. rock. There's Guys, a soul do, you remember rock. The, do you remember the gold one that was the 1,000th? What the hell? Oh, fuck. <laughs> you guys this. Do you remember 1,000th yeah. Pokemon? Let me get you guys a picture of this. This is horse shit. <laughs> All right. Let me get... I'm going to show you... More horse shit meme, than the keys. Way. Really? <laughs> okay, so this, I, I'm going to show you a picture. This isn't a meme. This is actually the 1,000th Pokemon. <laughs> Very good. Wow. <laughs> That's incredibly dumb. His name it's... is Goldango. Goldango? <laughs> Goldango. Yeah. That sounds like an Australian <laughs> star. His name is Goldango. You know what I get as an impression Goldango. of this is fucking uh, Poochie. Like, mm. oh, I had you remember those? Do you remember Poochies? No, I remember Poochie from Poochie. Itchy Scratchy and Poochie. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking too. Yeah, Poochie was like a like a late nineties toy. I think it was like he a, was a late nineties cartoon character that was created by Itchy and Scratchy Studios, uh, voiced by Homer Simpson, who went mm. back to his home planet and died on the way there. <laughs> yeah, it feels like they would say like the, this. This character died on the way back to its home planet. That it's no longer canon. <laughs> like, yep. What? I must go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> no, just the. It was just it the had... cell moving up. Yep. They didn't even up animate it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even lip sync it. I have to go, and it's now it's just static. <laughs> Do you remember the gag? It was um. Do you remember it was the uh it was the Itchy and Scratchy, the one where, where Itchy uh finally dies, where Scratchy gets him, and how Bart and Lisa were just there eagerly anticipating it, and it was really hyped up where like there was a bunch of dynamite strapped around his chest, he even stuck the dynamite in his eyelids, and then pointed a giant rocket at him. And they were <laughs> eagerly awaiting this payoff. They'd been waiting their entire lives to see Scratchy get itchy, and then the nerd unplugged the TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the and then Crossy like, 
Oh, they're never going to let us show that again. Yeah. Not in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> the revolution, if, if that wasn't the case, you're mistaken if you think capitalism didn't exist within a monarchy. Well, at a certain point, well, you, can, you well, get to the, like, I, what I, do you I, mean? We can just, <laughs> we, can just <laughs> we don't have to deal this. with all this. We don't need to talk like about capitalism. economic and political. <laughs> do, do you mean the ownership of private property? Do you mean a free market? What do you mean by capitalism? I think you should define your idea more clearly, and then we you can talk about it. I think you should end this clearly, you fucker. Oh my god. Oh my god. You too! Oh, you god. also need to identify- Oh my- <laughs> Say it to himself, right? Like- I Somebody says money himself. over morals. Uh, this is the true, uh, this is true everywhere. Like- do No. That's literally, literally not true. Not everywhere. true everywhere. <laughs> Some people literally would rather do the right thing than necessarily just make money. But like the concept about? of charity. I'm not even talking about like organizations or anything. Just people doing charitable things. Isn't that an example of moral over money? I mean, yes. volunteering um, when you choose yeah. to do an activity for free. Yeah, when I you think could as long work. as you're not you're not like you know taking the sort of ultra. Um, I'm doing it for for tax purposes, kind of thing. But sure. not ev not everybody like, does things for money just because they live in a capitalist system. Yeah, which means you can potentially if you want. There's not as many. Well, see, it's, or, like it's but... a couple people have said like virtue signaling. Like, you're like God. Everyone needs to get some faith in humanity. Back up. Come Sometimes on. people do nice things are... and they don't want people to know that they do those nice things. <laughs> there's yeah, good things are. that happen Sometimes in the world. I swear. Not. I promise. There's people doing good things. For, for good reasons. If you go to countries right now that aren't capitalistic, like North Korea, do you think North Korea is prioritizing morals? It's such an insane thing to say. Yes. I can't imagine yes, that people. Yes, it is an insane this. thing to say. Dude, how are you going to pick North Korea? They are. They literally are prioritizing morals. What do you mean? Do you Kim Jong Un wouldn't. He wouldn't let you do anything that's immoral. Oh. <laughs> Because it's the worst guess. example. And it, it is the example- Well, someone just said, yeah, in a twisted way, you could actually say yes to that question. Well, that is the mo like, for example, like, China is capitalistic in a lot of ways China. now, right? So, like, can I really use China? I don't think I can. Uh, and also, China exists within a global market, which is all- Never would have thought you'd end up here from, <laughs> from Pal Will <laughs> using oh, AI. Talking also. about, yeah. <laughs> you talking about China. What an adventure. Also capitalistic. So that's why I chose not to use China or a Middle Eastern country. I use North Korea for a specific reason. I'm not really in the business anymore of trying to change I reality. North Korea specifically. I'm, I don't want to change the the world. Uh, well, I do in a way, but I, I think that in order to change the world, you have to acknowledge what it is. Sure. And I think that so many people have intellectualized reality, they're not even a part of it anymore. Intellectualized done... reality. I'm inclined to agree with them on that, actually. Yeah, I, sure, think I guess yeah, I get what have, he means. Yeah. I think I get what he means. People well, like intellectualized means building a false framework of what you understand yeah, like, the world to be. Like, I think it's yeah. like the idea that there are so many people who are really in their own head that they're not even like fully participating in well, yeah, the in, world. In a bubble of people agreeing with them on so many different things and actions and claims and stuff that when they step out into any other place, they're like baffled and they lose their minds. Like, what the fuck is happening here? And it's like you kind of built up all of your walls. And, uh, yeah, you've okay. you've written yourself a version of Earth that just doesn't even exist uh, with people right. with values that don't agree with you, and and unfortunately, it'll um it'll like cauterize them away from any kind of exposure to things they need to they need to see and understand. Well, okay. kind of like the point that he's making of grappling with the world as it is uh, yeah. in order yeah. to move forward and solve problems, rather than being like, well, it shouldn't be this way. It's like, well, it is. So now what? Now how do you move forward? Yeah. Okay. And it's so much they've they've there's so many levels of abstraction away from just the simple truths of reality that they don't even live in the same world that you do and that that's a, yeah this is a huge problem online everyone's living in different worlds uh, much. well where people live in these parallel realities where they have fundamentally irreconcilable yeah. perceptions of the world and any given fact of, uh on a situation it's kind of fascinating yeah. that's the problem now, I'm not talking about whether something is good or bad. What I enjoy doing is being able to see what is and then be able to predict what will happen because of that and how things okay. will go. I, I, What's I enjoy this music that. he's I like... listening to? What is this? Skyrim. Skyrim? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay. 
Yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I like the very, rain. It's nice and chill. The best part of that game is the soundtrack. I, I that that's what I wanted to do. People living in their own that little way. For those who don't know, we did a whole stream yesterday. The regards Bethesda games. <laughs> it was, <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, yesterday was comprised of one activity, which was Eve. <laughs> Uh, you should be there. Yeah, we had. Well, remember the Patricia twist. TV. Remember the twist. My goodness, the twist Dear was God, incredible. When we got to the end, unironically, this is this will. <laughs> I mean, Molly, you were saying this before we started. That'll be like it. It's it's gonna rival the boogie stream for this year. Yeah, it'll it'll rival old timers as well. It'll be up there. And it's in January, so <laughs> every it came out so early. All of the other efaps are gonna have to well, try really hard. Well, early, remember, the year is uh, August to August. Yeah, early in the August. year, oh, in yeah, the definitely. middle of okay, the efap year. So. I gotcha. Okay, efap. We're on, on the efap calendar. Yes. I missed the twist. What was it? You don't want to be told the twist. No, you don't spoil it. You can find uh, <laughs> you can find, uh, <laughs> you can find uh, links to it in Discord or Reddit, maybe. But um, for now, it's I've I've edited it ready to go so that the fucking internet break, you know, it's sealed. But uh, it's in a it was an eleven and a half hour thing, so I got to upload it as soon as we're done here. I'll start uploading it. It's gonna be a little late, but it'll be up. Micro chambers? Oh, it, that's always the case, right? Uh, I don't think anybody thinks that pure capitalism is good. And of, of course we don't think that. That's why we have socialist systems like social security. Nobody socialist thinks Socialist systems like social hey, security. Hey, look, all right, we're just, let's get back oh. to the, let's get back to power world. <laughs> well, wait, is that, I don't think that's socialism. controversial if you say it's a social program. And if, I'm not going to, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, that would be accurate. He said a socialist <laughs> system. It's an interesting way to put it, yeah. <laughs> this a lot of people do well a lot of people don't think about it in the first place so it's not really worth taking taking that into consideration the use of ai is not <laughs> necessarily not worth considering theft. things people don't think about all right um well i think about things that I'm not necessarily thought about all the time you wonder you not all who wonder are lost am i right not mm -hmm. all who wonder are lost even if you believe that ai be being trained by other tools is actually, you're sorry, by other pictures that you don't own, is theft. Because there are plenty of people, and I'll give you two different examples, Amarath and Susu, who do OnlyFans content, who have an AI bot that can generate nudes of them for people that try to talk to them. Our world is so cooked. Um, <laughs> what, the, what did we have? Um, what is, okay. There are OnlyFans models that have, I didn't even know this, that they have bots what, oh, that man, generate nudes of part. them to be provided to the God. people who think they're talking to them and are probably talking to either a bot or somebody who works for them. It's just like, Jesus. Oh, cyberpunk. It's cyberpunk, but it's not yeah. cool. We don't have robots and, like, cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, I can't have a machine online. gun in my <laughs> liver, so this, this is I the I can't be Robocop. Version. I can't be Adam Jensen. I just... I, there's no neon or gold. It's just, it's just cringe. <laughs> it's all <laughs> cringe. Beyond just the image creation, I imagine those bots have like a chat component that's designed to interact with these people as if it's Amaranth and then sort of process requests. And it's like, like oh, okay, you want this image? Here you go. To an actual, just oh, robot. I I hate to theorize, but I'm, I'm assuming that's how he's like, where do you want me and what thing do you want me to be holding? And then the AI just fucking forms it all. It's like, ugh. <laughs> it's, it's so <laughs> weird. You were probably very close to, to what it actually I didn't know this was happening, and I feel me like... Neither. I just Wait, what where that, are the flying cars? What does where it do for a cars? What does it do for a person <laughs> where they like, I'm interacting directly with her, she said to me news, and then their friend is like, oh, that's AI, that's not her. How's he know? Do you, do you think the person <laughs> you know? just goes, fuck you, it's real to me? <laughs> it's real to me. They're all wrestling we, fans. Did she, uh, did she make like $58 million in the last like few years from that? Yeah. Um, the, the, she should be able to take her pants off. Wasn't that the stat too. that it was something like in four <laughs> yeah. years she had made $57 million? Yeah, she's super wealthy off of it. Mm -hmm. She's probably got several <laughs> bots running, you know. Man, that's so weird. Sure, right? yeah. Is that theft? Well, no, because they trained the bot with their own content. So whenever you're saying AI and generative AI, you're painting with such a wide brush that you're also including things that don't necessarily fall into that category. I agree Not with this. No, it's an interesting hypothetical. A lot of people say that it's stolen artwork without permission. It's like, so would then, if, we, if all the sources were paid for or provided by a single artist that's using the AI themselves, would that then solve the problem or not? It's just... 
Well, I guess because uh, part of the conversation as well as the idea that nobody got the choice whether to opt in or opt out, like that it's mm -hmm. already, like for some people it's already done, right? Every single thing that they've ever made yeah. is now incorporated into these models and it's like, well, okay, well then I guess, yeah, what? But then again, it, it once again draws back to the conversation of what what do we believe that fair use slash inspiration is versus theft? And yeah. is that a line that needs to be redrawn now in response to this new technology? Yeah. Uh, now, you have, you have artists I now who are ever... um, building measures to forcibly opt out. Like, they call it poisoning their images, basically. Yep. Yep. So, like, an AI system will misinterpret the data somehow. I, I don't know how it works exactly, but mm -hmm. it basically makes it so an AI will always incorrectly skew... Um, so it's supposed the, to, the to be creating something new, like a filter that you put on top of the image. That well, I think create uh, something that it's a is form of digital rights management, right? Work. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, by the sounds of it. And that's a way to walk yeah. counter the AIs, or yeah, so yeah. they won't they won't be able to see what it is because they're reading it. You're right; they're not using eyeballs. So when you're looking at it optically, uh, you see this, you know, uh, field. But when you look at it, it's just a church. Right, and everything's a church, so everything that they uh, that the AI is pulling out of it is church. I, yeah, it's like as put, putting a kaleidoscope on an AI if it had eyes. Basically, I think it's sort of like just to sort of skew their vision of what the original image is, so they mm -hmm. think it's a a different thing that they're ultimately making. Yes. Uh, yeah. Pretty interesting. Every single AI tool that's ever existed has been trained with things that are not that thing. Paying for fake nudes is wild. Wrong, those models stole images. How do you know how, you, you don't know how the tech works? I find it how did... a little bit amusing that this is the conversation that's being <laughs> had with like this nice Skyrim music in the background, <laughs> this medieval well, fantasy world. I think this is sort of his. It. This is his aesthetic. I think. I think for all his streams, he has uh, Oblivion or Skyrim or some Bethesda music going. Makes sense. It's nice and chill. And I also nice music. Yeah, I'm mostly fine with the whole like whether or not he's got the exact facts correct. It's more introducing the ideas and seeing what people think of them. Right, like. Would it, it goes from being, is it okay that she's doing that to, okay, but would it be okay if that were the case? Because it's not mm. too far from reality. I can totally buy that there are people being fed AI images of nudes to keep them in a sense that they're having a direct and intimate conversation with a girl, which I, I just I just feel bad. And the funny <laughs> thing is, that's just the beginning. It's all just the beginning. We're going to go way further yes. than that. Did they yeah. steal images. You are wrong. Wait, you are one thousand percent wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> one thousand percent. Wow. That's like ten times more wrong than being completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How? <You're> really wrong. <laughs> Shouldn't go to my stream. Okay, that's that's a good good attempt. Yeah. I to be fair, that's that's funny. Like, <laughs> I'll debate you. Come to my stream. <laughs> 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 I, I I appreciate the hustle. Sure, and that's the difference. My door is open. What are you, a coward? <laughs> Who did not You're consent scared, to having their work you? being used by their algorithm and then being replaced by it? I, I can can you explain to me? what the difference is between that and another person who is a better artist than the original artist who is making art based off of that original artist's art. Can you explain the difference to me? Because like, I'm, I don't see- So this is something that people have super chatted about as well, the, the skill development element. And I was thinking, this is something that needs to be like workshopped, I think as an analogy, but if you had like a rock climber who's an expert and they're training someone up and then that person creates like a robot and infuses them with all of the data of all rock climbers and then climbs that rock better than any with his robot. It would be like, that's amazing that you've just created this crazy machine that does all these different things. You're not a rock climber, though. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd be like, well, but I, I, I've achieved this. And it's like, not quite. It's a different. And, and uh, I don't know if, depending on who you talk to, that would be offensive or not offensive. Because they might be completely fine with the idea of being considered something else. Right. See it. AI had to learn to remove watermarks, and that's blatant theft. And I. I Oh yeah, that that's interesting, isn't it? If if you train your AI mm -hmm. to remove watermarks, you're like, 
Mm. And that's one <laughs> yeah. of the one of the AIs like that they were talking about like uses that. Shit. It it does when they were promoting it or marketing it or or showing it off or whatever it was a demo. One of the things they said was, and it'll remove watermarks. And it feels like that is just kind of uh, saying, you know, what you expect uh, this to be used for. And in that case, if you are marketing your product as something that will remove a watermark uh, in order to steal it, right? Like that is a very clear, um, I don't know, mission statement that I can take and say, yeah, I don't, I don't appreciate that. I want to also kind of like okay sure yeah sure um nobody cares though right that's not that's not a great <laughs> response yeah but people clearly do not Be enough people care i guess is what you would change that to to make any difference but i still don't think that that's... i mean it only takes a few people to yeah, make, i was gonna the, say like make and maintain the programs right so it doesn't even every person you know, who like does it. care hopes that they can make more people care by making more people aware of it right and that goes the same for every single value everyone has all over the earth really yeah. you, you hope well, to spread i imagine awareness. i imagine the line is drawn at like 50 percent where like if you have more people complaining about it than people than people ingesting the content then all of a sudden it's a problem but not before that so I'll be right back. That's because a really shitty moral framework, though. <laughs> like, well, like it, if the only reason I, that I, you're... I don't know where he draws the line. I just I figure that's like the place to draw it in lieu of him actually saying so. But if that's what he's saying, right? Like, I, it's only moral if everybody disagrees with it. Then that's not very moral, is it? Not quite. I, I don't right. think it's moral is what he's going for. It's just that it, change won't happen. That's the problem. There's a lot of words that that are. Uh... Sometimes I want to blame English, but I also want to blame Asmongold <laughs> for the use of uh, particular words. If somebody found out that somebody used AI, it's not going to decrease their enjoyment about it. It might. It could. It might. Yeah, absolutely. It could. Because um, the nature in which how a thing was made, it, it can have all kinds of effects on your enjoyment, I think. Or it might have zero. Yeah. I completely understand. It's sometimes just... it can make you like it more. Sometimes it can make no difference. Sometimes it can... I think that what we've seen it. online, we've seen many examples of this. I don't know how many people in chat have, but like people posting AI works, being like, hey man, this is if this, this is if Wes Anderson made Lord of the Rings. And those people are like, fuck you! Go away! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Jesus, what? When I do nothing, it's like, get out of here, AI. I mean, uh, someone's pointed out an example. Remember Secret Invasion's intro? That Whoa. fucked that show up big time! <laughs> that was probably the biggest controversy, was, uh... even though it had fucking yeah. Draxob. That was probably a bigger controversy. Yeah, yeah, Secret Invasion, like, that That was... I feel like that doomed the show before it doomed it, like, with its writing. <laughs> before, before episode 6 came out, you know, it was already fucked. Mm -hmm. Because of that intro. Just because you say something is stolen doesn't mean that everybody else in the world has to care about it. No, I don't. But, but they might very much care about it, and then more people will care about it, and then eventually you care so much about it. In the case of, I feel James Summerton is really good, actually, as an example. He runs away and deletes the whole channel, which was an immense He's effect. Gone. He's gone. Yeah. He even tried to come back and apologize, and it went so badly he ran away again. <laughs> like, he's like, oh shit, that didn't work. I think he said something like, um, I'll come back and apologize when I'm less emotionally compromised, or something. When mm -hmm. I think what everyone seems to believe is just like, there's not much you can say other than, yup, you got me. That's about it. And then you, I guess you could say sorry. I understand what you're saying. But you still have to have other people care about it in order for it to be true. And so you mm. I'm just gonna keep going. You've made it you've made a judgment, oh, this is stolen. Let me give you an example. I'm living on stolen land. The Native Americans had this, and then we came over here and killed them. And now it's our land. Well, we're not gonna be giving that back. And at the end of the day, nobody gives a shit. It's <laughs> I don't even. I'm not. Even, people I, do give a shit. I don't want to touch this with a fucking ten foot pole. Okay, like this is not the example I would have gone with. Doesn't at, it, what a terrible, like, terrible <laughs> example. Like, I, I, okay, but <laughs> out of respect for you, Mahler. <laughs> There is no function. I think maybe to that. I'm not gonna. Hey, get you know what? It's it. uh, it's fine for you. There are people who care. There are uh, there are people who would people disagree about the nature of it. There are, there are the off oh, the amount. I would of... say that people care quite a bit. Yes. Yes. Information will create that will not change anything. 
everybody knows it's true and nobody cares. And if you think <laughs> that you do, go give your house away to a Native American family and leave the- What the fuck are you talking about? This is what we were talking about with the binary of caring. Like, if you care, then you do that. It's like, well, no, you could care and not do that. Like, if you do, that doesn't mean you have to do that. Fucking country. But nobody's going to do that. Because you don't really care. That's, I just, I, I fundamentally wow. disagree. You only I care fundamentally to disagree too. Present yourself as if you are sympathetic to the situation while simultaneously benefiting from its existence. That's just the way that it is. Is stealing okay if you don't sell it? it it's, it depends. I agree with that. Is stealing okay if you don't sell it? It's like, well, is, is stealing okay is a complicated one in general. Mm hmm. So people are targeting specific artists and using their names as actual prompt phrases to create the art. AI just meshes a bunch of pieces together. It's not creating anything new. Uh, a human being can also create art from pure creative individuality, and a an AI algorithm cannot exist without thousands of art that it scrapes. Um, yeah, you're right. I I'm not sure if I understand what your point is. There are always going to be people that are trying to define what art and art what art is and what is art what art is not excuse me nobody has a monopoly on telling anybody else what art is it doesn't matter what you believe art is because like for example i've seen a lot of modern art and modern art looks like my room it looks like <laughs> the garbage on my table but somebody else doesn't think that. I mean, really, the take. picture of his, his room is kind of odd. It is kind of, actually, that. yeah. There's a lot of fascinating <laughs> things to draw from it. Yeah. I, There's a story that's told in that bitch. <laughs> I, I guess I agree with him on the subject of uh, everybody's got an opinion on what art is, and the, even though I, I might completely disagree with the category, we have the most like expensive artworks in the world are things that I'm like, what? That's barely dissimilar. From a pile of poop on the floor. Like, I, I, I understand this point of view, sure. And I'll go back to the example that I used before of Jackson Pollock. It took me a long time to understand the value or understand that other people see value in something like a Jackson Pollock painting. It took That's you a the long guy time that... to understand that? People find value in it? It took me like a, an inst like a, the speed of thought. Because well, like someone just go. said, I find value. Well, no, it's like... They, if someone says, I find, a, I think Jackson Pollock's really interesting, and I, I really value his work and what it means to me, I'm like, all right. Well, yeah, under that uh, peer view, I suppose, the, there's no difficulty in understanding people getting value in everything. But even we would still have, have equivalence of that being like, you know, people saying, for example, like, oh, it's so, I, I just, I love Thor, Love and Thunder, I adore that movie, we'd just be like, really? You know, I can, yeah, then they could I get tell it. tell you like, why they, you know, Well. They can try, I suppose. I just, yeah, I, what I'm trying could, to, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to imply like they they would just say oh, good vibes because they wouldn't have much meaning or substantive things to say about the movie because there's so little in it. But at the same time, I I guess I get that anyone could love anything. It did like yeah, all the squiggly that lines. Took a long and... time to figure out why. Well, I think he's probably of... talking about a span of years yeah, that like covers him being a kid, where he would be like, I don't know, it's just which would like be a fine. Well, he might he might even get it. I don't, I don't, I, I almost don't, don't think this is that unreasonable. I think people can look at Jackson Paul and be like, what the fuck? And then almost don't believe that people actually value anything in it and that it's all done through like high end art stuff. Like there's business shit going on that everyone's telling I... each other it's worth something. But then he actually meets a person who says, like, no, Jackson Pollock's paintings, as that guy we covered, right? He's like, it's a fusion of pure emotion. It's a delving into mm -hmm. the human soul. You, when you hear that, you're like, oh. Okay. I'm sure there are people <laughs> in the chat right now who would. Uh, uh, say unequivocally that they don't like modern art or it doesn't matter, it's stupid or whatever. Um, so, you know, and I find quite a lot of value in uh, uh, lots of modern art. So I, I absolutely agree with that. The, we we brought that up. There are some modern art pieces that are really fucking cool. Then there are some who are just like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? This is just a hanky. just like you're fucking around. Yeah. You're taking the piss. And then there's those lore ones. You have to read the book, and then you can appreciate the art. You're like, okay. <laughs> Fine, I guess. Bullshit I mean, on the, the Bringing Pollock into, into the example, right? Like, okay. There's something about standing in front of uh, a Jackson Pollock and realizing that it is, in fact, 12 feet wide and 10 feet tall. Why do people tall. say this? Hmm? I, I... No, it's fine. You go ahead. No, no, it's fine. 
One I don't know. Too. I guess it's just. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess the fact that it's a big canvas that I. I don't know. I guess I don't assign the, the same like being impressed with it that I, a lot of other people do. Sure. Look, so what there can I mean, be simple so things to it. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. I'm. I'm just gonna say is it's not that I mean that the canvas itself is big. Ooh, look at that. It's about the fact that you are are seeing a monumental effort of work, and you're realizing the many. Uh, um, you know, days, months, years that go into it. Uh, you're talking earlier about the the soul of the artwork, right? And realizing that and, and kind of uh, connecting to the art through that. That's what I mean is standing in front of this piece of artwork can often be the difference between seeing it on a computer screen and going, uh, it's not super impressive. And then standing in person going, oh, no, that is very impressive. And, f you know, for Pollock at least, I think that that is something that tends to be kind of missing from the the discussion. Yeah, I I, um, I don't think if I was in front of a Jackson Pollock piece, I would I'd think any more of it. Which is totally fine too. Hmm. Page, it's subjective. So I don't think that you're in any position to say what is or is not art, because I can guarantee you, you might think that. You know, there's a lot of people that go to church that probably don't think that your background picture is art. That what? <laughs> what? What are we doing? Specifically, people who go to church. Like... People who go to church might not think your background picture is art. I don't think this is yeah, a surprise be... to anybody. That's, yeah, uh... but they'd be wrong and retarded. Like, I don't know. Like, okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing about this statement. It's like if he's just establishing there, everyone's got a different opinion on what is art. It's like, yep. They don't. So that means that everyone can equally say what is and isn't art. Not that no one can. I guess that's a perspective thing, but yeah. I, I imagine you'd say, yes, I agree. File picture is art, but I bet that you probably do. And and that's just, and, and, and you're not wrong, and neither are they. Because art is subjective. And I, w I wouldn't put it like in that. Some but... way, in <laughs> some ways. So if people say AI is art, then it is. The issue isn't defining art, it's the theft of scraping thousands of art pieces on the net without- No, I just feel like that devalues art if it's is, the only requirement is it is what you, when you just say it is. It. Yeah, I just I'm fine with that under the pressure of um, just saying, I draw meaning from this thing. You're like, yeah, sure, but saying something is an artwork or whatever, I just I feel like we have yeah. to reduce the category a little bit before it just becomes everything and every, anything. Without sure, consent yeah. to then replace the artist. An artist can create without seeing other art, an AI generator cannot. That's actually a really interesting thought. I think that humans can generate art technically without any kind of visual or oral exposure to anything. But a, a bot yeah. can't. Or at least bots as they currently stand can't. Well, what about an artist that doesn't, that creates after seeing other art? Like, I, I think that you're kind of talking around my point. If an artist is able to use something as an inspiration to create their own thing, that thing that they've created is derivative of the thing that originally exists. And so on a uh, fundamental level, you're saying that AI isn't art because it's derivative. And is this... Yeah, but again, not a binary. No, I think it's, a, it's probably about the process and what goes into it, right? Well, but and, and, and still, the, if we're going to say like directly copy and pasting something versus drawing it from memory versus thinking about the idea of the thing and drawing it. These are all different levels of derivative, right? That yeah. you wouldn't say that they're all derivative. I feel like that's not very useful. It's also not art because it is derivative. Do you see kind of my point here? It, Please explain no. what inspiration is and how... Yeah, I see his point. I just don't agree with it. He's saying that, uh, that all of them are derivative. Sort of. If you're going to say that AI art is derivative because it's made of different pieces of art when... Remember, his point from earlier is that uh, humans do the same thing. They create art from art they've seen previously or inspired by. It's just a, that's the fundamental distinction difference that a lot of people... That's like almost the fundamental of the discussion on AI art. Now it's comparable mm -hmm. to an algorithm? Uh, it, I, I think it depends, right? So I actually don't think that the human brain is that much different from a computer. Now, the human brain is infinitely more advanced than a computer, but I think that it's fundamentally the same thing. In a lot of ways. Um, so I don't believe it? in this, like, well, uh... That's, a, like, kind of like a like, the thing, mean? right? Is that whether or not you agree or disagree with that idea, it's probably going to have a big impact on what you think about this topic. Yeah. Um, well, for example, Rags, you, you're mentioning um, 
synthetic people, right, in fiction being uh, replicants, that, that they would be computers that are essentially, they've replicated so hard a human brain that you can barely tell the difference, and then if someone swaps the sentiment of, so in a way, a human brain is just a really complex computer. It's like, I, I, I guess, yeah. This, this is all, again, a context thing, because when you just state, a human brain is essentially just a computer, I could see everyone being like, that's retarded. But then I could also see everyone being like, hmm, yeah, kind of. It really depends on... That's all I'm learning from this whole thing, is how much everything is couched in all other language and uh, accounting for everyone's interpretations of the words you're using. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's like we were talking about earlier. If you just boil everything down to electrical imp impulses, like a circuit board has transistors and capacitors on it, transistors direct a flow of electricity one to another that sort of represents a choice, and then you have a capacitor that either holds a charge or doesn't, which is basically a true or false statement yes or no and like if you you could say a brain is basically doing that same sort of thing on that level but he's saying he's doing a weird thing here where he's saying they're basically the same but the brain is infinitely more complicated like uh, if it's that can infinitely be confusing more... i assume he just means that my pc is infinitely more complicated than a calculator from 20 years ago and then my brain is infinitely more complicated than my computer currently is you know what i mean like that they're all scaling um, right. But I get what you're saying. It's like, well, if you think they're the same, but also one of them is way more complicated than if it sounds like they're not the same. And then, and then right. you know, there are some people arguing from a sense of like, there's things you're missing from a human brain in a computer replicating it. You'll always be missing sort of thing. But then again, that's what Freeman was saying. It comes down to a fundamental belief at this point about what the human brain even is. Um, it's funny, he's, he said yeah. this to aid in clarity when I think this is only going to draw people into further camps that are like, he's like what? They can't say yeah, this. Yeah, pretty much. Right. So in the cases of our brain, what is directing the direction of those, you know, electrical impulses? Why is electricity flowing from one part of the brain to the other? What's sort of guiding it? You know, in the case well, of a computer, you know, it's like mouse clicks it's, or a boot process or whatever. Yeah, you right. Well, that, that's soul, it, right? Or, you know, what the nature of human consciousness is. <laughs> it's like, this yeah. is if In the case of just... the human brain, is some superseding controller that's, like, at the point of the infinite or beyond the infinite, you know? If we can just figure out the nature of the human brain and the replication of human consciousness, we can then decide whether to support Pal World. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, oh, well, because it comes from your mind that it's so much different than a computer. Most people's minds work in ways that computers work. No, yes, they do. Computers connect information together, and that's what your mind does as well. Well, shit. Whenever yeah, it's a little, a little simple. I mean, too. well, God, I guess, he, oh, I guess he's right. But you think about things, you synthesize information together to come to a coherent thought. That's fundamentally what AI does as well, in a very abstract sense. Well, Do you see a point you whenever can't, it comes well, if it's in a very abstract sense, then we're talking about something different. This is what I mean. Mm -hmm. I think when you get to these conversations, like those little abstract words or whatever, the words being used like that, it's just like, yeah, I feel like that's doing a lot of leaping. Because I'm yeah. someone who believes that eventually we'll be able to create an AI that no one will be able to tell is not a human being interacting. Like, yeah. you know, that's the worry with chat GPT and stuff already. But then at the same time, it's like, would I then consider that dis entirely similar to a um, a human brain or not? Which, again, I feel like is, is the, the realm of what Soma was hyper trying to address and figure out. I understand the conversation. It's just that uh, I, I feel like maybe this is a little clunky as a, as a thought process, and it's going to make everyone even more confused on what he's trying to say. I'm comes to defining art. Yeah. You can go open for discussion. I'm not, the thing is, like, I'm not mad at the people that are disagreeing with me. I, I'm not mad at them. I, I'm not, like, I, I'm, like, I'm not mad at you. I'm not, I'm not, like, this isn't something that I'm upset about. I'm just having a conversation about it. Cool. I don't know why other people are getting so mad, to be honest with you. You you haven't I pieced feel that like, together yet? I was going to say, I feel yeah, like maybe he... You haven't been able to piece that together yet, man? He, he, he does surely know. Like, a lot of people take very grand umbrage to this because it it represents, like, a serious blight on the world to them. Depending on their particular views. Um, I mean, like, pretend, yeah, like the like he's always gonna have you know stuff like based on what he does. Yeah, he probably doesn't have to worry about any of this stuff. But some people actually have like a stake in this. Well, I mean, I'm not even saying necessarily you have to have a stake in it. You could you could just be worried from a philosophical point of view about the future of humanity and stuff. 
That too, yeah. I guess that counts as having a stake in it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess so. The future of humanity. Mm. Yes. But there it is. You're basing on a level that people aren't going to understand. Well, if people don't understand it, that doesn't make me wrong. You could probably <laughs> well, you like, could work on communicate better you know, and yeah, like, define like, things, and you can explain what you mean when you say the words. That probably will help a bit. You're really wrong about the brain being a computer. What about it is wrong? As a paramedic, uh, it's not necessarily true. The way you think about it, uh, computers are binary integrated. They have to think and do's and don'ts. Brains have multiple chemicals. Yeah, a lot and of this is going to come down to like ways. the technicalities of different processes. Well, yeah, because function, the response to anyone's uh, assessment of what is in a brain that a computer can't recreate, the response would be, well, could it simulate it? And then usually the answer would be like, well, if yes, then how would you know ultimately? And then what is, uh, this is almost yeah. coming into theory about whether or not we could be simulations. And you're like, ah, yes. it's too much from a brain all at once. I can't take it. Ways to each other. Right. You're right that the brain isn't the exact same thing as a computer. But I said that your brain functions in a lot of same ways that the computer does. A lot of same ways? You said connects information, so they're basically the same. That's true. It's not the exact same thing. And I think that in 200 years, somebody will be able to make a computer that thinks like a human brain. I think that it's inevitable. To be honest with you, I can't imagine anybody thinking that it won't happen. Then I kind of agree on function, but it's not really the it's same. It's buffering for me. Sorry. Oh. Not doing that okay, for so somebody else responds and they say a crowbar is a, a tool. Too. That's, That's no excuse weird. to use it Strange to burgle house. I don't know if I've ever had that on Watch Together before. Yeah, Watch Together is being real weird today. That it I'm, won't. I'm going to refresh my page. I'm going to do that Fair too. enough. I shall wait for a moment. Jordan Peterson would have an aneurysm looking at Asma Gold's room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never mind the discussion, just the room. <laughs> like, Remember, oh. lobsters, <laughs> lobsters clean their room, okay? Well, just, yeah, well, mobsters like, clean their room and love their mamas. Like Jordan I said lobsters. Oh, I thought you said mobsters. Oh, no, lobsters okay. clean their room. Hermit crabs certainly clean their room because they, they it's on their back. Oh, I think uh, I think mobsters probably do as well, a lot of them. Uh, probably, yeah. Not when they're super into the coke, and they take all the coke, and then they let their room degrade. And that's evidence that the coke is evil. <laughs> uh, I want to make sure everyone understands that. And also, are you all reloaded? Uh, uh, I didn't yes. reload, but I mean, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. If right. you're good, then you're good. What happened? Then I kind of agree on function, but it's not really the same. Okay, so somebody else responds okay. and they say a crowbar. <laughs> That's that for that discussion. Like, it it is kind right. of like, it's just like, this is way too complicated. It's just like, okay, fine. I think he realized, like, this isn't helping, so I'll just move on to this. Bar is a tool. That's no excuse to use it to burgle houses, is it? Same goes with AI. It's a thief's tool. And when it... it uh, and so what's interesting already... all burgling is house... It involves a house, in a sense, because burgle comes from the German for house thief, so... This is a very bad choice to compare because it's, it's so you can tear this apart. Like a crowbar is a tool. That's no excuse to yeah. use to burgle houses. It's like okay, but a crowbar could also just like it, it, you could use anything to burgle. You don't need a you know what I mean. Like I could use like a fucking a, a Game Boy to smash a window if I really wanted to. I guess. Yeah. Um, and then saying like it's a thief's tool. The, the AI, it's like, would, it, well, but according to your analogy, it's, it's more so about how we be. use it. So yeah, like it's, it should yeah. not be acceptable. It's like, uh, it's, and then and then it comes into the complication of like, but what if I'm stealing something back? What if I'm stealing? And it's like that's not what it's, it's like. I know, but it's just you don't want to make an analogy that makes things more complicated. And it should not be acceptable. If AI piracy is okay, then media piracy also is. Why should I pay for something that's stolen from artists? Circular reasoning. The guy responds back. Um, a crowbar is a tool that can be used by thieves. AI is a tool that can also be used by thieves. AI can be used in many ways. Most artists who complain about AI art theft are furry artists who can't charge $15 for their commissions anymore. There, I said it. I can't believe how, fur how many furries got mad at me today. It was crazy. Nothing's original anymore? There's probably a lot of artists. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what yeah, the furry is thing is being... I, I don't see... I think it's probably a lot of artists might be concerned in some way. Yeah, f furries is just weirdly narrowing it. I mean, yeah, it's. More I think it's more so just for fun. It's probably just but... be like, see, we can dunk on furries. That's an easy dunk. You know, those furries right. were making I them mean... angry. So <laughs> it is, is an easy dunk. Know, That's fair a, enough. You yeah, got to get better representation, yeah. okay? In media.
You need more diversity. You need more furries. That ain't happening. They're a bunch of fucking crazy, cringe weirdos. Oh, now it's buffering for me. Control. All right, hang on. I need to refresh. These models. Are so All right. Jeez. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. It's strange. I've never had. Uh, I don't think I've ever had watch together buffer. Um, Who knows? Cool the yeah, house, but it seems to be fine there. with me. I reloaded and it worked fine, so. I have reloaded. Control arguments. The person, not the tool, or the tool or the person. Yeah, exactly. By the way, whoever makes like a good so watch together, you could, you know, you could. There's, you know, if you're out there. Yeah, you could. Someone could I mean, make like a a good watch like... together that has a non shit UI design and you know pretty you know functions well and stuff like that. There are like fifteen alternatives and they're all. Remember that time where we tried suck. a bunch of yes. them and they were horrible. They were yeah. all they were terrible and they just didn't do the basic thing. Mm -hmm. There's one comment. Uh, you're worth what anyone is willing to give you. Anything else is just fantasy. I... <laughs> Wow, this the is... philosophers in, well, I was about to on say this... Twitter today, jeez. <laughs> I'm not even, like, assessing whether or not he's right. It's just, like, a fundamental, like, what a, what a lame quote. It's so depressing. Like, you're only worth what people are willing to give you. Anything else is fantasy. You're like, damn. Have some self-worth, you know? Believe in yourself. Recognize your own value. You don't need to get it from other people. A lot of artists throughout history died in poverty. I guess they weren't worth anything. Oh. Hey, little girl with cancer, I just want you to know that you're worthless because you're not making any money. <laughs> Base, get a job, loser. <laughs> Good thing we have rich people to do the right thing and help her. Oh, wait, you're still in a fantasy land where those people are supposed to give their own money to make people happy. That's not life, that's fantasy. What's happening here? Yeah, the guy what just said I'm so know. confused. <laughs> like, what? So this person um, is obviously totally fucking right. Um... You know, obviously, like, nobody has a, uh, you know, the moral authority, unless you have the government do it, uh, to, uh, just go take somebody else's money and give it to another person. Right? That's just how it is. And this is another response that a person has made. Obviously, you're correct, but your explanation wasn't great. Metaphors with physical items work better. If an AI chef... Oh, yeah, I really like this example. I wanted to show it to you guys. Uh, if an AI chef existed and could make the best tasting meals instantly and for cheaper, no one would ever pick a human chef. Oh, that's, they would suck. Brian, that's not true, though. I mean, we actually talked about that with the Ripple. AI chef existed in... The... Well, so the thing about what's happened uh, that we've seen already, and uh, th this is in a lot of sci-fi media, too, is that if people know that it's non-human, the thing that's being created, then they automatically don't want it. They're just like, eh, get away from me. And it's like, you wouldn't mm -hmm. care if it's amazing. It's like, no, the point is that as soon as they're made aware and they want to be aware, they don't want to encourage, they don't want to involve themselves in artificially created things you know it could be could be food could be artworks could be whatever have you you get you get a there's a group of people who will be averse to the synthetic yeah. people uh, uh, that's always portrayed in the sci-fi stuff right it's like yeah you disgust me because <laughs> you're, you're not you're a, you're a perversion of humanity that sort of stuff so yes if there was an ai chef that existed and he could make the best tasting meals instantly oh sure loads of people would be signing up to get that food but not everyone a lot of people would be like, eh, I'll go yeah, with the human. Have, like, you know, in Star Trek, like, there's a great value placed on manually making food yourself, even though, you know, food sure, is a yeah. limitless resource and it's all delicious. I mean, the whole being able to do it by hand, owning an actual winery, and that, that stuff has value. It's still, you know, the real deal is always going to have some element of um, genuineness. What is the word I'm looking for? The having the quality of being genuine, genuinity, genuine. Yeah, but I was wondering if there was like like a a version of the word genuine that was that that was like a you know what I mean, like genuine authenticity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Uh, but but <laughs> I was curious if there was like a specific like genuine point being. But yeah, the for lack of a better term, you know, authenticity that comes with you know the real thing, the actual getting a pan, heating it up. Having a person there to you know smell it, taste it, make sure it's good, the skill that goes into that, and of course the you know, the personal element of is like yeah your kid's drawing is really shitty yeah we, we know but we're still gonna put it on the fridge because it you know it has a lot of sentimental value and it, it's good to the person to you know treat those things with value and to encourage them you know it's 
Yeah, and maybe when it comes to like creating dishes, there's some cases where the ingredients are flawed. And is the AI going to be able to detect and work around that? Like, can you compare that? Can you equivocate, equivocate an AI system to the eye of a chef where they, they're able to look at a steak and it's just like, oh, you know what? I'm going to like cook this like an extra minute or like a minute less or something. Whereas like an AI is looking for certain signatures to make it switch from like a, a binary state of like keep doing this thing or like do the next step in the cooking process. Like you need to consider like how sophisticated is the programming, you know, like what's it looking for? What's the AI looking for when it's like cooking these things? Sometimes cause they do cool tricks and stuff like that at certain restaurants. But yeah, in a general... Oh, I mean, yeah, that could be another thing, sure. Like, yeah, you want to go for the UFO, but yeah. I guess an AI could do reprogrammed for the cool, you know, cool you know tricks, I mean? too. In all sense, this is true. And that's what's so crazy about it. As a chef, agreed. Yeah, exactly. Performance chefs are wild. Yeah, Salt Bay, there you go. Nobody likes that guy. So that's, you know, kill two birds with one stone, right? There you go. And so anyway, uh, that's completely different. Um, is this a person who is... Okay, this is another ardent disagreeer in chat. Why is it different? Data scientists here, the tech doesn't steal images, it just learns the natural distribution patterns that are representative of your descriptions. The way that you say it makes me think that you're right, and I, I bet you're probably right, but I don't have enough education in that to be able to, to say, oh yeah, it's so true. Yeah, that's fair. As far as I'm aware as well, there's all kinds of ways that AI uh, art works. You know, they all have different systems behind them and they take from different sources. It's hard to be definitively clamping down on any one topic or other. I guess it's easier to do it by topic rather than by actually referencing any of these individual systems because most people aren't familiar with exactly how any of them work. We're rather yes. just talking about the theory. But I, I think that you're probably right on that. It doesn't matter how much an artist thinks their art is worth if people don't want to buy it. It's the same with any other product. Like I In relation to how much I guess they could sell it for, sure, but I just want to make sure that we're all okay with the the whole thing of like finding value in your own work is still very valuable. Good for you as an individual. Like I said, he eventually mentions personal value versus market value, which I really feel like would have helped if he'd done that to begin with. Yes. I it, it's as I said, it's astonishing to me that like I'm getting any pushback for this. It's just the truth, and we all know it every day. Well, VTubers you are pretty worked. Still up don't get why. I mean, I don't think you should be astonished that you're getting pushback on this. Well, didn't he say at one um, point that um, uh, he could have presented it better, but that by presenting it the way that he did, it got people angry and more in infused into the conversation, more aggressive, you know? Like he's he did, yes. implying that there's a strategy to being less communicative. Too? Well, people can get mad about me all they want. Uh, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. So a chef makes food true an ai can follow a recipe whereas art is not exactly bound by rules and as it's pure inspiration as i said in previous statements ai or machine learning is completely based on copy and paste logic you're right in some things but detail is missing as you're saying to be fair okay so let's go ahead and address this so an ai is following a recipe which is created by copy and pasting what a human does I'm not sure that these two things follow. AI machine learning, it's completely based on copy-based logic. Yeah, so this is the same thing, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. It's not. Humans can make art without ever seeing anything. Yeah, but humans have seen things. So, like, we're not... But, but... Yeah, but that's a bad thing. <laughs> that's a bad thing. And also, some humans have not seen things, so... We're not talking about... We're talking about, the, like... Well, I imagine what he like... means is... Like, if you look at a, you know, a cave painting, it's like, ah, oh, look at that. You know, there had to be a first one, right? Um, I guess you'd say, well, yeah, but I mean, they saw the deer or whatever. <laughs> and they, they saw it and then they draw it on the cave. Yeah. And, and so that would be, which I get, which is an interesting point in terms of identifying that, you know, at, nowadays, like if you exist now, um, then you've definitely seen a lot of art. You've seen it. You've definitely seen it just by existing. And then there's the stuff that you like that is particularly interesting to you that then informs, you know, if you want to start drawing or painting the kinds of things that you want to make. 
Um, and then obviously there's the things that you just see naturally, right? A big part of being good as an artist is having good observational skills that you can look at things and think of ways to present them that are either, you know, lifelike or cartoonish, but still bear some resemblance to reality. But at some point you have to draw it back to the first person who decided to draw something ever. Um, and they would have done it without having seen any art before made by humans. Well, kind of an interesting right. thought. If then the, 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 the that's the point is just the even even him looking at a landscape or a deer or whatever it's just it's just reference imagery taken from something else and that's what it all is You're like oh but then what if it comes from a blind deaf person's imagination I'm sure there's a blind deaf uh, artist out there oh yeah there's got to be I'm sure they exist like you're talking about a theoretical like we've all seen things I mean maybe if you're Helen Keller. Or something like that, sure. Or just a blind a person. You don't yeah, have to be blind. There's a lot of blind people, as far as I'm aware. Like, you know, not not a significant portion of the population, but a lot of people. And surely several of them are artists, or have at least dabbled. general sense, we've all seen things, and the things that we see influence what kind of art we would make. What is this? What are we talking about? Draw a picture of something you've never seen. Yeah, I can't... Well, well I, wait, it, but I, it, we, we, we do that a lot. Draw a picture of something you, you've never seen. Yeah. Unless he you means... Just you can ask someone, draw something you've never seen, and they'll be like, okay, and they just come up with something crazy. Yeah. Because um, someone could be like, yeah, but okay, so draw something you've never seen, and you draw like a five-legged creature, and it's like, yeah, but that's just based off of four-legged creatures where you've added one. It's like, okay, so when you say draw something I've never seen, you mean draw something that's not even within our universe. Because like, in theory, I guess I could still do that, right? Like, draw something... I'm not even going with Lovecraftian, as some people are suggesting. It's like, I, I mean... If I drew, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like as long as it doesn't match any structure or creature in the universe, known universe, like it would count, I guess. Yeah, like you know, like because people say Giga, it's like if if you go with Alien, you're like ah yeah, but that's two legged, two armed, so that's close enough to a human that it's just a variation on that. You're like, yeah, you would want like, some <laughs> frame of reference, seen, but it right? Can't to be like two arms, yeah. so like okay, but I also can't be two legs. So like, are you just gonna change it every time I draw something? Well, yeah, if I drew a mass of tentacles, and then they're like, "Well, that's just kind of like a weird octopus." You're like, so what? What? I don't really know what you mean then, because uh, if it can't be, I guess Lovecraft is the only answer, because it would be, have to be something that can't be described, and it can only not be described because there's no reference to it in the, our universe that could make it more understandable for a person. Yeah. But at that point, that just seems self-defeating. As a like, that doesn't add anything to the conversation. Like, draw something that is is unrecognizable. It's almost like saying, draw something that can't be viewed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, how do you know what's unrecognizable? Like, I'm thinking about like the example of somebody being blind and deaf. Like, that's so much sensory yeah. input that's like being locked off. But like, presumably, a, a person in that position could like still touch and feel things but is that enough to sort of inform them of like how to artistically create something you know like i don't know yeah like, i don't know um if it's just a matter of makes it like when you say make something it isn't recognizable it's like wait do you mean like in the meta unrecognizable or like with well, here's drawing one. like i don't know what you've drawn or that i don't know you have drawn what like, about what, jackson what pollock about if if he showed you his painting and said i've drawn something Oh sure, yeah, that's fair point. Yeah, because because right. what's, what's, what do I say to that? Like, well, that that's clearly the abyss, <laughs> like or something. I'm like, I, I recognize that's a yeah. that's a swamp with a bunch of blood in it. I recognize that. That's the... that's a good point. Because in my example, I was sort of thinking of art with some f recognizable form to it. But yeah. there's definitely, of course, like f formless art, abstractionist stuff. Yeah, we've gone way into the theoretical. That's what we do. Can't type into Python. Python inspiration. Do you think that one day you will? Maybe. To a degree. Oh, okay. yeah, maybe. Can I also address what you said about the theoretical? Of course. Yeah. And also, I mean, I can type into stable diffusion snake, and it can make a snake. Uh, if the point of an AI chef is to make food cheaper, that's great. But I think the argument is that AI chefs couldn't innovate like human chefs can. An AI chef can't innovate like a human chef can. So you're again, you're getting attached to the minutia of the process of a product. I mean, that might necessarily be that might necessarily be true in some instances, uh, because if uh, if a if a 
if a construct of some kind, an AI construct, doesn't have the ability to taste or it doesn't have the physical receptors in order to do that, then it literally might just lack the capability to do a thing in much the same way that a machine that doesn't possess like any like limbs cannot move. It's something it literally cannot do. Yet, yeah, me. presumably it's all constructed so we know what it's capable of down to individual components, right, and programming. Yeah, yeah, like you're not going to accidentally give a, a construct like that the ability to smell and taste. Like that's not going to happen accidentally as you mm -hmm. design it. It will be something that you program it with the capability of knowing. How it deploys those sensations, though, is another thing entirely, if it did have them. Part of the interesting thing about that, though, is that programmers would, upon iteration, 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 try to simulate that. It's like, you know, say, for example, it's like, how do you simulate an imagination in a human? And it's like, I don't know, you picture a bunch of things, but they're kind of weird versions. And that's where you start. And then you're like, that's the result we've got. It's like, that's weird. And it, it clearly has a problem of doing this. And it's like, we, we cut that out and we add some more things in. And, you know, that's just how they go for however many years until they actually generate something that we're like, oh, that looks kind of like what an imagination would be. And, you know, that just goes the same for all the different things of humanity, I think, that a lot of people think are human-restricted. Like, um, well, uh, inspiration, I suppose. Sure, I imagine what with I the chef example, like you have programmers who will just talk to a chef and be like, okay, what would you do with this dish? It's like, okay, well, I do this, I do this, I'd look at this ingredient, I'd evaluate this and that, and then I do that. And then he would be just writing all that down in something called pseudocode, which is basically just like a layman's English version of all the lines of instruction that are going to eventually be programmed into the final like code. Right. So it's like, if this condition is true, do this, do this, do that. And then you just transform each of those lines into an actual code that a, that a, a program can recognize or like a, in a language that a program can recognize. Right. What I'm telling you is that here, I, I can make a chart and maybe this will make it easier for people. The green part is the part that the customer cares about. This part, the customer doesn't care about. So this entire Sometimes, thing... Sometimes, oftentimes. It... And I think that there's some things that all customers do actually care about in the process of making something that you could provide like an extreme hypothetical or just the reference to how in the West there's a couple of things that are just absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, or, like, like in, like in kitchens, like, having any kind of... I mother and I forced her to make this under threat of death and torture. Yeah, or, well, rat in the kitchen. People consider that absolutely unacceptable. It's, and, and, and you'd be like, they won't care if the food's good. It's like, they will, though. Uh, a lot of people just will. It, it, this is a big old poop in the kitchen. You're like, ah, fuck that. I ain't eating here. Yeah, like, like, yeah, you guys like, know that as, like, collectively as a society, we all decided to stop watching the Bill Cosby show? If, um, <laughs> I could imagine that if somebody was, I don't know, if a chef, he dropped a steak, and let's say somehow he picks it up a literal millisecond after it hits the ground... And then the robot uh, comes along and says, yep, there is nothing wrong with this steak. I feel like a lot of people still wouldn't want to have that steak that fell on the ground. Yeah, you and know, a lot of people if, will be able to recognize that it's okay. It just makes them feel icky. Yeah, even if there was literally nothing wrong with it, like that there was well, absolutely zero contamination. Well, maybe, zero. A, a, maybe a subset of the robot's programming can scan the steak and be like, oh no, germs detected, and then it th throws the steak away and gets a new one. The could five you... second rule you could program into robots. <laughs> the steak, was, the steak was recovered 4.6 seconds, you know, after, you know, uh, after dropping. I'm just going to keep an eye on chat after I say this, but precious, precious guests, my, my, my precious cast here, Hello. would you ever maybe, could you imagine someone maybe eating some bread and looking at it and noticing there could very well be maggots in it and then they continue eating it? I can imagine that happening. Yeah. I, I, I do not, uh, I wouldn't do that myself. No. But I can imagine, yeah. I can imagine creatures who might eat maggoty bread for three stinking days. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's possible that such a thing exists. Yeah. Hmm. Is not relevant to a sale. Now, th there are exceptions, like farmer's markets, and, and again... Usually farmers markets people the reason why people go to farmers markets is because the end product is actually better. 
Uh, it's actually not just because they want to support um, local farms. Uh, it's also because that the yeah, product. I don't agree is with maybe. That. I don't. I don't actually. I don't actually know. I'm, I think what, that those cross maybe. sections would exist. That's fine. But we've also acknowledged the existence of the people who just do it to support the local people. Mm -hmm. You see that all the time in all kinds of ways. Support your local creators. Support local people. Support fundamental like mm -hmm. salt of the earth people doing local things. Like yeah, you see that all the time. Local businesses. I yeah. disagree with the idea that they only ever do it if they think they're getting a better product as well. It's like no, yeah, not necessarily. Obviously not true. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I'm happy to say there's a Venn diagram, but the, there's there's those that exist that just do it to support the uh, the stores or whatever better and it might taste better to them. So this is the problem that people on Twitter don't really seem to understand. They think that this matters. Uh, this is what people care about. So I agree with you. No but I one believe... cares. Yeah, that's well, just wrong. They he care means specifically nobody... no one cares. Well, is... It's just the fact that they care means, well, some people do care then, because they do. And then if you switch yeah, the goalpost to, okay, some, reason... some care. It'd be like, well, not an insignificant okay. amount in any way, shape, yeah. or form, and especially because the only way to get it is to be a significant amount is for the insignificant to it's begin the, the fucking exactly. role, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, if the attitude was that, well, if it's an insignificant amount, you know, based on my definition of significant or insignificant, so don't even do anything. Yeah. And I guess very little would be achieved ever if people follow through on that uh, advice. It's yeah, I just I love that MS Paint image like it's an academic PowerPoint presentation or something. <laughs> There's just a big funny. chunk of a pie chart. It's like nobody cares about this part. <laughs> I well, I don't think he would want to. Pre he's presented that way. I actually would prefer more people do that. Present it because diagrams can be really helpful to understand uh, what they see when they say oh, the things sure. they say. Yeah, I definitely see the utility in just sketching something out for people. For sure, mm -hmm. it's just I just find it funny. That's all. Knowing that a human know what they are doing, especially with our with art to any degree, art, music, you name it. Whereas with robots. AI or whatever, there is no admission of that truth. You get what I mean. I agree about the customer, but if I'm the, in the court with Sony over it, they're going to care. Again, you're right, but I think the other side has a point. And they're not, it's not that their point isn't invalid, it's that their point is unpopular. And it is not the resounding opinion of the general audience. So you think that- I Well, another element of this is that he derives opinion from action when we don't actually it's not quite the one-to-one uh, -one. as in like you clearly don't care because you bought x thing and a lot of people would tell you like i do care but i don't have like much choice in terms of what i can spend my money on because of how poor i am for example and they weigh it up in a moral sense and they choose what they consider to be the lesser of two evils what i'm trying to establish is just that the care exists it's just modified by other cares not necessarily That's that right. they don't yeah. care if yeah right. if like you're saying if you don't have as much money to spend then the price of a cheaper object is going to be almost entirely decided on the process that made it that way. Like someone said, then you don't care enough. Well, at that point, that's that's down to the talking to the individual and, and whether or not you even agree and whether or not you would make the same decision in the same uh, circumstance, you know? This kind of comes down to, would you steal a loaf of bread to feed your, feed your family? It's like, I mean, probably. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm selfish and I have a self-centered worldview. I think that most people have what I refer to, and I think this is, it's not what I refer, I didn't invent this. I think that other people have referred to this as well. Uh, they have a self-referential worldview. So everything in their life and their values and opinions and everything that they think is referring back to their own beliefs and their own life. So if things are not beneficial for them, then that doesn't matter. They don't care about it. If it is, then they do care about it. And so everything in their life and all of their opinions and actions are self-referential. Be I think you should have said, if it affects you in a significant way, you care about it. If it doesn't, you don't. Yeah, because yeah, there, there are things that just don't at all affect me in any way. And when I hear about them, I'm like, oh, I'm glad that exists. Yeah. Hmm. That's... I mean, how many times have you learned about a new animal that just like lives on the other side of the world in the jungles of <laughs> Asia? And you, it doesn't affect you in any way whatsoever. And then someone's like, hey, have you heard about the Kachiki Chiki bird? I'm like, no, I haven't. And then you see him, you're like, oh, that's, I'm glad that that exists. What's funny is what we get many super chats that relate to extinct animals and we're just like oh wow look at that it's like that animal's not even alive why do you care? <laughs> like well I don't like, know. I don't know because he's neat. Yeah. 
Even if I had no interaction with a cheeky cheeky bird, I feel like if I saw a picture of it, I'd be like, "Oh, that looks cool." Like, yeah, wow. yeah exactly. it's like just what you could you could tell as you open up the the picture and look at it. You're like, "Yeah, yeah." I with a name like that, I know he'd he'd look like that. Yeah, he, I can tell he's just passing away. Yeah. That is well, so a cheeky cheeky bird. If I yeah. someone well, said, uh, yeah. and then you forget about it almost immediately, and it's like I've forgotten more things that I care about than I care about. I mean, yeah. I I'm not going to stop learning about things and enjoying things on the risk of I won't on my deathbed remember it. Well, it could be tomorrow that one of you guys tell me about some franchise that I should be invested in it, and then a week later I'm more invested in it than most franchises, and it's like yeah. And at the same time, it could be a, a movie that I said was really awesome. You know, in two years' time, I've forgotten most of it. And I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. I don't really care about I mean, that, that movie anymore. Like, yeah. All but the time to it, me. Yeah, those thoughts don't have value just because I don't remember them for a very long time. If the picture of the Kachiki Chiki bird only gives me joy for four minutes, and then I actually do forget about it, it's like, well, I'm glad that I had that little, like, hey, that was nice, that was fun. Well, yeah, <laughs> and especially when compared to, um, oh, did you know the, the, the old Richie down in the store, he actually, um, he, he, he bought a briefcase today. <laughs> you're like i don't i don't care <laughs> you're like okay right. okay fine i just you know it's fine i, I guess i care about it i'd you be don't. interested i'd be like well oh like why you like why did you tell me this what this is a fairly mundane thing well that's to see that's the interesting thing is like why'd know? you bring that up what's going on and, and if if only to prove that there's things that i could say that you don't care about i have accidentally proved that you care about everything i say mm. <laughs> because they're not referencing a principle they're not referencing an ideal they are referencing what they want to do. You're a nihilist? I, I want to do a, my uh, principles I, and my I, ideals, though. That's a strange way to word it. Also, I hesitate to call anyone a nihilist. I just say the, the I could understand why people would would fear that we're entering nihilism with some of the stuff that you said. It's like, the, fuck you, it's all meaningless. Nobody makes a difference. Nobody matters until the market decides you do. It, it feels very defeatist, almost. You're like, oh, Yeah, man. yeah. It's not an attitude that I would want to have or... One other well, and, and he would say like, "Whoa, no, no, no!" And then he talk about like the proactive steps to make in a environment like that. But uh, like I said, I understand how people could get there, but I wouldn't call this nihilism. What he said, he, he yeah. I, I think he would prefer that we call him a realist. Self-centered meaning. Very uh, there's a lot. Compared. There's a lot of cynicism that gets flagged as nihilism when they need to be parsed. You know. Oh, and, and I'm cynicism not. Cynicism has it its utility, to be like a for, for comedy, for instance. You know. Is it better to be a cynic? Cynicist or a nihilist? Cynicist. Do you think? A cynicist, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, ni nihilism is just like you don't like you think we're just all on a downward trajectory and there's no hope and like there's no that's point pessimism, in having ambition. It? What I thought nihilism was that nothing means anything. It's all meaningless. Yeah, it's like nihilism is like nothing matters, and cynicism would be like. Oh uh, well, I, I guess my my definitions are off. That's that's pretty much what I was getting at. Yeah, nothing means anything. Like, what what's the point in having any sort of ambition to to do anything if everything sucks? Well, what what you wait for with nihilism is, and so like as in taking that, where do you go next? You know, you, that's what the you want to ask the individual. They might say nowhere because nothing means anything. They might also go into absurdism or existentialism. Or one of the other bonus boys that can be drawn out of uh, experiencing nihilism for a little bit, but you know, uh, right. what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't worry. If you're a nihilist, we don't judge you. Everyone's welcome here. If you know, if you're a nihilist, it doesn't matter. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> After a lot of people I know and interact with, I'm not interested in people trying to pinpoint down my viewpoint on things. My viewpoint is I'm not relevant. I'm somewhat interested in that. Yeah, I'm decently interested in people understanding what I think and why I think it. I think part of... I mean, it's really helpful if you're in this line of work that we do, especially because we're sort of, in a way, we're a... If you're a professional opinion giver, then it probably is quite important that people... You want people to understand you, right? I think it's important that people understand me. Um, sure. All I will say about that is that there, there is a balance in one's head, though, of um, sometimes you want to engage in the aggression and curt and uh, like almost blunt deliveries to actually make people sort of snap into listening to you. Uh, he was mentioning that earlier. But at the same time, yeah, communication, you know what I mean? It's like a, it's a bit of a tightrope sometimes. Sometimes you want to be like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking say it how it is. And it actually like gets through to people better mm. than what someone might call over-intellectualizing something. 
Mm. But, I think um, in again, non-artistic communication, you definitely want to be clearly understood, I think, all the time. But like, you know, with art, you want sure. to lead well, what I'm for interpretation. Like it could be this thing, it could be that thing. What I'm saying is if, for example, a dinosaur is heading to, to the house and we're, we're there, John, and I'm like, all right, you need to understand a dinosaur is heading here and we, we need to run now. I could I could see myself being like, no, that won't work because you're not even going to believe me. You're going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about, a dinosaur? So instead, if I just grab you and said, a f fucking dinosaur, you just like, I, I go aggressive and, and quick and then I just start dragging you out. It's like, that's actually better communication, even though conventionally speaking, it would be worse. Right, right. Like, depending on the situation, but I mean, it's not like there's a dinosaur heading toward us right now. We're fine. We're okay. <laughs> Fringy saw. <laughs> The truth is what's relevant. <laughs> and that's what I think people don't understand. And what I like to do is I like to show examples of that truth. Other people like to talk about how the world should be and how they act and how their friends act. Well, th that's nice, but nobody cares. It doesn't really well, we, matter because, again, that's, <laughs> again, self-referential. How many, Does he it, think that, like, a billion people have to care about something before it matters? Or, like, what? This is... I almost so wish I, we could strike from his ability to use uh, nobody cares or nobody matters. Like, we have to throw them out and he has yeah. to say something else, because I feel like it's only making him harder to understand. Mm -hmm. Important well, to think it be like I was saying earlier, it seems to be like, rather than a fixed number of people, if the people complaining exceeds the amount of sales, then it's a problem, whatever those numbers may be. So it's like a rate. I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I assume that's where the line is drawn. If he's not going to say exactly where the line is himself, like, that would, it would seem to be that would be the assumption to make. You know? Beyond that, and to look at what are you doing, what is the world doing, not what are you doing. And so we're talking about hypotheticals. I don't like talking about hypotheticals. We do. I like talking oh, about reality. Hypotheticals. Loser. I wouldn't say nobody, though. There's never a nobody, there's never an everybody. So then stop using those fucking words! And stop saying those things! <laughs> also, there are instances where you'd use those words. There definitely are. They're useful. But I think that it is a vast minority of people that... Nobody can eat their own head, as was pointing out in Team America. So, there you go. I'm gonna be proven wrong <laughs> by that when someone fucking clones themselves and eats their own head. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Truly really care about these things. And I don't think that it is in any way, shape, or form a majority, and I don't even think that it's remotely close. I think that less than 5% of people care about it. Do you believe in that trying can to curb the still be a shit ton of fucking people. And, the, and it can become... Then. If... But the, the, don't you see already, though? It, you're like, 5% of people care. You're like, that could easily become 10%. And then 20%. 5% well, is... 5% is 1 in 20. Because you know, that could be explained by the fact that the other 95 don't care after discovering it, or they haven't heard about it yet. Mm -hmm. We don't know, because the stats don't tell us that part. I'd, only if I think I can, which you can't. Uh, but more and more people are concerned with how the products they buy are consumed or made. Why? Because the reason why people want organic food it's because it's organic. It's because it's it's created in a way that they feel is more healthy. That's the, it's a higher quality product. They're not buying organic food because they like they have some like moral feeling about it. Some people some people do. Then yeah. how can he's even no about to say it? He's no one's even about to say, no to say some people do. Yeah, he's about to say uh, it. It's literally but a the whole majority industry. Of, but the majority of people do it because they believe it's healthier. Yes, not at least fifty-one percent do it. Okay, you, but it, <laughs> the thing is, this is what's making this so difficult. He's like, let's begin with no one cares about the process. And then someone says like, well, this is proof that they do. And then he's like, no, it's only proof that some people do. And it's like, but you said nobody. Now I said some people. Now you're saying that you've said some people the whole time. <laughs> it's like, well, then what? Because it gets you're really difficult. You're not a very good communicator. When you're in the realm of some, it's just, it almost feels like a matter of you can't even disagree because if you said five and the next guy says ten, the next guy says fifteen, I guess all of you are saying some. Mm -hmm. People are buying it because it's a better and higher quality product. So I, th I, I don't think you can use that. It's more healthy, it has less preservatives, it has these different reasons. It tastes better, yes. So mm. I, 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 don't think the, uh, I don't think that's an example. I'll read the rest of it. Oh, okay. Food to go. So the, We're actually being beneficial to the end customer. Yes, okay. I believe that the end customer believes that it's beneficial. The end customer, if you were going to ask, 
a hundred people of why they buy organic food and you ask them the question, do you think that the food that you buy that is organic is either healthier and or tastes better than the food that is non-organic? I bet you would get a hundred people saying that they think it is because out they think how it's many, how many have you asked? A bit of, a, a, You're not going to get a hundred people if you don't ask that many. Size? You, yeah. What's the size? A hundred uh, people say yes. Yeah. To probably every prop proposition. I've got a bit of a brain blast on this whole, um, they believe it's better for them. It's like, so that's a, if thought. we can convince people that they, so let's take the dark souls clone. It's like worse, but has most of the components. And he's like, most people are happy. So they just don't care. Even if it's stolen, everything It's like, so all we need to do then is change the rhetoric from this is stolen and thus unethical to you'll have a better experience if you play Dark Souls instead of the clone. And if we convince mm -hmm. everyone of that, we can achieve the goal. It's like, is that what you you would suggest that we do in order to make ethical concerns, I guess, realized? Is, is focus on telling people that there's a better product, even if it's not true, even as a fucking lie, would that be worth it because of the ethical goal underlying it? If so, I mean, hey, you know, that could be a solution. Not one that I'd be particularly fond of, that we have to lie to everybody to get people doing ethical consumption. But, uh, hey. It's healthier, mm -hmm. or, and, doesn't, you know, I'm not sure, they they could also think that it uh, it tastes better. That's the reason why they buy organic food. Many organic All buy those it because reasons, it makes yes. All those many different reasons, yes. Yeah. It could be Which... among them. Or feels like it's a counter to his general point, but I guess it isn't. And feel like they're doing a good thing. I'm sure those people exist, but I don't think that they are the majority. I think that they are okay. a... I think it's, again, a 5%. Because you're right, but I don't think that's the majority. The perception is what matters. The perception is what creates value, not the actual product. No, it's the... That's no, it isn't. You can't say that after you spend all this time saying the only thing that matters is what people will pay for it. Yeah. Um, and them actually going and doing that. This could and be now semantic. It's just, now it's perception. Yeah, like, 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 well, you know, like me, if I play a game a million times over and then I declare what its quality is, it's like, yeah, but that's your perception. I'd be like, my, per well, like, yes, but like it's informed by, and it's like, yeah, but it's still your sub perception. I'm not doing it because it's my, like, just yeah, because like, it's, it's my perception. It's also because I can verify it through all these other means. I feel like perception right. should be saved more so for when I say what the game is, and then Rags maybe repeats that later, and it's like, that's just Rags' perception because he hasn't played it. That could be a, a stronger way to use that word. But it feels weird to say, you know, someone, like, analyzes everything down to the individual fucking molecules of a thing, and then says, well, it's your perception that it's those things. It's like... Yeah. Uh, well... It's all, it, yeah, it's, it's your perception that oxygen is hydrogen and, you know, whatever, but so... Right. But, Water is uh, hydrogen and oxygen is like could be yeah, anything. It's, it Maybe is my perception, but it is also reality. Yeah, I was about to say that kind of fucks that quote up, doesn't it? That's why people yeah. buy Supreme. More people now care about products made locally. <laughs> reality is perception is reality. Or within their country, I feel generally, I feel like people generally buy feel good labeled things, organic, made locally, ethically sourced, fair trade, etc because they think they're making a difference. My entire point is that I think in recent years, more people don't seem to care, or sorry, more people seem to care about how things are made or where they're from. I think that you're right in the context that the alternative is the same. That so the like, alternative is you're the same? buying the same product, but this one is more ethically made. Why would you want to buy an unethical product if you could just simply buy an ethical product instead. So, well, some people choose not to buy it at all. They're, even if there is no alternative, some people just say, I'll go without. Mm -hmm. That happens all the time. I mean, th there's plenty of, like, a video game might come out, and then I hear that, you know, some bad thing about it, or it's from a particular company, and I don't want to support it or whatever. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, I, that I, I'm choosing to forego having the experience of this game that is not going to be replicated by any other game, and that's just fine. So be it. And people, that is a choice that I'm making. Boycotts have been mentioned as well, just about... Uh, I was thinking about like the Epic Store, so whenever a game gets snatched up by them, it's like, well, that's off the list of playing then. At least from yeah, the pretty, Epic yeah, Store. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Really, the difference is that people are not willing to spend money or they are not willing to consume an inferior product in the pursuit of this. Some because I, I agree with you. I think that if it's more ethical, 
Yeah, because he's saying now that, yes, the organic thing happens, but only when you're moving from something... He's basically saying your two choices are the same experience of consumption, but that one is unethical. So, of course, you go for the ethical one. And it's like, well, a lot of people will do it whether or not that's the case. This is what I mean. We've already been over this. And he seemed to agree with it earlier. But that's not the only yeah. um, playable factor. But this is yeah. true. People would prefer to do something ethical, to yesterday a bit. but most people don't actually want to have that cost them anything. The moment that it costs them anything to do something ethical, then it stops happening. That's just not true. Charity kills that whole concept. Yes. You're biased in this discussion because you're slipping on bazooka-sized Coca-Cola instead of real food? <laughs> um. Wow. <laughs> that really annoyed him, I think. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't even think there's any value to that argument that, like, he can't speak on this because he's biased because he drinks Coca-Cola. It's like, that has nothing to do with anything, but I just... I guess I'm amused by how much he's just like, what? He's very what? annoyed by that. Th what? <laughs> I didn't know Coca-Cola was like. Uh, a, I don't a understand. Bad soda. I don't understand I that. That was Fanta, right? Hmm. I thought that was Fanta, right? I have no idea. I didn't make a note of which one he was drinking. Oh <laughs> man! <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Organic isn't healthier, though. I can't. <laughs> Uh, I enjoyed that matter. reaction. That oftentimes yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah, oftentimes it's healthier. Well, I guess, well, they... The whole reaction? He's already addressed that, the whole, um, as long as they believe it. That's his, that's his point of view. Is like, as long as they would believe that, then they would be good enough. Whether you think that it's healthier or not. I just asked chat, and most people think that it is. Perception becomes reality in the eyes of a consumer. That's my point. I think, I think this guy... If perception uh, becomes you know, reality, like, then you shouldn't discount, you know things that change people's minds are there yeah I, I don't know how you can say this after all that you've said you're there's just too many instances Maybe. of a small voice changing everything for an item on the market uh you know the snowball effect sort of stuff again yeah yeah i think that people will do something ethical if it if it's free they'll like a tweet <laughs> i don't understand most yeah, people do people, things that are ethical that are, are not, not free at all yeah some people are not willing to really make big sacrifices yes some people are not willing to do that some people are yeah they'll change their flag they'll change their profile pic I like, yeah someone said a small voice doesn't change shit on the market mostly like yeah there you go <laughs> it's like, as long as we start getting them caveats in everyone could agree sometimes they do sure to a flag and that i would never want to discourage anyone from uh, pointing out unethical practices you go right ahead and hopefully it'll make a difference but that's about it. Uh, I get what he's trying to say, but it just illustrates that some people prioritize video games as a product and not human expression. I know he doesn't do. think that they're artistic or meaningful, but it's clear, at least in this context, all that matters is product and its function. Well, it depends on the person. Because for some people, they might view AI art and something that was created through AI as a form of human expression in the same way that photography is a form of human expression, even though you're using a camera to create the image. So I don't necessarily think that you can just, you, I don't think you can define this and just say like nobody else can see it this way. Because I think, again, anybody can see it however way they choose to. I don't play games to see art. I do it to have fun. Well, it depends on what people want to do. Uh, some people see them as art. Some people don't. But at yeah, the end but of the day, they are games are art. Yeah, well, wait, are. it's not just that. It's the 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 poster I imagine is saying that we should probably encourage people to see them more as art than product. Yeah, I which I mean, would yeah, generally um, agree. Generally speaking, as long as it's not like bear in mind. Yeah, well, it's, it's you got to bear in mind the dynamics that are at play. There, there is a company that's trying to make money, and then there's you with your own interests, and that. There should be a there should be an amount of push and pull there, right? Like it shouldn't you shouldn't just roll over and allow any publisher to get away with any business practice that they want to employ to get more because money out of our, you. Yeah. What yeah, I what you I was thinking about was like it is something that you're buying. If you have you know your friend who works all day every day and comes home plays games doesn't really consider the artistry involved in it, but doesn't like you know disparage any of it. They just want to play, and you're like, yeah, that's totally chill. That's fine. Mm. But if you have someone who's like 
Oh, you play your little video game. Oh, pew pew. Oh, cute. Yeah. Just like this is like a. <laughs> like, <laughs> what even told me it's not art. You just said that. Like, do you even know what the industry behind this is worth? And they're just like, oh, look at mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> the day um I, I know he doesn't think they are artistic or meaningful well i think that there are some games that are and i appreciate those games but if i found out that like a game that mm -hmm. i thought was very artistic or meaningful was created with ai that would not have like if i find out like some robot made this i would not immediately dislike that game i still would have gotten the same thing out of the game that it might even make me find more pieces of meaning to think a robot constructed the thing I found meaning in, but like I said, and I think most people agree, it changes your perception of the creator behind it. If they were like, a, if they were like a game director, you're like, oh, you did it with AI. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I did before I knew that. So uh, this is also a, a post I, I, I watched. Or I it's some it's something that people have highlighted. The difference between appreciating skill and appreciating the meaning you get from a piece of art. It's like two different fields that are happening at once and can be crossed over a little bit maybe in these conversations. I read a little bit. I want, I want to go over like I'm almost about halfway done with these. Um, I encountered this issue. This is a, a response from a person who was, uh, I guess, like a guy with opera. Uh, I encountered this issue a lot whenever it came to outreach of opera and getting a wider audiences to be curious about opera. Most don't care. It's true. What he says is right. Most consumers do not care about artistry. They don't care about the deeper meaning okay, for why uh... something is made. Does it run? Does it play well? Is it fun? That's what matters the most. What if they classify that as artistry? In a way, I mean, and I, play well is obviously artistry. Game design is artistry. It's funny you say that because I think a lot of people be like, "No, I'm not talking about artistry. I just mean, does it work?" Yeah, like as in, is the programming good? <laughs> does it the is artistry it of the coding of the the, the, the artistry, artistry. exactly? Is it, it you made? Yeah. Like, is it functional? People yeah. need to stop thinking about art as like, oh, well, art is like when I see it. <laughs> the art is also the game design and the programming. Well, you can tell in the way that this guy is making this point um, that we've created a dichotomy here that I don't think, I think this is actually damaging. He's like, you know, a lot of people aren't looking for some deep meaning. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not, it's not like you have to, when you play a game and appreciate its artwork, you don't have to go as far as saying, like, what does this say about life? Like, no, you can just be like, wow, look at the way they made that. That looks like neat. Mm -hmm. I like this. I like how these things kind of look like they were, you know, that's yeah. cool. I like the way that looks. I like this, you know, that looks. I like the sound, you know, I like the soundtrack of this game or something like that. Not, you know, yeah, exactly. You don't have to, you don't have to go t too deep. Like, chill, you know. You could, you could appreciate things on, you know, it's, it's a spectrum, like a lot of stuff. You can engage with stuff on many levels. <laughs> so is it almost impossible not to be an artist by this metric? You mean when designing a video game? Game design is art. <laughs> like, I don't know what to I say. Like, to uh... Game design is creative. It's full of expression, and it's yep. full of, like, literal, the construction of objects digitally, and voices, the art and soundtrack, in a video and game music. Are not the sole pieces of art in art, at, like in a video game, or, yeah. ju or just the music. Like, people wanting to create a meaningful, competitive experience. When I design my bread recipe, is that art? Gordon Ramsay is an artist. Absolutely. Like, when you're, when you're making that, this, 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 like, excellent, best of the best food, that's art. Absolutely. Okay. Sure, I mean, and, and with a film, nobody argues that film is an art, but oh, you have a well, main people character. Well, people do argue. I was about to say, look through, look through <laughs> history, and what you see yeah. is the gradual acceptance of different art forms. It's like, there was a time yeah. where film was seen as, like, ugh, gross. Yeah, it's not okay. real. Okay, sure, but, like, I, I agree with you guys, like, but, but with the like, art example, it's like, you have a main character who's put through a situation, they're doing this thing, they're doing that thing, the only difference with a game is that you... I mean, you're still operating within a basic framework of like go here and you you pass the level and you go to the next level, right? But like it's you're still being put through a scenario and making choices, and there's an artistic sort of end goal, right? Absolutely, yeah. No, I wasn't. We weren't saying it to disagree with you. We were saying to essentially support the point in a more interesting way that even oh, once upon oh, a time, I know. yeah, you yeah, know, we're more yeah. interesting than you. <laughs> 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 that was the conclusion I took. Yeah. So the discussion between AI and artists, frankly, isn't something that most people care about, uh, not only because it doesn't affect them, but because they simply aren't aware. He keeps returning to this over and over, like it, it, it's, it's the, his back door, he can always retreat into this, well, most people don't care about this thing. And I'm like, okay, okay. 
we he's heard you the first right. 17 times. I promise you, we heard that. He's probably even right with, with, with the concept that generally, in, in a very general sense, most people don't think about these things, right? Like, if we're just saying that um, most people who buy cell phones are not thinking about the child labor when they're buying cell phones. I am. That is why I buy them. Accurate. Um, well, I mean, you, I think it yes, keeps them off the streets, which makes sense. Yeah, I think it's a, a bit of a bobbing between positions because of the words being used. Like, remember what he went viral for was saying artists don't matter or artist opinions don't matter, which there's so many ways to interpret more so of what the fuck is being said there compared to mm -hmm. what he could have said, apparently, which was just that the um, the minority opinion doesn't typically uh, affect the consumption of a product. Which nobody's going to disagree See, with that. If you were to press him on that, I, yeah, like I think you were saying earlier, Mala, like I don't think he actually thinks that, but like what, he needs to be more clear with what exactly that he's saying. Like these clips that are going around where, like he, because these clips of him went viral and then he did this response video and you can sort of sum it up as him basically doubling down on his position, saying like, I am right, you guys are wrong and the truth will always prevail. It's just like, okay, so you do think that artists opinions don't matter but like he he needs to narrow his focus and specify exactly what it is but he would argue to you that he was clipped out of context but that uh i just don't know yeah. that it was ever a good quote even with context you know it's it's not a quote that communicates his ideas very well yeah i know yeah, I, I don't think it was ever a good quote even in context there is an element of you know, like obviously the opinion of the artist determines what it is that people will be buying so no, like, to I say that it doesn't matter is like it's retarded. Yeah, he needs to rephrase his ideas for sure. I think yeah. Know why a painting takes weeks? They do see an individual brushstrokes of the Monet or the way the Pieta was carved. Uh, what they care about is the result. Uh, is this bad? Does this matter? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but artists in a different category. Uh, artists, but artists are in a different category. Artists are in the work of expressions. And I also think that Monet was in, Monet was an impressionist, right? Like he's the one that did the That's water lilies after I think World War One or two, and uh, a lot of people. He was like one of the big guys, right, for that. Well, people criticized him too. People are shitting on him as well. He's a big guy. Yeah, he was. Like you, you Everyone, recognize a lot of his paintings. Yeah, said. that's just is being the famous artist. Is he saying well, that? Yeah, I'm, what's this in service of pointing out that he would have been criticized? Well, I, I was about to suggest him, and I was like, wait, I'll let him continue. My mom was very into art. She educated me in a lot of these things myself. They copied them. Yes, yes, they did. Towards the end of his life, he was actually blind. Uh, almost blind. That's why he had to wear special glasses. You know, he's still able to make a lot of the art that at least people see now. And so, yeah, there it is. Legendary artist from France. Yeah, yeah. He had like a, uh, I think he had like a personal relationship with the prime minister at the time. And he offered and to paint was... the lilies as a commemoration of uh, the end of the world war. And so, yeah, no, I, I, I know what he's talking about. And, you know, even in, in his time, he had the same criticism on him. Same, the same thing. What same thing? I'm not same. sure what he means exactly. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the criticism is that he's saying is the same here. And so, uh, uh, this inherently stems from lack of education or limited education in any sense. I actually don't think that's the case. I think that everybody knows that clothes are made from... Like a lot of the a lot of the produce that no, we consume. Asman is talking about something different than the person that's talking about. I think that there's um, I think that classes that are like music and art appreciation can open people up to things yeah. they wouldn't have otherwise explored. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that kind of stuff is important. You do want to kind of broaden people's horizons and not just let them, um is just stick with the same thing over and over especially in more formative years telling them about all the different styles there are to music about all the different you know in history we have all these different kinds of you know art you know you have Monet and uh gosh what's another artist there's so many I can't even think of any he's probably the only one but you all the different styles the chiaroscuro and things like that it's it's important it really is um Sure. I remember my art and music classes from grade school, learning about people. That's where I learned about Claude Monet um, and Frida Kahlo and you know all sorts of stuff. I wouldn't, I might not have learned about that stuff if it wasn't for classes. And I and I do sympathize with the idea that yeah, like people, 
I wonder how much people discover something like opera in a quote unquote natural way and actually like get engaged with it. Um, I think symphonies are also a thing where how many pe people it's, it's almost um, incidentally compartmentalized. Maybe that's a way to describe it where if you don't, but you don't, it's not something you brush up against. It's not, you have to kind of go out of your way to experience a symphony in person. Well, you do have to go out of your way to experience a symphony in person. You have to buy tickets and you have to go there and you have to, you know, listen to it and stick around. And that's just not going to be an experience that a lot of people even maybe think about doing, which is, you know, it's a shame because it's not like any other musical experience, really. It's always a waste of time. Kids can barely do math to begin with. It's like, well, that, that's just quality of education rather than... Well, the, like, they're yeah. in school for eight hours a day. They better they better learn more than one fucking thing. And I was just going to say, like, make math fun then. Like, that's a big problem education have is uh, they make everything fucking boring. It's funny because I liked maths when I was in school. Especially when you I, can see yourself getting better at it. It's when they introduced trigonometry that I was like, oh, you've ruined it. Oh yeah, I had, a I, like I had problems that with that too. That was tough. Yeah. yeah, there was like there was a there was that point where math stopped being fun and interesting, and I'm like, Ugh, this is work. Yeah, it was like yeah, it's like when Disney bought Star Wars, you know, it's just like oh, what the fuck's going on? What have you done? <laughs> you yeah, I was I good at algebra, and then I had to do like proofs and shit. I'm like, oh my god, like <laughs> I had such a hard time with that. Um, but like what what Rags was saying about broadening your horizons, absolutely. I mean, to to for a personal example, uh, specifically within film, like when I was a kid, I had I watched a lot of like cartoons and cartoon movies, and then all of a sudden, I had watched Train Spotting, perhaps at a younger age than I should have watched it, and I was just like, holy fucking shit, dude. Like, that blew my mind, and mm -hmm. it got me thinking of the medium in an entirely different way. I'm just like, oh, cinema can't, doesn't have to be just this one thing. It could be anything, right? And then it just got me, like, thinking about it way more. It's probably one of the reasons why I decided to go into it, like, the you know, as, like, an art form. Yeah. Because it just magnified my interest all of a sudden. Well, so if we have uh, the original thing of... You know the 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 thing on Pal World, right? Doesn't doesn't matter what people's opinions are. And then this guy responds with, "I think it's a matter of education." And then Asmongold's talking about, "Actually, I think people mostly know about." And then he uses the example of uh, sweatshops and stuff. The reason why I, I think Rags is right for the initial commentary is that um, the maybe maybe everyone does know about the sweatshops thing as a factoid. I don't know how many people know about like the fucking ethics of AI generated material in video games. I don't. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I feel like that's yeah. Newer. It's like children working long hours for virtually no pay and terrible conditions. Yeah, it's pretty easy to understand why that is very. It, it doesn't take much to convince most people that that's yeah. That's probably something that we shouldn't encourage. Um, it's mm -hmm. a very relatable He's made, experience. It is produced by workers that are working in conditions that, if this was American workers that were American citizens, this would not be acceptable. How many is it acceptable guys... because they're not American? I think it's uh, in a way yes, and in a way no. In a, in, in a way yes, in that if they are American, they're probably going to be a lot more closer to you and a lot more involved in your life if you are from America, right? But that's almost because just the, the natural byproduct of yeah. If they're in the same country as you, then they're probably much more relatable and closer to you, and their existence in your country can impact your life in a more meaningful way. Right. And also there's like the kinship of, you know, countrymen and things of that nature. But if someone is, you know, in India in some sweatshop in some village that you never think about or know about anyway, then then it's like it's not about them not being American. It's that they're on the other side of the planet and they don't impact me in any way whatsoever. Well, someone said they so, dislike the idea of broadening horizons related to going to the opera. And it's like, what if people just didn't like it? It's like, that's fine. If you went if you gave it a shot. And didn't like it. Horizon broadened. And just like it's, it's more so just uh, encouraging people to experience more. Sure, even if I didn't like something, it would get me thinking about it. Yeah. You know, like what well, what, what could it know. have done better? Like what like it, under what conditions would I have liked this thing that I didn't like? You know. Sure. Know that everybody knows that. I don't. I, I mean, are people not buying produce because of that? No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. 
Let's talk about mining ore. We here. Let's let's put it. it, it a lot of this. It's <laughs> about the. It's the apathy test. Um. So it's. It, the apathy test is like um, if you did go to the grocery store and in the aisle with all of the produce, there were two heads of lettuce there all wrapped up for you. And one of them was just a normal head of lettuce. And the other one said this head of lettuce and, it, and it, let's say it was 10 cents uh, cheaper. But it said, yeah, this this was made using, you know, child slave labor in Alabama because no one fucking cares about Alabama. And it's, it, yeah, it, and it, it was full of suffering and misery, and the children were not paid, and they're going to be enslaved for the rest of their life, right? I think v few people would choose that one over the other one, even though it's, you know, 10 cents more. But also, it's because they're both right there in front of you. You just pick up one instead of picking up the other. The cost distinction is virtually non existent. So, that, even if it's sort of a distant thing, it, it sort of hits that. You know that level of of, of I do care. Yeah, but, I think we, we summarized it as proximity, right? Yeah, yeah, it's that. And if you just if you give people two virtually identical options for something, and it's an equal amount of effort for both of them, then they will probably side with the one that's more ethical if that's the only difference. Well, that's something that Asmongold said earlier, but uh, he believes that explains the times that people actually do it. Um, meanwhile, I think we would be in the position that people go way further than that. Yeah, a lot of the times they do. Yeah, yeah, but mining ore is like, it's it's a newer one. I think that the produce is better. Unless you're extremely poor in my case, uh, and you don't have rights to certain one. areas, funding of money, like, you don't have anyone represent you. Yeah, thing, sure. Most of that, they just want to pretend. Yeah, exactly. Nike's terrible for child labor, still going to buy those kicks. Exactly. Because uh, money's everything, dude. That's all that matters uh, to the piggy banks. Well, it's also not just money. If, for example, the, the produce that was made by Americans was worse and it tasted worse, people wouldn't buy it. They'd buy the ones that was made by third or second world slaves or workers that are getting paid $2 an hour. So yeah, no, it's not just money. It's money and quality. Uh, let, let's keep going here. So um, the thing about that I feel like isn't being entertained though is the thing we mentioned earlier about how a lack of uh, funds would change your ethical system slightly. As in like, I can't try to be more caring of people who are being forced to make it in some other place when I can't even survive myself, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. so it, but that hasn't been entertained much at all. But no, I don't think that it's education. Because I think that people know these things and they choose to ignore them. How do they know these things? Aspen? They want how do you the think thing they, that they... Uh, how do you think they know them? Hmm. They like more. Um, some people see a flower and they say, oh, a flower. Somebody else sees a flower and says, oh, wow, look, a bee is floating around it. It's giving light to the flower and a flower in it. Yeah, and other people say, you don't oh, wow, look at that bee that's that. killed the bee. It's near the flower, and it might sting me. Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't know if it stems from nature or nurture. People born more sensitive How do people or know the that desire bees to sting create. You? Most people have never been stung by a bee, but everyone knows that a bee will sting you. You have to teach people things. You do have to educate people. Yeah, there's almost like, um, you don't just teach people things so that they can draw deep meaning out of something. You almost have to teach them how to draw deep meaning out of things. Or just how to thinking. know the thing, period. How to recognize the thing even exists. There's like the sweatshop stuff and, and all sorts of things about art and how you engage with art and even knowing that there are f different forms of art than what you're used to. Yeah. Like, you have to... Education is how people know these things. You can't say, well, you don't have to educate them about that. They know about it. And it's like, well, that, that's how they know about it. I mean, I, I, th I think, it, you know, that it's both... Uh, in the Studio Gilby movie, Spirited Away, no face represents many things. Uh, but to me, he's always represented consumption. More and more and more. Feed me, and that's the danger of being purely a consumer. Uh, one becomes an empty shell, one with purpose. Um, I disagree with this. The danger of being purely a consumer. I think this guy brings up a great point. But I don't think that a person who lives a very stressful and difficult life is at danger of being a consumer. This is a person whose life has multiple many facets to it and ethically consuming bananas is not one of them. That's just simply all there is to it. Yeah, I feel like this is a bit of a remix on some of yeah, the more, earlier. The, they the concerned heavily the luxury, and yeah. in a depth, a meaningful way with a lot of things in their life, but they're just not with... with you know, the way they eat their fruit, they're just not. Yeah, if you have, yeah, if you have a really tough life, then you think less about the little things. No matter what, debates like this can go on forever and ever. Neither side is right or wrong. 
Well, one side certainly does have the argument of this is what it sure seems like people are doing, though, don't they? That's not an argument. That's an <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. This sure seems like people sure seem to be doing this one thing a whole lot. Guy just read is actually making a suitable intellectual condescending argument about people that don't agree with the skewed view on consumerism and why people don't agree with them. Um, one becomes an empty shell, one with purpose. Uh, I don't think that people's purpose is or is not about consumerism. People can have a purpose that is completely devoid of how they process or produce or consume any product. Um, that would be the world we live in, what we'll head to, but it's always be- I will say, as much as I agree with that, that you, you can, it could just be like, they don't have to care, but it's like, but if, you know, you're going to want them to every time if they if they yeah, just that influences how they behave and what they do yeah they, they could be like you know that that analogy i had of the the friend that just plays games indefinitely but if, if he came home and played uh raid shadow legends for example we'd be like whoa man like i know you don't care but don't play that play you know play <laughs> play like a fucking real game <laughs> like <he's... laughs> and he could be like dude i don't care you're like no 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 i get it I, I get what you're saying but like just just go like mong out on a game that's way better than that i'm just saying the artist and I, I think like really this guy's point is is really the the first paragraph right is he saying that like you know as much as we want people to care about opera people don't care about opera and that's all there is to it uh, all the games you love and play like warcraft or handcrafted by well, that's not all there is to it. Go like so the, why do people why do some people care about it and some people don't well if you're if you're wanting to expand opera like i i don't think that you would just be like yeah well some people care about it, some people don't and that's just how it is like, well, shit, don't try to change anything ever. Yeah, as with every sector and everything related to everything, there's a, a way, you, know, you try to understand what gets people interested, and then you try to, uh, you know, get weird out, essentially. Yeah, I don't get this attitude. It's, it's like, bizarre to me. Like, well, it's just the way it is. Mm, moving on. But the wider world, you spat on their talent, hard work, and assumed their irrelevance. Uh, even though it's these artists who craft the world that you and your viewers get lost in, worlds that AI could not conjure up by itself. True. Um, the thing is, what you said is somewhat ironic. The people buying the product often judge it based on how it looks. Opinions are, aren't irrelevant. Our opinion, experiences, and lives and influence, uh, and lives often influence the worlds you enjoy. That's right. Uh, that's very true. And so, and I responded back to this, and I, I said this, right? Uh, I said, you're absolutely right, uh, but the value of those things exists because people like me say it does. The reason why World of Warcraft is massively not successful is not because artists made it. It's because people bought it. They would have never made the burn. Mm. Almost getting to like a chicken and the egg, so it, that's what's getting evoked I by... by... the exact same thing. It's like, well, which one comes first, you know? You're not successful because you made a thing good. You're successful because people liked it. It's You're like, because people uh, bought the thing that you made. <laughs> it's almost like we're splitting it up. Well, imagine I said it's not because people liked it. It's because people paid for it. And this one said, no, it's not because people paid for it. It's because you received the money for it. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, why are you splitting it up like this? It's like, well, what is the root cause? Burning Crusade if people didn't buy the game. That's the truth. Is that the customer drives the production and the customer creates the value. The customer the art drives production and creates value. Sort of. The thing like, about yes it is, no, we've talked about like, a million times over, like there are, there are things that didn't even get released for X amount of time and it's like, well, it doesn't have value until it's released? It's like, no. But, but if mean, you're talking if strictly about market value, value, then I guess you have to be yeah. right because, yeah. This is this is his problem. He needs to be more specific because that's why everyone keeps assuming the worst of what he's saying. Yeah, he's a he's a right. very bad communicator for a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> On this topic, sure. This is there to put something out there, but it's up to the customer to decide whether it's worth buying or worth looking at or not. It's a buyer's market. What you just said is dumb as fuck. <laughs> what about it is dumb? I think a lot of the artists on Twitter get mad because they don't like the idea that their hard work isn't important to the people playing. Does it work? Is it fun? Yes, then they'll care, if not before. It does matter, but it matters because people like it. If people didn't like it, then it wouldn't matter. I just can't wait to make people at AI and take jobs away from content creators that will never hear about how bad AI is for everyone. I'm just going to preface by saying that I understand that AI as a tool is useful and be, can, utilize, but, and can be utilized by artists to create better art, but to equate art as value for just being a product is like the argument that people made a while ago about games as a product versus a service. I'm not sure I'm understanding what you mean by that. 
Uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll talk about this. So art fundamentally is subjectively valued. Why is it that the Mona Lisa is worth so much money? There's, n there's not really a way that you can discern how much money this painting is worth without looking at its subjective value. And that's the same with any painting or any type of art. That's the beauty of art, is that it serves no intrinsic purpose, but the subjective value that it has in the hearts and minds no of people is, is, is substantial, if it's good, right? If people like it. But what I'm saying is that just because you perceive a value in something doesn't mean that it has intrinsic value in a market. Like, for example, Intrinsic are, value in a market. Oh, no, you, you can't have intrinsic value, value in a market. Wait, wait, wait. Well, I mean, but I'm not even. I'm. A, if you perceive something as having value, that can influence the market. If you like, well, and then I'll pay that much for it, right? Yeah, that's kind of interesting, right? Because you could be like yeah. a billion, billion people like the thing. That's what gave it value, not your individual interest in it. It's like, but what if that individual paid the rights owner? more than you that billion people paid yeah. in terms of well yeah in in the sense that you could look at any of the most expensive paintings of all time it's like well that value was defined by one person who was willing to pay that much money for it like me me personally i have no impact on how much um the mona lisa is worth yeah. because i'm not even in any way shape or form in the realm of people who would be in a position to buy it but you could be Maybe if one right, day Frank. you make enough money and you go out there and you mm. buy it. That's Not right. that you could even do that. Probably, I don't think the Mona Lisa is ringing. even like available for purchase, is it? Like that's I don't think where so. Where was the Mona Lisa kept? Isn't it at the uh Oh the, you make me think of Glass the, Onion, don't you? Yeah. That? No, I know. You do think of Glass <laughs> Onion when you think of the Mona Lisa, right? A little bit. Well, the, um, just like the idea of is it for sale? Can you just like borrow it and put it in your house? It's like no, it, the Louvre isn't gonna let you fucking do that. <laughs> You can't it's just the Louvre, have the Mona right? Lisa the Louvre, and put it the in Mona your Lisa house. The Mona Lisa is at the Louvre, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. I mean, I just have so I imagine, I imagine it will never be sold, which is kind of an interesting one, because at that point, it's 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 effectively priceless, um, in that I imagine kind of, it yeah, would never, much. ever, 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 ever be sold. It's now found like it's, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, basically, that there's not really... it would I would be... I would wonder how much money you would have to offer to be able to buy it and just keep it for yourself. Yeah, I feel like it 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 might actually be that there's no price. Yeah, probably. I don't know. How many of you guys have things that have sentimental value, but nobody would buy them? You have pictures that you made whenever you were a kid or something like that. He's almost there now. He's starting I mean, to yesterday. recognize the whole personal value. But like, it's sentimental would obviously be different than appreciating a thing for the skill and, and artistry that went into it, which is also different mm -hmm. than what everyone wants and feels would be worth paying for it on the market. These are all different values. And when you summarize your position as you, uh, opinion doesn't matter, and the thing that you think has value doesn't unless everyone says it does, they, they have distinctive impressions on people as statements that aren't as, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fair or interesting as the ones he's making here. Uh, and, and, you know, like some fucking thing that you had whenever you were growing up, and like this to you is worth a lot, mm -hmm. but to anybody else it's not worth anything so i think that we all have like it, it's it's such a personal example but that, that can we be all priceless. know that's that this the is the yeah. case is we all know that this is true that's the point i'm making that it's priceless it's about taking jobs away from people in the industry though if what you said about robots taking over the future is true should artists just pack it in no more jobs do people still get portraits done even though we have cameras do people still buy those only fans even Things, I was gonna uh, say that I wouldn't apply yeah, those, those two, two different things. Those two different mediums. You know, yeah. you can Google big. I boob. would value a portrait of me far more than I would value a photograph of me. Also, what was the second sure. one about boobs? Why do people do, uh, do people OnlyFans if you can just get big boob? Well, I do Google actually. Th as much boobs. as I think it's silly, there are there are answers to that question. Yes, there are. People still get portraits yeah, like... done, even though we have cameras. Do people still buy OnlyFans, even though you can Google big boob? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of answers to that question, in fact. Big, oh, yeah, there's like, a lot of... What, just, big boob. just one boob. <laughs> what, big boob. What singular? Big only boob. one boob, please. No, <laughs> One large... None of this para-boob shit. Two medium-sized boobs or one large boob? <laughs> <laughs> one know, big boob, please. It's tidier. I would like big boob. <laughs> People still like handmade clothes, even though you can get it printed from a fucking third-world sweatshop? 
Yes. So basically, uh, neuroscience. That's so interesting because it sounds like you say that the, uh, at least in that yeah. comparison, the um, the AI work is like the unethical one. <laughs> like, you know, <Yeah. laughs> uh, is a completely AI generated uh, VTuber that was created by a guy named Vidal. And Neurosama has actually become so popular that it was the top female streamer, which is actually a guy, which is, you know, like, you know, guys, you know, men, we just can't, we just can't stop winning. And <laughs> feminism <All right>. dead. <laughs> Once again, that is kind of funny that men are better at being women than women. It's like, it's wait like up, when, man. Was it? it was like yeah. when, uh, who's the, the Jenner? Who, what, what's her name now? Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner, when she won like woman of the year, and yeah. uh, we had all those jokes about <laughs> a man becomes Just a right, woman, uh, wins South woman Park of the year. About you just, oh, it was it? <laughs> yeah. Men are even better than, than at being women than women are, yeah. Dang. It was actually the most popular streamer for like a week or a month uh, recently, beating out all of the other real girls or real fake girls yeah, that are VTubers. Real women? All of them uh, were beat out. By Wait, so, oh, it beat out not only women, but also the fake women that women were pretending to be other women. As in VTuber women behind women. He, basically what he's saying is there's a guy who created a woman that was so good it beat out all women. Even the women who made mm. women. Damn. By Neurosama. Another and by someone out. said beating out, it's like he means like highest viewership, I think, is what that means. Beating out. So I think that you have an example of that being being the case. So like what you're talking about is like if AI takes away a job from a content creator. What do you think that my position is on that? Come on, dude, let's be real. I'm just saying, like, it's pretty fucking defeating. I actually don't know. As a guy about... Yeah. I, well, yeah, I, 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 I feel like from be, what he's what just said gives you his answer. Either. No, I, I disagree. I think he's made clear what his answer is. He's saying that that's natural in the industry. That's what happens and that you need to, well, what's you know, name? evolve, basically, adapt or die. Uh, what? Uh, I, I guess like what I'm... I mean, in the subject of automation, right, that was what happened in manufacturing. Automation meant yeah. that... Uh, manufacturing especially in like western countries got pretty uh decimated and it's like okay well now what are they supposed to do you know what's what's uh what's next well so and, and what i i found that argument compelling the whole like uh you know why the resistance of the next generation shouldn't be met with like fear of losing jobs and it's like okay but this is the balance, I suppose. It's that you shouldn't rush it. We need to soften well, the blow to, of the uh, industry's destruction on jobs, right? We need to like, transition like, this stuff slowly. Jobs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we need to make op opportunity for people to, to yeah, move into different jobs, sectors like, as well. Well, I guess you're fucked. Like, good luck. Yeah, know? that's the thing. I would rather we have that perspective than the... You, you fucking get used to it, buddy. It's like, uh, well, well, yeah, we could try and help them out, you know? Like, what are they supposed to do? Well, especially when... Especially when, you know, if you work in a field for a long time and then you become very specialized and skilled in that field and then you're done, it's like, well, I mean, you're hardly going to be able to build up the skills to be competitive in the next field that you need to move into with like no assistance or any good, you know, any help whatsoever. Like the, it was like the learn to code thing, right? Oh yeah, cool, bro. But like th that takes time to develop <laughs> those skills. You can't that's just like, right. that's not very, that's just not very helpful degree yeah. in art that ai art is coming out and potentially taking away job offers that could be offered to me like should i just switch careers no you should embrace it completely and you should look at how to use it to augment your skills you have the perfect uh, opportunity uh, to use uh, and leverage not, these skills with this uh, new technology uh, to get a better job than probably you could have gotten 10 years ago i suppose the problem there is that what if you're dealing with someone who fundamentally considers it unethical what are they supposed to do then it's like well change your ethical system i guess or of course, what if you don't want to make it that way? What if you want to uh, do it the the the, the, uh, the traditional way, the normal way of just not using those tools at all? I guess it's just like, oh well, too bad. But I mean, that doesn't seem like a great well, it's, answer. It's, it's an answer. It's just yeah, it doesn't really uh, solve many problems. It only just answers the question. Well, it especially doesn't solve the problem of what if somebody places an immense amount of value in the process of doing it themselves, of going from you know, uh, like pencil and paper all the way to creating something without doing any, like without any use of AI tools in that process at all. And it's just like, oh, too bad. <laughs> like, sucks for you then, I guess.
can't be making art like or or at the very least you can't expect to do it professionally that doesn't seem like a great solution i don't think that you should view it that way i don't i think that that's the defeatist mindset like i i ai art is a tool i feel like saying out embrace it is also pretty defeatist yeah depending on who you're talking to well it also depends on how you view it all if if you if you think this is encroaching upon creativity and destroying industries and then someone tells you yeah get used to it how fucking sad is that <laughs> <laughs> jesus <laughs> Or well, I guess it would be like, why would you expect someone to accept that answer of just like, yeah, well, that thing you want ain't gonna happen, so, like, tough shit. Like, do you think that they'll go like, oh, well, fuck, you've convinced me. I give up. <laughs> I give up on, on the position that I hold. It doesn't work like right. that. Well, yeah, you're only gonna be, like, completely in line with this if you already agree with him, which, funnily enough, I'm... I'm aligned in certain ways, I just feel like it lacks, there's so many holes in this in terms of like a, a peel, trying to soften what the effects of this will be on a actively highly developed civilization. Because that's what, that's what AI is going to do, it's going to, it's, it's already swamping loads of different industries and it's going to take over in loads of different scarier ways that we won't be able to even figure out, like it'll be done well before we even know about it something different yeah. i say that as if it isn't happening literally right now <laughs> i'm just like you know, it's, it hasn't happened yet i'm sure self-checkouts are huge like most places have like 30 fucking checkout lines and three of them are open everywhere and whenever i was a kid 15 of them were open well what happened to those 12 people well one of them is working at the self-checkout area and the other 11 aren't working at the store anymore so there's definitely that. Um, candle makers. Yeah, candle makers and like One thing that I've noticed people doing at the grocery stores are the people who go around and fill up the tubs full of like the people put in their orders for like groceries online. Mm -hmm. And then people at the store put it all into like boxes and stuff. And then you come and pick it up. Or sometimes it's even delivered. So I guess that's a thing that's happening Well, I guess now. the thing is like... All of this, because of, of course, if you point to like self-service, which, yeah, I mean, basically like any grocery store or retail place has got self-serve checkouts at this point when it used to be that you had to have people operating into the checkouts and that potentially means lost jobs. Um, I mean, the solution has to be, well, you gotta, you gotta find jobs to replace those jobs, right? You can't, how, how is it going to be sustainable if you've just got, oh yeah, 10 gob, 10 gobs, 10 jobs get lost uh, and then one job gets created. Like, are, are you going to end up in a place where there are people who are just permanently unemployable? Because that's... Hmm. Maybe, though. Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> but at that point, it feels like, you again, it's already moving out of the, con like, the subject of AI into a much uh, broader yeah. sort of uh, subject. Light bulbs. Well, I'm trying to think about examples that are contemporary that we all understand. Travel agents. That's a really great example. The taxi industry has totally changed with uber it's totally Film fucking cameras. died yeah <laughs> taxi is not a great example no it is it goes about dying because if, uh, if it was gradually transferred over and taxi drivers can become uber drivers obviously there's going to be damage done but i actually think that's a good example of an industry that started oh, with a I gap thought... in the market and oh that... if that's what he's saying then yes i thought he was saying something different i i don't I, I can't say i know exactly what he's saying here but i assumed what i would want to advocate for is that we do it gradually i wouldn't want to say that ubers have to stop and not exist because it'll kill taxis i would rather we incorporate and smoothly transition over to that being the dominant because it just seems to be a more effective service get the taxi drivers into being uber drivers that sort of thing um I just, you know, I, I wouldn't instead. I wouldn't want to say it as simply as, you know, how we used to have taxis. Now we have Ubers. There we go. Like it would be like well, that. That's not. I don't know if that's an interesting analysis compared to what you could say. Mm -hmm. Telephone. Because I'm, sure, I'm sure there's a lot of taxi drivers who fucking hate Uber. Phone oh, operators. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wasn't I mean, there's there the a thing lot where, like, in New York, they fought to keep Uber out of like New York. I think so. I seem to remember that. Yeah. That's, Probably. That's, that rings the bell. Well, it, where I am in Vancouver, it was the same thing. I remember taxi drivers were fucking pissed. Yeah, it makes sense. You need it to be transitioned slowly so that people can adapt in time. Because if you if it happens all at once, it can do serious damage. These yeah. maps. Yeah, it, the people that make maps. That's a great fucking example. Yes, exactly. If AI art can replace uh, uh, Boris Vilgio's or uh, Chris Foss's art style, what the fuck right, is the point of learning about principles of design, elements of art? Like, I don't know, man. Uh, it, it depends on how you use it. Like, I, I think that if you if you understand things like that, you can perfect tools to make those tools more 
precise and more appealing. Uh, this doesn't negate the opinions of those who made it. This is like saying that OTK Network or your stream only has value because we, not you, enjoy it. You own OTK? Forget you, dude. Who cares what you think? People are, are just totally watching your streams for your gaming only and not your opinion and viewpoint on certain matters. You and I both know that's nonsense. It may be a good game, but it's not impressive. He's talking about Pal World. I said, you're right again. If no one watched my stream, it would have no value. Who would sponsor a streamer who has no views? I mean, no economic How much would ads yeah. make? And again, well, it's still, yeah, it's just, it's, that's economic value. Which it, I still feel like isn't captured fully by this, but um, I get what he's saying compared to personal value or artistic value. But again, well, I mean, artistic value well, from I mean, the point of view yeah. of many people or from, from yourself, you know, there's... It, Many values. But what is like, it's, I guess, because it's funny, it's like, I mean, wh what does it mean when, for instance, a company is said to be overvalued? Like, what does that mean? When whatever their valuation is, according to the market, doesn't seem to correlate with what would be seen as like traditional markers of value. Um, like, what does it mean? And, and you know, what, what happens if like, let, you know, I guess the Vincent Van Gogh is the easy example, right? He painted, he didn't really get much attention, and then people found out about it, and then his paintings became, you know, much more expensive because everybody starts to know who he was. It's like, so it would be that the painting had no value until, like, somebody noticed it, and then all of a sudden it's like it's got dramatic value, that that would be the way that it would be categorized in his world. Which, well, right. You might even make it simpler all... as it didn't have value until it had value. And then you'd be like, can you be more specific? It's like, it didn't have someone yeah. valuing it until it had someone valuing it. And you're like, oh, that's awfully restrictive. And it's like, yep, that's all I meant. And you're like, oh, okay. That does seem to be it, too. Well, it's, and it's not what everyone's mad about. It's, uh, yeah. They're mad about the implications and the um, almost the subtext it gets, gets to people as well. Because uh, it's the word value. It's the word matters. These words, um, you know, they do stuff. And how could I get subscribers? Something's market value versus its personal value are two different things. And so this go. is the last point that he makes in the DM. Yeah, I'll probably have to respond to this DM. And um, uh, perhaps it's difference in perspective here. What we value more sounds like you're a slave to your viewers and sponsors uh, than my dude. Not a slave, but a servant. And I don't think that's a bad thing. But I know you stream because you love it and value it for exactly yourself. And you he's... couldn't think of doing hmm? That you know, you can hit pause too, Rags. If you just stop <laughs> talking, I can't hear you. <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> I was saying I didn't quite... Uh, I was like, I wonder if he'll expand on that. I didn't quite know what he means by, like, not a slave, but a servant. Um, I mean, yeah, he could have expanded on it, but I assume it just means the... I can guess, but I, again, I'm not even sure if my guess would be close to what he means. Well, a servant willingly does services for a price, right? Like they're compensated. In Meanwhile, some way. a slave is like they have no choice in anything. Like, so yeah. a slave in this sense would be like, I don't want to stream, but I have. We're to. forcing you to. Yeah. Yeah, or that you can't express any opinions that any of your chat would not be happy with, or that you can't play any games that aren't going to be very popular. I think that would be closer to like slave level. But that Asmund Gold, I mean, he gets himself in trouble so much that he can't be considered someone who doesn't uh, go against the grain here and there. I, I don't know. I, I, it's a fair point. You could have elaborated a little bit on that. Anything else? Uh, so I think you're missing my point. I make and share art because I value it. I make tutorials on how to make 3D art because I genuinely enjoy doing it. Even if I get minimal views, I don't care. Good. Then do it. I, I, I develop Rust because I genuinely enjoy the art I make for it. And the developers I have around me are like family. The opinion on developing a game matters to me. For me, if no one watched your stream, it doesn't mean that it has no intrinsic value. I think that it does. And I actually think that the stream never had any intrinsic value. I think that the value for a stream was always subjective. And something having subjective... You see the words? They're all tangled up. If you look at their last sentence, yeah. they say, unless you're framing it all through the lens of money, then that's a shame. And I think if Asmund had read that already, he would have been like, no, not a shame, reality. And then they'd be like, yeah, a sad reality. He'd be like, no, just reality, because that's how value <laughs> works in the... You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, I feel like the two positions are not recognizing each other very well. And that yes, yet they right. use the same words to describe the same uh, situation. Yeah, like earlier he said, if no one watched my stream, it would have no value. And then he said value is subjective. It was like, but if people are... Why, if, if the value right, something is based off he, of the people who are watching it, then that's he then it's subjective. To, he seemed to pretty clearly mean monetary 
value with regards to his own right because immediately after that well what who would sponsor a stream with zero viewers how many ads would people watch right so like he was clearly i think in that case talking pretty exclusively about the the literal monetary value of that stream right and i think in that case if you're streaming to zero people what is the monetary value of that stream uh yeah it's going to be zero because you get no subs you get no ads you get you know which is interesting super cats. as to what rag said in terms of that wouldn't be subjective at that point right like it wouldn't be subjective no like like there's so much I, I don't know all these terms are being thrown around repeatedly and they seem to have different meanings every time he says them Right. And maybe it's because he's reading them and, and other people are saying, oh, but it has no value. Right. And they're saying, oh, so you're saying that uh, it has no personal value, it has no, you know, yeah, because merit. on them. Well, so what he this is why the words are getting tangled, because uh, take, for example, someone saying we're going to supply ads to a, a YouTuber and uh, this one has 10,000 average viewers. This one has 20. This one has 30. It's like we're going with the 30. And it's like that value of their viewers has translated into literal units. So they gives them value on a screen to like someone deciding something like that. And he would yes. say, yes, that is objective. But that the people watching it and liking it is the subjective part. And so describing yes. it wholly as subjective value can get very confusing if we're talking about the money markets or the economic markets. Um but again, it's just like that's that's that seems to be what we have learned overall is that this is entirely just miscommunication, which does often end up being the cause of pretty much everything that goes wrong on the internet. Yeah, there, well, definitely a lot of it. Yeah, objective value doesn't make it inferior or worse, but it does make it different and not the same as something that has intrinsic value. Unless you're framing it through all through the lens of money, something then that that's does a shame. have intrinsic yes, value. Yes, and I, I, I want to yeah. actually. Sorry, I I still don't know what he. The way that he phrases that. Hello? Go on, Rags. <laughs> yeah, it dropped, but you're good now. Is he? Is is he? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard a word I, from him. I spoke too soon. So we... Hello, Rags? Is Rags rip in peace? Rip in pepperoni. Uh-oh. I'm waiting for the for button. Go on, give me the button. Can we get an F in the chat for rags? Well, or, or X's if much you much doubt much. his death. F's or X's. Oh, X's <laughs> for doubt. F, or yeah. F or X to death. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> oh, I see a couple X's, but mostly F's. I think we think this is legitimate death. You gotta give the X's a little more time. <laughs> Yeah, they're coming in. They didn't know X was an option. No, it's James Moore <laughs> just typing X over and over again. <laughs> and every one of them counts. Uh, I, you know what? We're just going to carry on. Should we refer back to this and talk about this again? Um, the reason why I said a lot of these things, I was talking about this in the context of going to market with a video game. I wasn't talking about art as a whole. I wasn't talking about how an individual perceives art. How could I possibly tell somebody what has value to them? That's insane. I'm talking explicitly, and you know, you'd know this if you saw more than a minute and a half of the clip. Which we have, woohoo! Clip, that I'm mm -hmm. talking about why people buy or don't buy a game. I'm talking about how consumers value games, how consumers consume content, what values those people have. It doesn't really have a lot to do yeah, with how it's went. <laughs> made i know that i'm right so much that it doesn't even bother me whenever it doesn't even bother me whenever people get mad i view them as just people that are unwilling or i would say even with all this clarification i mostly agree with them but i would still take issue with the idea of like a discouragement on people raising all of these issues in the hopes of doing something to the game ultimately and and, and suggesting through stats like well you're not making any difference are you it's like well no, no they still can they still may and they have in the past. A lot of things can happen. And it's crazy what happens when you appeal to uh, like the creators behind the thing. That can have some mm -hmm. huge difference. Or yeah. unable mm. to see the truth. I'm not mad at any of these comments. This like Obviously, I've talked about it for a long time. I clearly care about them. But this isn't something that's going to make me un unhappy or compromise me emotionally, if that makes sense. Uh, what you're wrong about is how you said the game made doesn't matter, but it does. It may not matter to you or a bunch of people, but it sure does to a lot of other people who are different. Um, 
It doesn't matter in a functional sense in terms that it will create an effect on the video game. Whenever I say it doesn't matter, I, again, what, I'm, might, real, what I'm not really only saying, might it, what I'm but the judging from the stats, we'll never know how much effect it actually has had on it. That's yeah. thing. You can never know on that thing because it's thinking about you know futures that don't exist. But yeah, I mean, you can never know for sure. Hey, Rex. Hello. I'm, I'm really saying is that it doesn't matter in the context of it selling well or not selling well. Of course, it matters to you, but it doesn't matter in the sense of it selling well in the market. Um, a bunch of sales can be driven because of a notable artist that worked in a certain product. I was definitely the case for me in a bunch of games that I said to buy. And why is that artist notable? And you will see that your reasoning will come back around to the fact that that artist creates value that resonates with people such as yourself. Because people like their work, exactly. But, the chicken. but that's, that's not what he was saying earlier. Yeah, this right? one makes it complicated now, because it's like, so... My investment in the artistry of an individual makes me decide to buy a thing where I otherwise wouldn't have. Would be an example of If the... anything... Of the artist having value, this is yeah. a, a, a he he he's very clearly contradicting what he says earlier because he's saying, oh well, the artist has no value, and if you have an artist, you know they don't matter; they're not going to actually push the uh, the the product in the end. If you have a great artist, no one's going to buy that game because of the great artist. Now he's saying, actually, you know, if you have a great artist, people are totally going to buy the game because they love that artist. Um, so I'm not even sure he knows what he thinks on this one, quite frankly. Yeah, I think with this, 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 I think he should have gone with this one. He should have just said, like, yeah, this can happen. This is another sort of minor exception where uh, uh, the success of a thing could be driven by an artist. But then again, people would be like, we've got some great examples of an artist almost defining the, the like, the, the big selling point of it. We went over this before. Was that this stream when we mentioned, like, directors and, uh, what was that the previous stream? Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure we mentioned it this time. Okay. Good old, uh, good old Scorsese. <laughs> Or Shyamalan, <laughs> we, we, you know, oh, can we sell talked a about product. that last time. Yeah, we talked about that last time mm. as well. I know the lines between yesterday and today are very blurry. Yes, we are. We are nearing. We got fifteen minutes of video left. Ooh, In the ad, yes, it's a symbiotic relationship. A big part of game sales, like Doom Eternal, for example, were driven because of Mick Gordon, the composer that worked on it. And why did people buy it because of Mick Gordon? Why did that happen? Marty O'Donnell is another one. He made the Halo music for many years. Well, that's actually it's... not a good example because Marty O'Donnell did make another game and even though he was doing it and he's a well-liked composer, that game didn't sell so well. Which game was like, that? Like, just because... Ju uh, I think it was called Gollum, not Lord of Ringgollum. <laughs> not oh, Lord no. of Ringgollum, but a different one. I think <laughs> it was imagine? like a VR game. And you, I don't believe... Yeah, I know, wouldn't it be funny? Is Halo <laughs> to Lord of Ring Gollum? Yeah. Is that Gollum as in Lord of the Rings Gollum? Like another form no, of no, Gollum? No, 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 like, no. you mean Lord of the no, Rings no, no, Gollum, no, right? No, 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 no. Well, like a Gollum, you know, G-O-L-E-M. Oh, oh Gollum. Gollum. Okay, yeah. Oh, is it? Or do you pronounce it? Yeah, Gollum? it's it's pronounced I, I thought, a bit differently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, so like the Gollums that Batman sits on, how do you pronounce them? I've, I think the I've heard gargoyles? it pronounced both ways. That's like, yeah, that's, I would say that's a gargoyle. I think I've heard right? it. A gargoyle. Oh, wait, fuck. God G -O -L -E. damn it. G-O-L-E. <laughs> it's destroying my brain. Brain oh. melty. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Gollum is spelled okay. with two L's. I oh, think Gollum is one L. Yeah, it is. I thought... Because yeah. I think it's oh, from an old Hebrew word. Oh my god. I'm learning something new every day. I thought, I thought you just, they were just called Gollums as well. Not go no. left. Man, I feel like I've talked for <laughs> so long and that's never come up. That's just <laughs> never I come up. Ever, I don't think it's ever come up. I always just thought, my God, my goodness. Uh, okay, well, anyway, <laughs> Marty O'Donnell, he was, uh, uh, he, he did the music for a game called Golem and I don't believe it sold super well, even though Marty O'Donnell might be, yeah, I'd say, I'd say he definitely fits into the category of one of the most well-known video game uh, composers. And, yeah. and that's, I guess, it's it's like, just because, because of course, I think, so it seems like his argument is the reason why people care about these artists and their opinions is because they made good stuff in the past, basically. Um, and then his words would be like, well, they made stuff that was of, uh, of value 
in the um of of like economic value in the uh in yeah. the past. Like that doesn't necessarily that doesn't necessarily yield anything in terms of like future results or like you know what I mean? It's it's uh I'm not sure why you'd be relying on this argument too much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just, I mean yeah. fine, right? The main thing to take away is that years, but there's plenty of films he's made that people haven't watched much of. Main thing to take away is Mario Donald did the music for Lord of Ring Golem, which is fucking crazy. No, he didn't. I, uh, no, I just can't believe Gollum, it. Man. It wasn't very notable compared to Halo, I would say, the music in Lord of Ring Golem, but you know what? Some artists have a rise, some artists have a fall. That's that. If Franny <laughs> says it, yeah. Consumer value, yes, because they love his work. So you're saying that people buy it because they perceive value? Is that what you're saying? I don't really understand what you mean with perceived value. Okay. Um, the perceived value is that people think that his art is good. And the reason why people think that his art is good is why his art is selling. That's why. Is that this is, this is a... I mean, again, at this point, it's just like, so the art being good is important compared to people believing it's good. And it's like, nope, believing it's good is all the bad. It's like... Even though they believe it's good because it's good, it's just like, oh fuck, I'm not well, gonna get like, it yeah, brought into this again. What are like, the reasons behind these beliefs? Those are important too. Of course. So decision... the original, the original argument he made was something along. I don't remember exactly. Um, or he was being accused <laughs> oh, of um, artists' opinions don't matter anymore, right? Uh, that was the original tweet. In regards idea. to the economic value of a of a piece, even though so, even with those specific environmental things, you could still uh, have Martin right. Scorsese say that everyone needs to see this new film that's coming out, and uh, that could make a huge okay. difference in its economic value. So in the, this case, this argument he's making actually doesn't matter, right? Because we're not talking about the artist's opinion; we're talking about you know the artist's uh, resume, essentially. Right, like this is actually uh, an or, actual like, ability non 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 argument here, because the, it has nothing to do with you know if we're talking um, Marty O'Donnell, his opinion isn't what's doing it here, right? Like he's not being like, oh, this game's a piece of shit, you shouldn't buy it, and it's affecting the market value. This is just what? a question of whether or not that musician well, that has past value. work. It's the past work that's informing it, not necessarily their opinion, like you said. Right. So, like, this is this argument so that he's not... having here is meaningless to the yeah, original like... context. Yeah, I get what you mean, actually. Though I, I will say something I was just thinking about is like it's worth remembering as well that like the the amount that you pay for like a game that you're gonna play is based on like anticipated value that it has to you. Not mm, necessarily. Yeah. You can buy a game and then be like, oh fuck, that sucks. I wish I didn't pay sixty bucks for this shit. You know? that, and it's like, yeah. well, then what is its value to you now? Is it worth yeah. the $60 that you paid for it? Is it? You know? Or do you believe that it's worth less than that? Or alternatively, is it worth tremendously more than the $60 that you paid for it? If you played it and you're like, holy shit, this game is amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, he seems to be acknowledging that Marty O'Donnell and Mick Gordon are talented composers and a, and a degree, an amount of the sales of each of their respective game franchises is due to their talent. But then, like, if you were to give the task of creating the Halo or Doom score to an AI, it wouldn't be able to do it. Like, well, it's, but if I, mean, it, I mean, I think he would probably acknowledge. Well, I mean, that's that, something. Even that though it contradicts his argument for, right? earlier, talking about people who will buy a game because an artist that worked on it really liked it. It's like, well, yeah. What happens if it's like, okay, I, I guess this. Well, neither of these examples are going to... Look, we're in hypothetical world, because I believe Mick Gordon isn't working on the next Doom or ever he working never on yeah, yeah. again. Forever. Yeah, he never will again. Obviously, Mario no, he had, a, on Halo or he had a bad experience on Eternal, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the point being that, you know, like, I don't know, Doom 3 comes out, and, and then you find out it's like, oh, well, Mick Gordon would have been working on it, but that he's not, because they decided that they were going to use an AI for this one. You know, like, that yeah. fact in and of itself, especially if you were particularly invested in the artist, you know, like, as he's pointing out in this example, you like them because of the value that that artist created. And it's like, well, fuck, I mean, fuck, what do you think's going to happen if next time around it's like, oh, we got an AI that's approximating their work, but that artist didn't work on it, and they didn't make anything from it. They're not going to make anything from the purchase of it. 
I mean, obviously that could have a tremendous influence on it. And he would have to acknowledge that that is the case because he's pointing to people buying it because they like what they did before and presumably want to support that creator. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. I mean, yeah. Hey, when, um, when, what was it, Secret Invasion came out and those uh, opening credits, you know, they, they were the AI generated ones and instantly set a lot of people against the show just from that alone. That was said like an hour ago, right? Gosh. Oh, and so I'm pointing out the AI voice for like Darth Vader, the AI voice for Luke. Oh, yeah. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what I was going to say is like, if you were on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and they say to you, what determines the economic value of a product? And they say, A, how the product was made. B, how good the product actually is. C, what people believe about the product. Or D, what the artists that created it say about the product. I'd be like, Oof. well, I guess I'm going with C. Like, if yes, I have to choose between those four. Believe. However, if you wanted, like, the, what's the correct answer, I'd be like, well, C, but what informs C? It's like, well, A, B, and D, and lots of other things, to be honest with you. Like, people's awareness of all kinds of different kinds of things will have massive effects on the economic value, because it, it will inform and change what people believe, what people perceive. Yeah. Yes. Right. And I feel like that's... That's it. Good summary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people don't well, often, people don't often just believe things in a complete and total vacuum, right? Normally, they get that information from something, right? And it's made by the customer. Yes, yeah, art's worth it. Yes, exactly. And I would argue that if the if the if there was a an AI tool that is equivalent in creating music or creating some form of gameplay that people viewed on the same level as Mick Gordon, people would buy the game for that reason as well. Oh, and okay. I can so use a- does believe that people would- that, um, that it might not have an impact if they found out it's like, yeah, but well, I mean, the, the I, guy Maybe he would concede it would, support. but the, um, yeah. the ultimately most people just want the great music. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I suppose what's interesting about that is that, um, and this this is like a good thing and a bad thing. You know, like if two great movies come out, but one of them is made by Scorsese, you'd be like, well, I know which one I'm choosing. That's what most people would probably say. Because it's like, yeah, well, he's attached to it. You're like, so I, I know, I feel more reassured as to what I'm getting, I guess, or that I get to celebrate him more. And I, I would like to do that because I have so much respect for him. That's, that's sort of, there's a couple of elements that come with knowing there's a human author that we talked about as well. Just, um, yeah more connected to it i suppose soft example for that with unreal 5. i feel like un people hear that a game is made in unreal 5 and they're like oh my god it's going to be so good and i think that people's behavior from that is an example for what my what i'm trying to say use hard example please. i i think that's the best example i can do not really even if people didn't buy it his music would still be good if a tree falls in the forest did it make a sound yes yes yeah uh, Sound waves exist independent of observers. See, this, well, so this, this is, where, uh, this is something like I wish he to... hadn't said because it, it really flies in the face of everything else he just said. Why wasn't his yeah, answer here? Yeah. yeah, personal value, artistic value, that's different than the market value. And I'd be like, I understand that. But instead, yes. he said, "Does, a, does a, if people aren't buying it, can it really considered be considered good? And it's like, of course. Absolutely. Like, yeah. And I think Asmongold really... would say yes to that. We would have how... to know that this is the case. There's got to yeah. be one game or one movie or one show that he likes that wasn't successful. Well, what about, I mean, just, we have a term for it. We have hidden gems. Like barely mm, yeah. a lot of, like a, a really great game or song or band or whatever that not a lot of people know about. It Things gets don't get better the more reason. people yeah. discover it. Yeah, well, it um... feels like he's kind of glomming onto that to make it, uh, trying to make his argument more sound by not agreeing to I, I i just i think this is a misstep because i i feel like i understood his argument right before he said this and i i feel like i knew what yes. his response should have been oh, to yeah, this yeah. now now it's like uh oh i feel like we're back in the murky yeah i'm confused again zone where i don't understand um, what's going on we talked about it before but blade runner and the thing right it's like well i guess they're not good yeah. and it's like no they no they, they're really good it's just the like and wrong place wrong time was, you know they were good before they got more acclaim yeah it's not like the acclaim that it gets is the that yeah that's 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 silly and that's the problem with this answer is that if he's understanding this person's use of the word good to mean economically successful then he should have read the sentence as if people didn't 
make it economically successful, it would still, uh, they didn't do that, then it would still be economically successful. And he'd say, oh, that doesn't make sense if we're talking about mm -hmm. market value. But instead, he said, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? That's an odd one. You go to, a, you know, a, a, a fucking Christian uh, revival and you start playing Mick Gordon's Doom soundtrack? <gasps> Bro, you're going to have some holy water thrown on you. That doesn't have anything to do with anything. Yeah, I have no it's idea. Not, that's yeah. not in, totally it's not in the, Yeah, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit the taste of that, you know, that, that venue. They would do the same thing if you went to a symphony and you started playing that. That's not really what people are there for. Yeah, that was a good point. Yeah, like, you're about to get an exorcism. What are you doing? Imagine you want to be a sculptor. So you go to a successful sculptor's house and you make molds of all their sculptures without their permission. Then you use those molds to make minor modifications to them and then create new art pieces. This is literally what AI software is. Well, isn't this what people would do? Is they would see sculptures and then they would make theirs like the ones that they saw? That f still feels significantly different than making a mold of someone's sculpture and then cr recreating the sculpture with that mold, uh, as opposed to looking at someone's sculpture and trying to recreate it. From, yeah, like, in the way that I recreate it is it's fully my own from the ground up the only yeah i just it's just the inspiration is what ties them together well, so not like a literal copy i think we may have talked about it but if you're a sculptor and you're like teaching someone and they're gradually getting better and better and then they show you their final ultimate piece and you're like fucking hell you've done it that's incredible i'm so proud of you versus well i did it but it was it was from your mold they'd be like oh <laughs> Um, I look familiar. Yeah, you'd be like, well, maybe, maybe we can try and get you there with you <laughs> instead of the mold, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what people do. A warehouse full of molds of other people's work created without their permission. I don't think that somebody has full permission on how something is consumed once they release it to the public. Once you release <laughs> your well, they have expression into the public... <laughs> And they can, well, they can also change people's perception of it with their commentary. This happens all the time. Um, right, but that, yeah, that's the yeah. thing, is he's talking about art versus uh, art. Well, if he's talking artists. about death of the author, I agree with him. Right, yeah, exactly. But but mm. he's not talking, or rather, that's not the subject. He's talking about that, but but the subject is, you know, yeah. fair use as an argument, which is not the same thing at all. Yeah, this is talking part about... part of that ownership... Is no longer yours. I almost feel like he's talking about spiritual ownership, like the you've now left uh, it into the world, and so you can't control it. Like how, like sort of like fandoms, in a sense, kind of are like communities can take. They sort of take some well, level of ownership <laughs> over the thing that they're fans of. Look at um, not in an official sense, but in like a spiritual sense. You, you know how uh, uh, George releases Star Wars, and it has. Han shooting Greedo, and then he's like, no, 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 no. After it's released, he's like, no, this, this is what I meant. It's like too late, George. <laughs> it's it's beyond your yeah. control now. I know you're George, <laughs> but that just means we're extra disappointed. You no longer have full autonomy and control of how people will respond to that. Everybody's mad at long? me. Be That's mm -hmm. interesting. The bot, it, the bot says your message is too long, so it's been like deleted. For what now? You know. I I, his, I, his bot. I guess the bot, if, if the bot. Oh, right. Okay. If the, your message is too long, it automatically deletes it. I mean, that can make some sense. It's probably one of the basic sort of uh, spam protection things. I suppose so. Because I express myself in a certain way, and then those people are talking about it. That's what happens whenever you express and you put something out into the public. Yeah, art does not store the people's work, stable diffusion. It can't even contain uh, everyone's data in pure form. Sure. Uh, then you use those models to make minor modifications. Okay, uh, if a company trains a model from scratch with no base layer like stable diffusion and they have consent from the contributors, there would not be an uproar. This is why people are mad. The artists are being molded and copied without consent or compensation. Okay, I don't find it to be a moral difference whenever an AI tool does it than whenever a person copies it or traces it. I don't view that to be a tremendous moral difference. You said it, but don't think of it as a... copying and tracing is different than just taking... That's different than taking inspiration from a thing.
I also want to highlight, he said, I don't see a moral difference. And then he said, I don't see a tremendous moral difference. Those two are very different positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a word that is if I was there, I'd be like, yeah, the term tremendous. It's just like, do you think there's a difference fundamentally? Do you think they're the same? Like, I would just ask that of him. Can you explain to me? Pricing is like, you know, (laughs) like it's, I mean, yeah, like I'm not sure why he's comparing it to pricing compared yeah, that's to an odd one. it seems like the one is often the the idea of like inspiration of taking inspiration from different art styles or different techniques compared to like tracing i don't think that's the one that you would want to go with for this uh for this point i i can Why? kind of see the the tracing thing because like the digital equivalent of that is sort of like the uh, sort of uh, replicating the distribution of pixels based on I, I'm seriously, the, there's a scale and it's so hard to pick the line because I, I get what you're saying completely. There's so much, the level of artistry seems to be like where everyone's trying to decide. Like I I define this as the place where the last of artistry exists any further than this and you've gone into goopy non-artist land. It's, right. uh, it's really difficult though to figure it out um, definitively. I you think that it is. Don't ask questions and consume product, then get excited for next product. This is what people are criticizing because they're saying that I am advocating for this behavior. I am not advocating for this behavior. I am acknowledging that it is the norm. This is the Uh, norm. Those are different. uh, Those are different. Those are different things, mate. I'm trying to think of... The norm is don't ask questions, just consume product, and then get excited for next product. Probably in regards maybe, to maybe he's saying, more right than he realizes because like my issue is that he almost discourages people from you know aggressively highlighting the issues they take with a thing whether or not it'll make a difference to the consumption of a thing. It's like yeah, but I think we should encourage that though, even if it makes no difference, because it's the right thing to do. I would you are never how, like Asmund Gold is observing trends. Like people will buy this dumb thing whatever it is like the nerd crew like the satirical show that they do is just making a sort of similar observation like people will go in droves to see the new michael bay movie that's like dog shit you know and it's just like oh that did really well in the box office let's make another one like on the part of the studios you know and then the cycle just continues like on that level i can i kind of get it to get people to care about why a game is the way that it is. This is not people's fight. They don't care about that. These are- Yeah, I disagree with that. Like the- Plenty of people do. Plenty, you don't even know how many people will care about whatever issue you're about to highlight is. You actually, you you can't really know. And I just don't like the discouraging element of it. Imagine you found out like- That you, that they stole some stuff. And then you're like, eh, I guess no one will care. It's like, eh, make people aware of it. It's all right. You've got a big voice. You have the potential to change a lot of minds. And if you change a lot of minds, that's going to have effects on the market. So I feel like of all the people who should have this mindset, you should be among the least of them. Someone said you can from previous data, lol. Yeah, we can prove that people will care because we've had several instances of pro- products or entire channels being absolutely obliterated by individual voices highlighting ethical issues. What do you mean by that? Like, yeah, of course, we we would encourage people to do it more. But even if we had full data to tell us that you make zero impact, why would we encourage people to just give up then? It's like, no, oh, keep going. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would also say that you can't know when we have new issues. Like, this is relatively new. As much as for an internet person, this has been everywhere for some m- months and years, this is still new to a lot of people who've never even heard of, like, the concept. Mm-hmm. So you never know what effect it'll have. And, and we'll get new issues all the time. That's just how, especially with technology, fucking racing forward. Average people with extremely complex lives who have a finite amount of energy to devote to different things. I and the big that. surprise, they're not going to be devoting it to getting mad about a fucking video game. It might not be about getting mad as much as they go... Say, for example, Critical Drinker makes... We, we talked about this with the uh, back with the YMS stuff. Like, a lot of people will go to Trick or Drinker because they don't have time to properly, like, assess whether or not a film is worth their time based on actors, writers, and companies and stuff. So they, they work on his recommendations. Drinker could also be like, stay away from this and go for this. 
uh, trust me, the, the ethical background. I, I, like, uh, I, I've got a video explaining it if you want to know the bite size version. But ultimately, like, you don't have the time to be too concerned about this, but I can give you a vague direction on you want to avoid that and go more so for this. And they can be like, well, I trust Drinker, so I will. Sure. Because that, that's what he dedicates his time to, right? He's invested in this. He yeah. watches all these movies, and like you can trust his opinion after watching so many of his videos. And it's like, you know what? If he says this is good, I'll, I'll go see it, and I'll probably like it. Right? Game being st stealing pictures, right? Because like I think that we can all agree, we can all agree that caring about uh, kids working in cobalt mines or lithium mines is like a million times worse than somebody stealing a picture. Like, this is, like, a infinitely worse. But nobody cares about the lithium bad. mines, and so I'm not going to hear about the pictures. That's... I still, like, I, I would I, still be like, we should probably still be made aware of that, though. The lithium mine stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would I never even discourage yeah, that. And I don't know enough about that industry to know what changes have happened over the last decade or whatever. Yeah. Like, I, as far as I know, I'm operating just under the idea that it has happened in the past. I assume it still happens, but I don't know if, like... If people become more aware of it, the industry industry shrinks, or maybe it changes, or like I don't know anything about it. But even then, this is just oh, they're starving kids in Africa, and it's like yeah, there are that's bad too. But this can also be bad. I guess he's trying know? the the comparison he's making is for the sake of like they don't care about that, so obviously they won't care about this. It's like they might. I don't know. The proximity issue comes up again, but also. Who cares if they care, if they care, the if they care about neither about. of them? I still think we should advocate for the knowledge of these things happening. Mm. Well, I guess it's his point, like, oh, look at them getting worked up over this thing that isn't as big an, an issue as this other thing in the world that is a bigger issue. Is that his point? Part of the I issue there, so. though, is again, like, that might be an individual hypocrisy, or there might be a reason for that. They might be like, I do have a set of pages and tweets about that issue. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, well... Maybe you do. <laughs> like, but I, yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like way too many assumptions are being made. That's the way I feel about it. So, yes, of course, people. Do, who has time to ask questions about prod, every product that they consume? Where does he Not think every that product, no. And I don't even think um, it needs to be that but, complex. It just. Um, no. But, but there's nothing wrong something. with people being made aware of that because I could be made aware of it and go, eh. Yeah. You know, that yeah, could, that, that could well. happen. And then on other things, on other products, they go, oh, no, I do care about that one. I mean, that's just normal mm -hmm. that you're going to have differing levels of interest depending on what it is. A shirt was made. I mean, isn't this, like, how would you guys rate the, this compared to, like, what happened to cigarettes? Like, the proliferation of how just, just how fucking bad they are would have made a serious difference to people's enjoyment of them, right? I mean, I mean, surely yeah. it did. Like, one of the reasons why I don't want to smoke is I don't want to get die. Like, die. any of the illness that are associated with smoking. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The The knowledge of it has definitely... Um, and we've seen it, right? We've seen over time yeah. going from everybody smoking everywhere all the time to, oh, this is actually really bad for you, so you can't smoke inside, you shouldn't smoke in your car, you know, you, you shouldn't blow smoke into a baby's face yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, that has a vastly reduced presence in society. Yeah, and now smoking is a minority, and maybe even like a super minority. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm I'm still a deep glad with the smart, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still I, well, and and a lot of them have transferred now over to um, vaping, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it looks like in 2021, 11.5% of U.S. adults currently smoked cigarettes. How That's... often? Though? So. I, I'm I'm not sure just based on the blur, but it says mm. uh, in 2023 of those youth who ever tried e-cigarettes, uh, approximately half reported currently using cigarettes, indicating that many youths who try e-cigarettes remain e-cigarettes users. Ah, hmm. Uh, so half of the people, so I guess approximately half of the youth who tried e-cigarettes are currently using them. Okay, so I guess if you gotta, you gotta have. It's about half the people who tried them kept using them, or at least used them when the survey was done in 2023. Mm. And then, of course, because okay. it's all I just said, and yeah, we traded that out for everyone being fat or whatever. It's like, well, to take it seriously, it's like that is an epidemic, right? Like the like heart disease related things of obesity is like mm -hmm. a huge problem in the West, and it's like, yeah, that a lot of people have said that is an education problem, but at the same time, it's like a lot of things that would come into it. Um, but you know, the the highlight being people 
are aware that it's killing them and they're still doing it. But that doesn't mean we give up or we can't change it. Well, yeah, we can I mean, it change would, it. it. Surely, yeah, surely they are better off for knowing that than worse off for knowing exactly, that it's, yeah. it's bad. And so, like, what I guess I'm saying is that that's a way more serious exchange of cost and we can make a difference of it still. But, like, yes. why... I just feel, like, encouraged about all of this. It's like, we should, we should make people more aware as best we can with all of these different sectors. I'm sure all of these things were made ethically as well, right? Come on, what is this? Like, what, why are we why are we living in this world of these people that think that because they have a lot of free time to fixate on things on the internet, that normal people that have average lives are somehow inferior because they do something else with their time instead of that? It's such a... I don't... Uh... I'm not, I'm not, I didn't like get that at all. Not like they're inferior, but they yeah. they could benefit from the knowledge. I, I would say that about myself if I didn't have it. Yeah. Ridiculous thing and so patronizing and obnoxious. You are not a shitty person if you don't want to thoroughly investigate and draw some draw the line, the moral line, at the exact same place that some random other idiot thinks that you should. Was this ever the argument that you need yeah. to be so incredibly invested in the research that you are an expert? Was that ever the argument here? Well, and this person's been personally offended. You can tell. We, we, we went over this, I think, in the beginning montage. It's like they're clearly very angry. They, they believe what the Asmongold is saying is not only a reflection of reality, but encouraging of the reality that who gives a fuck about artists? Give us what we want. That sort mm -hmm. of thing. That's, and I'm not saying anyone's saying that. I'm saying that that's how they felt, and that's why they're angry. And that's probably why a lot of people are angry. Should draw it at. Like, I'm sorry, but I just really... I, I don't see... <laughs> I, I don't see these people having any, any moral authority. They don't. You live in reality. Yeah, exactly. What they mean is you're a shitty person to me. Yeah, no, that's totally fine, and they can have an opinion all they want. It's a bit disingenuous to overrepresent how much of a choice people have in their day-to-day -day lives. Like, you don't support slavery? I guess you can't use a mobile phone or live in this society. I completely disagree with this point of view. These are people who cannot even uphold these standards for their own level of, uh... for their own entertainment. And I'm gonna give you an example. Read this person's, uh, thing. Black multimedia artist, voice actor, uh, he, they, and he, this is clearly a person who cares about LGBT issues and uh, Black Lives Matter and all uh, that. It's not clear. How, but... what do you think that their opinion on Elon Musk is? I bet they think he's a, a terrible fucking person. A lot of people think Elon Musk is transphobic. A lot of people think he's an asshole. So this person is on a platform building the brand and continuing to make billions of dollars for a person who I think that they would assume is actively at war against certain identities that they either, uh, you know, sympathize with or are part of. So whenever this person can't even stop their own entertainment and, you know, like you can't even avoid using a social media platform. No, I'm not going to respect your opinion on telling me what video games to play. So, that is an interesting assumption about a lot of things to do with this person and the way that they engage with this platform. And if he's completely correct about all of that, I agree with him. That is hypocritical and they should be a little bit ashamed of how they try and project a particular image but simultaneously don't really believe in it. However, if we are speculating on who they could be, wouldn't you include the potential for this person to say that they believe that their contribution to the success of this platform is outweighed by how much they use the platform and its, you know, availability to promote that the fact that it's a, a terrible platform. Yeah, like, just it, the it, same way that we hear on stream, like we if we bought if we bought tickets to go see, you know, the Marvels, but then we went onto YouTube and we convinced everyone and told everyone about how terrible it was, then obviously it would outweigh the you know, the results of that. So, yeah, you, you can engage with a platform that you think is, you know, not great, or you can engage in something to ultimately, you know, produce a better outcome overall. Yeah, sure. Well, and, and wh why I feel like I, that this should be mentioned in his analysis is he is responding to them. He is listening to them on this platform. He wouldn't be if they're on a different one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I There's mean, also if assume you... that they don't like Elon Musk, I guess, as part of the hypothetical. Yeah, but that, again, they, I'm sure they would but, argue that's I mean, outweighed. Assuming, 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, in this case, assuming that that is the case, you could make that argument that, sure, my presence on the platform outweighs the good that I'm doing for the platform. And if you were super, like, super, super into avoiding using products when it came to um, unethical behavior to produce them, uh, if you rule out, you know, being able to use phones and laptops, then you've essentially, you, you've severely diminished your ability to get your word out against them. And if everyone had the same standard, then all of the people who were against, you know, lithium mining or whatever, you wouldn't see them on the internet. You, they wouldn't be making posts or videos on YouTube or anything like that because yeah, they can't does... use the thing that it would take to spread the word. It feels like that's just sort of that yet you participate in society curious thing. A little bit, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. I get that. I just um I'm just saying we we we're, we're strictly hypothetical like like theorizing about what this person may or may not believe. Asmongold's doing it too. I find what his conclusion there was interesting and valid. It's just that there's a couple of other options that can explain this as well. Yeah. So much hypocrisy environmentalists who wear Patagonia jackets or buy EVs with batteries made in China. Yes, and, and, and this is really the truth, right? And so I understand what you're saying. You're saying that somebody needs a cell phone in order to exist in society. My argument would be that if there were cell phones that were made completely ethically and they were worth, they cost twice as much money, nobody would buy them. I don't think that this person would save up their money and buy the uh, you know, ethically sourced cell phone. I think that they would buy the cheap one, just some like they all would. would. Yeah, um, some, people. some people absolutely. Well, rem remember, remember, when he says everyone, he doesn't mean that. That's right. I'm sorry, I made oh, that yeah, mistake. Oh yeah, but he didn't say ever. Wait, did he say everybody in this sentence? No. He, he said, said nobody, nobody would. Buy them. Oh, nobody, right? Yeah. So oh, when he says yeah, nobody, yeah. He doesn't mean nobody. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. They have because they don't want to spend the extra money because it's always very easy to criticize and. Uh, you know, shit on people for doing something because they, because like, because they want to, but whenever you are held to the same standard, somehow it's always different. No, I think a lot of the times this depends on like the, the sacrifice that you would have to make. It is a huge sacrifice to forego having laptops, phones and everything like that, especially if you want to spread a message, but it is not really much of a sacrifice to not play a particular video game or maybe don't buy a shoe brand or things of that nature right so if someone who would have uh, would have had to make a very big sacrifice is criticizing someone who really didn't have to make a big sacrifice at all or in fact a, a very small or even minuscule one then i mean it might technically be hypocrisy on a certain level but I wouldn't consider it, you know, hypocrisy. I think there's a meaningful distinction between Well, I those. feel like people have a thing for this, right? When they pop a penny in a thing and they go like, oh, you know, just, I just want to do, do a little something, you know, help, help out where I can, that sort of thing. Like, a, it's the equivalent of that, where you're just like, people want to make a difference, and yeah, you can point out almost cynically, it's like, yeah, but you're not willing for it to cost you much, are you? You're like, okay, but <laughs> like, I still want to just make a difference where I can in places that matter to me. And a lot of it's built on their knowledge of the, the option, you know? The knowledge of what what thing is wrong. Oh, it's not. It, it it's really not. These are people who. As I said, you, you can't, you're agreeing with them, just wording it better. I've I've we I've already said a lot of it is that I I do agree with him on a lot. Fair amount. I um I his viral clips and a lot of the harsher ways he he words things, which sometimes he's admitted has some intention behind it, have been unwise. I believe whose lives do not revolve around the ethics of AI in the same way this person's life doesn't revolve around the ethics of Elon Musk. We all pick and choose our battles. We don't care about these things. Many people don't. And there are all things that we participate in that we're hypocritical about. And the problem isn't that people are being hypocritical. It's that people want other people to carry their flag whenever they won't do it themselves. They won't even carry their own flag. They want you to pick up their flag and run with it whenever they won't even do it themselves. And I'm not talking about moving out and being like the uni- I mean, he's describing essentially virtue signaling, and I agree. That's, that's shitty when people yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. A bomber and living outside of electricity. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just not consuming entertainment content that you find to be harmful. Like how much do you want to how much do you want to bet that this person probably thinks Amazon is bad? And how much do you want to bet that this person probably has Amazon Prime? I'm sick of this. This is outrageous. No. <laughs> th th this Again, is Again, yeah, there's a lot of people that do that and feel that. So yeah.
It's crazy. Like, I'm not talking about, you know, somebody, you know, not being able to, oh, well, you know, you think the U.S. is bad, go move somewhere else. I'm not talking about moving countries. I'm talking about the way that you consume entertainment. The way you consume entertainment. People, these people cannot even regulate the way that they consume entertainment, but they expect you to, and they're going to tell you that you're a bad person whenever you don't. They can't, uh, they're building, you're building a straw man out of that guy? You're right. You're right. I could be totally wrong. He could love Elon Musk. And he could uh, think Amazon is the greatest country of all time. I was going to say, I'll even be completely fair to him. He's probably right about what they believe. Yeah, but probably. at the same time, you can acknowledge you're not going on fact. You're going on assumption. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. I could be wrong. But I don't think I am. I, I, I want to reiterate my original point, And then we're going to move on. Uh, I am completely right. <laughs> and the reality is that I will prove myself right every single day <laughs> forever. And these people will keep coping and, you know, like having their little uh, support groups on Twitter because reality is mean. I didn't make it this way. They didn't make it this way. It is this way. It's not my fault. I'm not telling you that it's good. In some ways it is, in other ways it's not. Getting mad at me for saying something that's obviously true is provably true, and it will be continue to provably be true. This isn't going to do anything. I'm not in the business of talking about how the world should be. And if I am, there are a lot of other things that should change, which number one, I don't, you, you could be in that business if you wanted to, because you could just you could just start talking about how you think the world should be. Um, it's your choice to not be, I guess, as a part of that. So, But you could if you oh, want to. And, and for the record, he said a bunch of things that I completely agree with, a bunch of things I completely disagree with, a bunch of things that are contradictory to some of the things he said before, a bunch of half-thought-out positions, yeah. which I think is completely fair, but it's just funny to see that level of conviction after all that. Like, I am fucking right. You're like, yeah, oh, like, all right. Uh, okay, which part <laughs> of you... <laughs> His yeah, no, I mean, not only is his argument a little bit too broad, I feel, and he's contradicted himself one one too many times where making claims like, I'm right, everyone else is wrong, and like, whatever, <laughs> everybody's just coping yeah, and mulling look, if right, you disagree not, with me. Like, that's a little too it. much. <laughs> I, I will say, look, all right, this isn't like when XQC decided to go into the corner of the room <laughs> and start crawling around on the ground. Dude, that would, I'm sorry, I, that'll live in my mind forever. Yeah, that that's wild. Like, How could anyone that forget? That was so great. Getting on the ground and crawling Legendary. around like a worm to prove how not mad you are. <laughs> <laughs> if Asman, oh, if Asman Gold's, I guess, thing that he's defending is the whole, the, the, opinion of, the opinions of artists don't matter because consumers buy things. Oh, I mean, like, that's... That, that I, I still think that's wrong. Why would you say that's his position after everything we've talked about? I mean, I think if he's referring to the original statement that he said. The clip that got taken around the, the internet? Because the, the one where he said artists' opinions don't matter, which a lot of people interpreted as him simply saying as, you know, in isolation, which I... Like I said, I, I feel like most people should with any basic understanding of human beings, assume that's not going to be his position. And that you noted immediately how it was cut in a weird way. You couldn't even know mm. what was being talked about. Like I said, I, I have well, nothing but uh, again, sympathy for him on that one. I would always prefer to see what somebody... Like, seeing him explain his position over the course of some amount of time is preferable to just, like, whatever this thing was that was clipped out that was a minute long that is devoid of the context before and after. Yeah, this always is gonna definitely be more... more now I understand here. his position more than at the beginning where I had no clue about any of it. Well, what's wacky is yeah. to, that we've covered a video here that this is probably the most mixed video we've come across, in, at least in a long time. Very mixed, yeah. I mean, compared to yesterday's video, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I, I mostly agree with, I think, what he's trying to say, right? He's just a, a horrific communicator. <laughs> Um, sometimes he is which maybe that means he he's overall but you know what i mean like because some of the things he says you're just like yeah well, he's, easy agree yeah he's i think he's articulate but he's not consistent at, le at least not in this right video. He's, he seems to be bouncing back and forth and maybe it's just because of the format of him responding to random tweets and talking to his own chat so he's just you know jumping from subject to subject to subject back and forth 
but uh, it, it is a little hard to sort of see the consistency in his argument uh, across it, um, especially when you're using multiple, you know, meanings of the word value and, and so on. Yeah, value and right. uh, matter. Those two words that came up a lot, and they, they, we need to know better contexts almost every time if you're going to be using those words. Mm -hmm. But yeah. some of it got crossed later on when, like that person said about the, you know, the personal uh, n nostalgic or whatever value, artistic value, uh, economic values. It's like, yeah, it can get complicated. Social yeah. media, which would have reduced about half of these posts in the first place. These values don't mean anything to anybody outside of a perpetually and terminally online group of of mostly freaks. I mean, let's be honest. There's a lot of furries here, okay? Personal attacks for people don't have an anti-argument. Oh, yeah. And also, by the way, um, there's a lot of people that were making fun of uh, my room. Uh, the fact that I had a dead rat for an alarm clock. What? Uh... I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, I, I need some rat. context on that know, one. I, don't know if I, um, <laughs> I didn't catch that even. What was that? Rats I'll, 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 I'll play <laughs> again. An alarm clock powered oh, yeah. by a rat's also, corpse? By the way, um, there's a lot of people that were making fun of uh, my room. Uh, the fact that I had a dead rat for an alarm clock. <laughs> I assume it's an alarm um, clock, like a novel alarm clock shaped like a rat I, that like rat rags. Is, is it? Is that sort of like how you power a clock with well, a potato? I, you can just plug it into a rat's corpse. I There's have something yeah, some the, chemical. Such bad that, like... news for all of you. Oh no! It's Not so. Really, so when he said that, I was like, "Fuck yeah, you're correct. Nobody should be saying you're wrong on this subject because you have a dirty room or because you have a dead rat for an alarm." Wait, what? And I was like, what? Yeah. what? And so I googled it, and and I have fetched oh, no. the context so that we could understand what he's talking about, because oh, that I thought the exact same this, thing. I this... thought he, he had a novelty alarm clock that was like a porcelain thing that's a dead rat, and that people made fun of him for that or something. I was like, I wouldn't care about that. Right. Yeah. This like brings back up yeah. and all of the stuff the way... where, where before we came onto the screen, you were like, you gotta be ready for this. This was not, as you can tell from the portion of this video, I was like, yeah, this has all been chill. We can just check out the arguments and respond. And then he said that, and I was like, what are you talking about? I had, I've never heard about this before. And a lot of people have even assumed it's like he's just being hyperbolic. It's like, okay. Wait. Um, hey, does he explain the alarm clock? I I'm, think just, we're I'm just gonna, gonna, I'm just gonna let it play, or... John. We're just gonna let okay, it play. Okay, okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Told that we're making fun of uh, my room. Uh, the fact that I had a dead rat for an alarm clock, the fact that I uh, wiped blood on the walls, uh, the fact that most what? of my what? teeth have fallen out, and I would just like to remind you that that person has a better grip on reality than you do. Uh, there's been like a dead rat in my house for like the past fucking like three days, and I can't find where he is because uh, you can smell the fucker, but you don't know where he is. And the thing is, what's so annoying about that is the fact that, like, you have a dead rat in the house, and you don't have a dead rat in the house, and you don't know where he is. Who's a dead rat? As an old. As an old. Why is it skipping? Fuck. <laughs> it's, it's not it's skipping, not for, skipping me. for It us, did on yeah. our end, the, the fucking uh, subnode chat that's going okay. on. About that is the fact that, like, you have a dead rat in the house, and you don't know where he is. And you can actually use a dead rat as an alarm clock because whenever the sun comes out the rat will begin to smell bad and the smell oh will God. wake you back up from your sleep get the dead rat out i don't need to anymore it doesn't smell bad uh, it, it would w the thing is i used to use a dead rat as an alarm clock actually uh for He's my so proud because basically what happened was Whenever the sun would come up, it would start cooking the corpse of the rat, and then it would start smelling again, and then the smell would wake me up. So I would use the rat effectively as an alarm clock, and as soon as I, uh, as soon as it, you know, it got hot enough, it would wake me up, and then I would know, oh shit, it's time to stream. That that person <laughs> has a better grip on reality than you do. Have you guys ever done that before? Okay. I'm not even going to ask about the blood wall. I don't even know if I even want to know.
So um. So th- this is yeah, a meme. This is not real. That's so funny this to is me. A, this is this is a meme, right? Don't, you know what? Don't let the big part dissuade you from. Man, I've got a dead rat somewhere in my house that's making but it smell. But you can smell. like close all your doors, and then you could check and see which room smells. It's not just that; it's that someone then asked him, like, "Oh, any luck with a dead rat?" He said, it "Doesn't matter anymore because it stops smelling." Oh yeah, it doesn't God. matter. It's oh fine. You just leave it. Just leave it there. The the desiccated. Oh, sorry, this rat, is this is, is not a meme. I don't think it's a meme. I don't think this, he's this joking. I th- is, he seems I serious real. about that. If, How do you allow, I'm trying to be as like, fair and understanding as I mean, possible. It's, like, it's, it's fucking funny, but I don't <laughs> think he's joking. How do you joking, live like yeah. that? Well, I, surely there's like health concerns. <laughs> like, with, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, like that's not good. Like rotting corpses around you are not good. The fumes <laughs> and the gases and just like you're inviting other things... Because of that, like bugs and roaches and ugh, like, I mean, and plus, isn't there like, do, doesn't it ever kick in that sense of, like, like I don't know, pride or not even pride, like self respect? Well, so a lot of people are saying he's a hoarder. It's like I thought hoarders collect things that aren't dead animals. I don't know. If a thing crawls in their collection and dies, well, it's theirs now. I mean, t- to be fair, I think like he would see the humor in it. Like, if you were to like you know, point it out. But that like he he also like he can't find the rat. Like I'm sure like he wants to get rid of the smell. If, I don't think he looked very hard. <laughs> because <laughs> imagine the work uh, it would take to move all that shit yeah, around to find where there. the rat is. People say yeah. there's loads more lore about him and like his his stuff that he gets up to. One of the things I had read is that he know. he'll apparently like he doesn't care about eating things that are like well over ex- expi- expiry date. Like um and that some of his fans have concerns he's going to accidentally kill himself at some point because he'll eat, you know, something that's well too far. He said his far. teeth fell out or whatever. Well, that's going to potentially happen, I guess, if you don't... Can that happen from eating expired things, or would that just be, like, not brushing them? I don't know, it's probably it a, could a, be a all whole sorts bunch of... of I, yeah, I don't know, you've seen the could, next to his could desk, be either he has, one, like, I think. lots of soda, right? He, he has yeah. hundreds of, of things of soda, so he clearly also, just drinks a lot of it. I know nothing about the blood wall, and several people have said, don't look into the blood wall. So I'm not, I don't, I don't I'm not know gonna look into it, wall. don't worry. I, don't I will take you, I'll take you. I don't know what word. the fuck that's about. Like, why wouldn't you just have some paper towel on standby? Like, some like you do that once, shit. maybe, like, just to, like, get rid of the excess if you're bleeding a lot. But then you'd wipe the wall off, surely, like, clean it up. Like, you don't just leave it there. But why would he even, like, this is what I mean, I was so confused at the end where he was just like, people have been bringing up my blood wall and (laughs) my dead rat, and I was like, what the fuck, what what even, what what does this have to do with, and the funny part is, it's like, this has nothing to do with his argumentation, but now I'm just curious about the dead rat alarm clock, which, like I said, I thought was gonna be porcelain, with a little tongue hanging out or something. Yeah, it's like, it's a, like, it's a funny little mouse with X's for eyes that's in a fake mouse trap, and you... Like, oh, you hit it, and it goes squeak, squeak, or whatever, or something. No, no. no. I thought it was going to be using the chemical composition of a real rat corpse to somehow power an alarm clock like a potato would. Like a little bit of a mad scientist. Yeah. But... (laughs) (laughs) I just, you know what, as well, he's like, yeah, you could use it as a alarm clock. He's like, is that even that effective? Like <laughs> I feel like that would be fairly inconsistent depending on like what the weather is and the temperature that you keep your room. And yeah. do you keep them on the windowsill or do you maybe do you have like a micro magnifying glass that's yeah, aimed at the rat? Because if it's not directly in the sun, it's not gonna warm up that much. It'll just really it'll probably just it'll just take the temperature of the room if it's not in the sunlight. Blech. So I'm surely that stunned. would narrow it down, right? I, like <sighs> I don't even want to think about it. Well, I'm and, stunned. And apparently there's there's a lot more of the like you can see house tours from other people that the this is just apparently just it's just normal. And it's like, okay. As in like it's it's not some crazy thing to Asmund Gold fans. And it's crazy because I've been aware of him for a long time. I never knew about any of the this. Uh but it's not it, there's another thing. If I didn't want people to know that or make fun of me for it, I wouldn't have said it. Look at him, guys. Look at him. I think they're a little top, small ones. This is, and there's music in the background. No! What is that? Remember is how I mentioned, that... like... No, no way! No! I was surprised none of you wanted to, like, poke into why I was so weird about asking no. about... 
whether well, you I was... thought you meant that was the rat thing. I like the surprise of it. I wanted I to be surprised. No, 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 that. no, no, no. I'm saying the about oh, halfway okay. through the stream, I said, hypothetically, if you had some bread that you spotted some maggots in, could you imagine oh, anyone? Could could you imagine no. anyone choosing oh, to eat no. that after noticing that? Is that what's on that? This, this, this is how it's linked, and that's what he says in the clip. He's like, look, you can see them. Uh, you Obviously, it's not very high def, so you can't really make it out. What? See? <laughs> right there? I don't know if I should eat those or not. I kind of feel like... That that person has a better grip on reality than you do. Oh. <laughs> but oh. I do... That's actually gross. I, oh I, this is really what I when I was like, what, what, like, what is the context for the thing? Like, loads of people commented and was like, oh yeah, this isn't as bad as eating the maggots. So it's just like, why, <laughs> why? Oh my god! I just need to like make sure everyone understands. Don't do any of these things. There's, there's, Please don't. Yeah, that's awful. Do not very do bad this. for you. Um, and I understand, I like what... people who are fans of his stuff. No wonder they want him to stop doing stuff like that. Cause it's like this could oh, kill you. Kill him. Get some yeah, I mean, disease I mean, disease or infection or something. Gross is one thing; unhealthy is another. Like you don't yeah, want to I, do unhealthy I, things. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. I There's not much yeah. to say talk about it. You I'm actually trying. try to genuinely put on a uh, an attempt to listen to other people's perspectives and point of views, points of view, and like. That's that is something I, I generally try to do. Now, is it something that I always do? No, I do not always do this, but it is something that I generally try to do. Two plus hours explaining yourself, but if you express how you feel in a painting, song suddenly you wouldn't matter. This is uh, Bob Viz, who's <laughs> got a couple of viral tweets going after him. I mean, this is the, the two hours is him responding to arguments, you know, so I, it's not like he's done a two hour essay about why, how right he is. And then secondly, um, yep. Yep. The wouldn't matter part again. It's it's been misunderstood as being like a yeah, general catch-all, as opposed no. to economically speaking, mm -hmm. which has been the whole problem, pretty much. I think. Remember Flappy Bird, hugely popular game. Th these are the tweets that came out after the video. People still copy its gameplay today. Remember how the creator of Flappy Bird stopped selling it for a while because he felt it was too addictive. It's almost like that was proof that an artist's feelings could directly impact consumers. Yeah, and I think this is something that I'd like yeah. Asmongold to talk about, is the economic impact of a single artist's opinion, whether it be the one who created it or someone who influences the one who created it even. It's, uh, right. Yeah. I keep thinking about what a Tage Bomber guy said in his... So bear in mind, these all had fucking, like, 30k likes on it. It was crazy. ...latest video regarding how plagiarists fundamentally don't respect the people they steal from and how that can be applied to AI algorithms ripping off artists and what that says about the people who created and use said algos. And that, I, I'm not even sure uh, Asmongold would disagree with that. Um, he, would, he would say, like, yeah, it is indicative of how a lot of people don't care and that that's something that mm -hmm. should, I, I would hope Asmongold would say that's something that maybe should change and we should try and do something about it where we can, you know, not in some kind of crazy way, but making people more aware of the things they should appreciate behind the things that they love. But, um, and then this was the other clip that went viral, and I think it's so fucking dumb that he's getting, like, the cancellation, because the, the title of this stream, by the way, the, the trial of Asmongold, is more so related to the internet's trial of him. I guess you could say we've done a trial of him, but I wouldn't really... Go that direction. Okay. More so just checking out what happened and then using it as a vehicle to just talk about some stuff because we like chatting here. And uh, this one, this one's just funny, uh, but he's like, there's like people who fucking, the commentary on this clip has been insane. Like, I guess I'll play it first. It's by me. Oh, shit. <laughs> I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. I don't... That doesn't sound like Batman to me. Yeah, like, I just... I, I don't see that. That sounds like Alfred. Not... So, and that's the clip. Um, the reason that would have gone viral for anyone who doesn't know is that's essentially the quintessential voice of Batman, Kevin, Kevin Conroy. Conroy. Kevin yeah. Conroy? Yeah, he, so... It's, uh, 
that it, and it's the, the final role for him, right? In any Batman yeah, thing or anything role, in general. Yeah. And that's why it says, oh, thank you, Kevin. You can see as well yeah. in faint, yeah, in faint text there. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I would I would attribute this to a writing problem, not a delivery problem. I mean, it uh, clearly is Kevin Conroy, but like, just the line of like, Batman just jumps in, like, "I am vengeance." Like, like, why would he say that? What's I assume exactly motivating him there. He's not saying well, in that remember, scene, but is, I don't know. Uh, also, this is meant to be the, all the Justice League are evil, right? Because it's for the Suicide Squad game. Yes. Um, but there were people oh, who were okay. saying, like, I want this for man fucking dead. I would see this clip, and I was like, Jesus. Why? Oh, okay, well, <laughs> like, yeah. And it, like, god had damn. significant levels of likes, and I was like, oh my god. And it's a, it's a thing of, like, if you've annoyed people in any other way, and then they share clips like this, they'll just be like, yeah, this is reason for you to be taken away from Earth. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> um... That's from the animated series iconic scene with Joker. That's the thing. I don't think it's. I don't think we're supposed to think that is from what we saw in the trailer. Um, like he doesn't enter that place and then say that. I, at least I, I can't know for sure. But yeah. Well, um, even if he did, right? They took what they could get because they wanted to, you know, do an homage to somebody that had worked with them that was now dead. Absolutely. Well, right. yeah. I mean, I mean, and the yeah people are like how the fuck don't you know that that is Batman's voice and stuff like that? And it's just like well. I guess yeah, he just didn't. But that that's it. That's that's all I could gather for why those people like Asma Gold needs to be destroyed. <laughs> I was like, I mean Yeah, because yeah, if you're not a big like if you're not into Batman or you never really watched any Batman content, you just might flat out not know that. Um, I guess one might argue he probably should because I'm assuming he's played all the Arkham games. I don't know. You'd have thought. Uh yeah, I don't know. Uh because I haven't played any to my knowledge. Um, I figure that so. you would have just heard you would have heard Kevin Conroy as Batman in one way or another because he's been playing the character for like thirty years. Um like all sure, the way from across like a number of ninety one. Yeah, across uh video games, different animated, mediums, yeah. Animated films that yep. you figure that you would have heard him at at one point. He is he is the quintessential like voice of Batman, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why this went viral, I guess. But uh, there you have it. And I think I've got one bonus Batman meme. On carrying out deadly. This is uh, oh, yeah. time. <laughs> it's made aware of <laughs> bonus <laughs> meme time. I've seen this. I know what this. You is. have seen this, so <laughs> I almost I don't want to give any preamble to chat because they're so familiar with these the two crazy team, characters. Right? So we're just gonna play this, this is clip. Good. They could. They, I can let chat be like, "Wait, what just happened?" Hey, chat. If anyone's just listening, this is where you need to. You need to look at the screen. Yes. Okay, look at what this happens. This is a visual. This is a visual required. Eyeballs needed. Lee Milton How are you enjoying on Iran? Iran is demanding answers amid an escalating spat with Pakistan. Overnight, Pakistan launched pee. retaliatory strikes on targets in southeastern Iran, just across their shared border. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I just, I just want to highlight, like, XQC's fucking reaction of, like... <laughs> That's bad when XQC is, uh... <laughs> XQC's the, the, the right one here. Yep. He's in the right one. Overnight, Pakistan launched the sun leaves. strikes on targets in but southeastern wait. Iran, just across their shared border. And the video was not interrupted or changed in any way. Mm, no, this is not an edit. This is live. Militants, but Iran says no, wait, hold on. Hold on. Fuck you. <laughs> chat, chat. <laughs> chat. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Where you live? Fuck now, hold, yeah. on. hold on. Hold on. BTW change huh. shirt you smell. Are you telling me <laughs> that I reacted to a edgy to edge digital video about the whole thing, about the whole ordeal? And I get cancelled for reacting it. And you're telling me the same people are praising it. This guy, this editor who went after me. And he literally monetizes a video where he gets off the fucking screen. Pakistan can um, <laughs> carrying out deadly military. Yeah. So, yeah, the, 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 Hassan has found oh, a new way is, to curb the so criticisms is, of not is, being around. That's insane, it is unbelievable that's that nuts. in his world, in his mind, he's like, the problem was that it was an empty chair. That was the problem. <laughs> yeah. So, the way that I solved that problem is not by pausing the video or remaining in place and reacting to the video and providing commentary the solution is put a visual on screen of yep. me reacting and that solves yeah. the problem yep. it's right <laughs> i can't just pause it i can't just pause it when possible? i see 
How is that possible that he thinks that that was the problem was the chair? That was the problem. So I'll fix it by putting just a canned reaction image of me on screen. Yeah. <sighs> yes. I can't just pause the video for a few moments while I go pee and then come back. I can't, just can't it's do that. It's the same that. thing, because remember how he's like, well, I had the video on my phone when I left, so it's all good. He just was incapable of understanding what the problem was. He couldn't do it. It was it's impossible, so, and clearly yeah, it still so is. It's funny, though, because it's just proof that this bothers him to no end, and he doesn't know how to well, yeah, solve the, it by being I a mean, normal isn't person. isn't this so telling? The fact that he feels compelled to put an yeah. image of, ah, oh, look at me, I'm reacting, woohoo, instead of an empty chair, means that he knows that there's something wrong. That's what yeah, I said. He knows, yeah. knows there's something yeah. wrong. Has to get done. Yeah, what, uh, what I think is really funny is that people are, are the, the argument that people are making about this is, oh no, not CNN. Oh, how would you take the advertising dollars away from CNN? And it's like that is you have completely missed the point. Holy You're like shit, not even you missed human. The point. Your brain so, is not well, functioning. because it's CNN. CNN is not allowed to what make money off of the, like they're because it's CNN. They're allowed to have the value of the things yes. that they made completely extracted by Hassan. That was easily the number one response in 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 defense of this clip that I've seen. Like well, easily. I also want to. Yeah, but then why did Hassan do what he did? It's like so. But anyway, exactly. Sorry. I, I, uh, someone said like, "Free Cobb, believe this." Has he seen Hassan previously? I have to defend the idea that this is a new low. Like this he's is stunning. He's got yeah. that's such a pathetic attempt at hiding it. Look how obvious it is. He's not wearing the same clothes. It's like, let me just click the button that puts me on automatic. Yeah, there we go. Done. It's loading or whatever. It's like there it is. Or think I'm still here reacting to videos when I'm still not reacting. He literally just doesn't want people screenshotting the empty chair. That's it. Yes. That's so pathetic. I mean, there, there's crap. ways. There's ways you could have masked this, right? Like, for one, take out the dialogue where he says, "I'm gonna go pee." So, like, like the audience, <laughs> they hear that, they're gonna be like, "Okay, he's leaving his chair now," and all of a sudden, he's back there again. Like, okay, yes. you've clearly edited this. If they took that piece of dialogue out, they could assume that, okay, maybe there was some visual glitch or something, <laughs> even though you can't really assume that because the CNN footage is still proceeding uninterrupted. But then well, you also could have put, chat you could have, too. you could have put an artificial jump cut in the CNN footage as well to sort of cover that up. Like, there's things the editor could have done, but just didn't bother. <laughs> like, because all of that is so simpler funny to than me. just pausing, you know? I can't just pause yeah. the video no, he and can't. He can't pause yeah. it. He can't do it. He can't just pause. Well, I'm still That's watching on my phone, so it's all good. That's what's so sad, right? Like, he, he can't just be like, I'm not here to react to this right now. I am just going to pause the video, do my thing, come back, and then I'll resume, and then the yeah, reaction will continue. Yeah, but the reason why is because he wants, to, he wants to extract all of the, the value of the video. Yeah, he doesn't, like, want, he, he, he doesn't want to lose viewers, right? Yeah, like, because exactly. if the video goes paused, well, people are going to, like, dip out. Like, oh, this is boring all now. all the benefits yeah. of the video while doing nothing to transform it or turn it into my own creation or still benefiting yeah. from it. It's just hilarious right. that he thinks that he's done, he's achieved something by, well, see, look, it's not an empty chair. It's me with a canned <laughs> reaction, a canned generic <laughs> non-speaking reaction to this video. It's so lame. Yeah. It, and it's, it's like, it's so counterproductive because this is a, a massive red, it's not even a red flag. It's like a siren, a wailing siren. It's a, what do they call it? A, a, a caclon, a, a cat. Klaxon. What, what's the noise? Klaxon, yeah, like a big, noisy, whiny thing with signs that say, "Look at me, look at me, and look what I've done." That's all this does is you're bringing an insane amount of attention to it. If he would have done his normal bad thing, people might have just gone, "Yeah, that's the son, just up to his, you know, old no, this bullshit again." You know, Rex, what's new? He's doing bad what stuff. What is he supposed to do? Die? I I I, I, don't know. I don't know, man. It's That's the only this. other option. I, I guess if it's this or die, you know. Well, it's quite a quandary, <laughs> yeah. quite a moral quandary. But he can no longer, with this clip, I think he can no longer make the argument that he doesn't know it's bad or that it isn't bad, right? Like, or that it's fair use or that it's transformative or any of that. I don't think you can make any of those arguments that he's made in the past, because now mm -hmm. you're saying, oh, look. You clearly know that this is an issue in some way, right? And it doesn't matter what argument you make about it. 
if it is a, a, an issue because, oh, somebody isn't there reacting, then, you know, whatever. Or, oh, people will leave if they don't see you. Whatever your argument ends up being, it, it is clear that there is a problem with having an empty chair and somebody not No, he reacting. would just tell you he's just trying to counter people doing memes of, like, spreading lies about him by doing screenshots of his chair. What was the thing recently yeah, of him getting mad himself. at, like, LSF about people making fun of him? Yeah, there's, Why would there's, they ever uh, do that? There, there's a screenshot of him saying to the uh, head mods of Livestream Fail as a subreddit, which is a pretty popular one that just shares lots of drama or notable things about streamers. Um, he asked them to stop posting about him in general because they're all like the too much of it is making fun of him and making fun of his lowering view count. Which, uh, <laughs> oh my god, well, Do you apologize, <laughs> I suppose. I don't even know why he would fucking give a shit about losing X amount of viewers while he has a video that he's watching paused. I mean, the dude's a no, millionaire. No. I mean, he when means, I'm he means prestige. in general, overall, the the trends for his channel are going down. Um, he's losing viewers and, consistently, and like people are making fun of him for it. Oh, he doesn't he, like that. Yeah, and he doesn't want he, to, he doesn't that... want to be turned into a lol cow. He doesn't like that. <laughs> Which... What, and he thinks that might that might be the reason why is that he's pausing the like pausing. The oh, dude, I don't even react. think oh, no, no. I think it's a petty enough that it's literally just a I don't like it. It makes me sad. Stop it. Like, don't let people make fun of me like that. <laughs> oh my god. For me, he's a man. I get to approve how I am made fun of, which should be yeah. never. Well, it's funny because if anyone was asked, especially in our fucking community, why do you think he's losing viewers? It's like, oh, let me just pull out the list. <laughs> like, why? Mm. That's probably happening. <laughs> Man, you know, this is all hilarious and all, but, I mean, that that dead rat alarm <laughs> clock thing, I'm still thinking about that. That's, um... <laughs> I I figure it's it would so be uh, funny. that'll stick with you a little bit, but it'll linger. It'll linger. <laughs> it actually that love a dead rat. Silence there for a while. I, I know. was stunned. I, I know. Like, I don't know how a human being can live like that. That's just and uh, of course the the bread. Holy People shit! People can talk about the blood wall. We're not looking into the blood wall. We're gonna. It actually I makes me cringe. Like physically, it well, makes yeah. me cringe. It makes Obviously. me like, tremble. <laughs> It's I mean, I, I I wouldn't give up on something like that. I mean, I can sympathize with being frustrated if, like, you smell it and it's like you're looking for it and you can't fucking find it anywhere. Then it must be in the walls or something, right? But then I wouldn't stop there. I wouldn't be like, oh, whatever. I'll just live with the smell and just use it as an alarm clock from henceforth. Like, no, yeah, because I don't believe it's in the walls. It's probably buried underneath <laughs> his uh, his many piles Dead of rats random in the crap walls. and garbage. I just don't understand how it could be tenable. To smell yeah. a decaying rat, like, right. and, and then you can just accept that. <laughs> it's like, well, I, guess time, this is, I guess this is life now. Me living in this room with this rat. I yeah. just, jeez. Oh, I will God. coexist with the smell. The, the rat. Be honest with you, yeah. That's four the words bread. I never thought would be in a selection of dead, dead rat, rat alarm, alarm clock. clock. <laughs> How did this end up oh, like this? Geez. Anyway. That wraps up anyway. this stream. And yeah, I think... did we learn anything? Yeah. Uh, I don't have to specify what it is, do I? <laughs> me, neither. <laughs> me neither, because it's so obvious. And I was wondering so if obvious. it was like in South Park when it was like, you know, I learned, like, I learned something today. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> don't you fucking lie. <laughs> <No way. laughs> well, we, we've, that's, a, that's an update for everybody on our opinions related to a lot of different things, like, I don't know, fucking ethics in 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 ai slightly we managed to cover a lot of that we got a, a bit in about um you know the the many positions you can take on on cultural enrichment or awareness of issues that relate to the the production and consumption of products and how that affects the economic market you, oh all of the things you know it's nice mm -hmm. to just jump into that and maybe we'll do it again sometime later if if Asmongold gets into another controversy when he misremembers, like, who was the voice of someone else in a game, maybe that'll happen. But, um, yeah, I mean, what I wanted to say, though, in conclusion, was that it's absurd that he got in so much trouble, but that is usually how it works. It's funny, because, like, it's like, why doesn't Hassan get into more trouble? He's, like, an actual bastard. <laughs> but then again, I guess he, yeah. he's, he's been crying lately that he does get into too much trouble, and people make making fun of him, so... I don't know, maybe. Maybe. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I tend to agree. Someone said last stream was way more painful. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, this was not as painful as that one. The word grueling no, comes to dense. mind in the previous one. This one was dense. Lots of conversation.
His well, mullet cutting out. That's a good oh, point. No. Like half of the people that watch Hassan are sort of used to him being a clown and saying and doing stupid things. So when he does it, it's just like, oh, whatever. It's just Hassan being Hassan. But then Asmongol does something like relatively mildly stupid. And then it's just like, oh my God, I can't believe this thing. And then it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, before we go, John, what did you tell people what you're doing? What are you up to? Where was it happening there? Oh, man, I'm just doing my usual stupid shit. I just made a video on Arbor and the Chief video about New Year's resolutions, about Chief vowing to fuck Arbiter's mom a little bit less in the ass this year. Aww. And the, we, the, at the end of the episode, you see whether he follows through on that promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dumb. But anyway, if you want to see it, John Graham on YouTube. Yeah. As per usual, we uh, appreciate you joining us for such extended periods of excessive discussion and harsh realities i'll put it that way <laughs> in terms of oh what. man i had a lot of fun doing this thank you for inviting yeah, me yeah this, this was this was interesting this was an event it sure uh, was boy oh boy mr moriarty what are you up to oh, where are you, where are you what's happening uh well i'm working on another video um but in the meantime you can always find me at youtube.com slash really cool because my youtube channel is really cool and um I worked on a recently a 12 hour long video that I'm very proud of. I'd like everyone to go see. It's uh, the entire history of video games. All of it. And, uh, all every of it. second. Dude, of I, it in real I love that video, day. man. I, I haven't worked my way through the whole thing yet, but like I've seen f a few hours of it. I'm, I'm, I... I'm working my way <laughs> through it. It's a work in progress, but it's awesome, dude. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Like it took me, that was nine months I worked on that video. So, wow. Uh, I would really like it if everybody went and saw it and then give me thousands and thousands of hours of watch time. <laughs> How often will you update it? Do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Well, uh, the you know, link to your channel, and you can find that video with ease. It is uh, excessively well-researched and edited. And, you know, it might just be the best video on the subject, which is... <gasps> you're actually against a couple of decent big hitters on that one, right? I yep. mean, you know, yeah. there's some other guys out there. There are some other guys out there. Um, yeah, obviously, thank you both for joining us. This is a this is a strange, different EFAP, as many of them are. You never know what'll happen. You never know what subjects we'll cover. Uh, they'll never get stranger, though. This is we we've peaked with strangeness for this weekend. <laughs> it was a strange it's weekend, you know. Back to normalcy. Yeah. It's, it's normal from here on out. We got yes. it out of our system. Twenty twenty four is the year of normalcy. Yeah, back to someone Nothing just saying She Hulk was good. Who'll be like, there you go, back to normal. Yeah, there. Yeah, nice. I remember those days. <laughs> Ah, yes. Everyone's saying good rat. is like, hmm. Oh, that was a bad rat. That's, that's the bad, bad rat. That was that sad not rat. rat. That's what that was. Yeah, that was that's sad. sad. Rat. It's sad that a rat died. And it's yeah, we sadder want, we that want this happy human rat. Had yeah, happy rat, not dead alarm clock rat. Uh, Bringy Rags, anything you guys want to talk about before we go? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think anything's I, changed dramatically since I went to sleep. Um, since, since today. <laughs> you know, yeah, it hasn't been that long uh, since we last day. spoken. But. Just, uh, you, know, is... you know the deal, working, working. Mm -hmm, Not mm -hmm. since last time, but, you know, working after this, working. Um, well, so I can give the update I was going to mention yesterday, but now the, it's, things are getting a little bit weird in terms of how I'm not sure how I'm releasing everything now. We've got about five or six catch-ups, six episodes of TV ready to go. Uh, an EFAP movies that's about to release. Two episodes of EFAP that are going to get out now. One on backup. There's another one that we've recorded ready to go. So there's all of those. i got to figure out exactly where and when they're going. But then also Lord of the Rings, which I just couldn't fix the trilogy thing. I don't know what's going on. The copyright is an asshole. It always comes up for things that are clearly not the thing. So I had a final idea of what if I split them back into individual movies so that it doesn't prompt the hyperbots. And Fellowship and Return of the King have been clear for a week, but Two Towers just 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 keeps getting hit. I'm not sure what's going on. But I was thinking to myself, like, what if, um, what if they were released that way, and Two Towers is just the one that gets hit, so that at least the other two can have some ad sense, and then after yeah. that, I can release the individual videos. So we're gonna see how long if I can get the both to survive two weeks, Fellowship and Re Return of the King. I'll probably re-release them. As EFAP movies, individuals, and then I'll unlist the trilogy one and link it in the description of the others so that they can have some. Like that, this has been copyright hit, the, uh, the, the trilogy one, and I can't fix it. So that might be the solution. But then I'm also working on the, it's going to be like 20 individual supercuts 
of the conversations. And right now, as it stands, I'm I'm close to completing like the major work that needs to be done to collect it all up. But we've got like I mentioned before, there's like a Baromir one, an Aragorn one, a Theoden one, um, one that relates all to the themes of Lord of the Rings, one that relates all to the production of Lord of the Rings, so that they're bite-sized versions. So that any of you that was like, I can't just casually sit down and watch seven hours of EFAP movies. You'll have they're they're all an average of about twenty to thirty minutes. So you can. Uh, Check those out if you want, and that's another way for the compensation to come back a little bit because that project was enormous and painstaking. So, um, yep, they know. worked very hard on it. So knowing that they weren't making you know stuff on it, it really sucks to see. It's it ain't fair. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. <laughs> and so, uh, right. what I guess I'm saying with all of that, so we just mentioned super chats. Like, yeah, that's why I meant by catch ups. There are five catch ups that are ready to go, and obviously, me and Rags are gonna be recording uh, and then theory free <laughs> recording more of them. But you heard what I just said correctly. There's about 45 videos to be released on Moolah, and they're Jesus ready now. Christ. So it's like, wow. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how that's going to look. <laughs> like, uh, well, yeah, uh, you, got, uh, you got all of Loki Season 2 is done. Yes. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about that. Oh, that, nice. Yeah, that don't just... don't forget. That would make me sad. Well, but yes, no, no, that, it's that just, was uh, it's part just, of my list. I said show, EFAP TV, you know? six episodes of EFAP TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um, just like it's just a show that doesn't have any staying power. It's drop like it all at you once. Just, you just fucking forget that it happened, you know. Well, what's funny too is that I haven't included Stargrift. That's once per week, and then of course the regular EFAB episodes <laughs> that upload. So I wish you got two this week, people. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's just like you know, it's like when's the schedule for things? It's like I don't know, I don't figure this out. It's gonna have to be three videos a week at this point. Uh, maybe four. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the update. And, uh, you know, more stuff on the way. But I think me, Rags, and Free might just uh, chill out for a little bit, you know? After all that, mm -hmm. for that, that weekend. Thank you all so very much for joining us. Indeed. You have yourselves a good morning, night, afternoon, whatever it may be. But for now, we're going to say good boy. Yeah, goodbye, See everybody. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.